So hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto changes after a wave. If you guys enjoy this, what if? Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Chapter 1 time for change. Naruto and his group were walking back to Konoha after finishing their mission in Wave Country. They had stopped for a break in the forest to rest a little. Kakashi had decided to talk to Naruto about something, so he walked over to him and started to talk with him. Naruto I need to have a word with you. Kakashi said in a stern voice. Eh? What is Kakashi sensei? Naruto asked in a confused tone. Naruto you're too flashy, and ninja prides himself on stealth. You not only make your appearance known to the enemy when you appear, but the color you wear just screams here I am kill me you need to tone down. Kakashi said in a semi-upset yet earnest tone. A Kakashi sensei if I don't wear bright colors I won't stand out. He said in a pleading type of way. Kakashi didn't look to be phased by Naruto's interjection. Hi Naruto if you wish to get killed because you would rather make an impressionable appearance be my guest. Kakashi walked over and started to talk to Sasuke about learning a new fire jutsu. Naruto started to think about what Kakashi had just said, it made sense, but it just wasn't him to change his appearance just like that. They started their journey again, and it took a couple of hours to get back to Konoha. When they got back Kakashi said that he would turn in the mission report and give them the rest of the day off. Naruto thought that now would be a good time to try and get Sakura to go out with him. Hey, Sakura-chan. Sakura turned to look at her ever so annoying teammate. What do you want I'm busy. Sakura yelled. Well I just thought that since Kakashi sensei gave us the rest of the day off we could go get something to eat. Naruto said in a pleading voice. Why in hell would I want to spend my free time with you? Sakura yelled once again and didn't wait for Naruto to say anything and ran off to catch up with Sasuke. Naruto decided he was going to spend the rest of his day at home. Naruto awoke to his alarm going off. He wasn't in all that good of a mood and he hasn't been since he got back from the wave country. He got out of bed nonetheless and made his way to his closet to get something to wear. Um, what should I wear? Thought Naruto as he looked into his closet. As he looked and all he saw were all his orange jumpsuits. He remembered something Kakashi had said to him the day before. The SSH Kakashi sensei only cares about Sasuke, Naruto said sadly of course he wouldn't care if I died on a mission. With that said Naruto got all his jumpsuits together and threw them in his trash. Then scavenged through his clothes looking for something else to wear. He found a pair of black pants and a black muscle shirt and put them on. He looked in the mirror and was a little dissatisfied, so he looked around some more and found a dark red vest and put it on. As he continued through his apartment he ended up cleaning it completely and found some sunglasses, so he put them on. Now that I'm in dark colors, maybe Kakashi sins, Naruto cut himself off when he thought of something. Since he doesn't want to teach me anything he's not that good of a sensei. Well if Kakashi sen doesn't want to teach me anything I'll learn by myself. With that said Naruto put on a pair of black boots and went to the bridge where Team 7 usually meets. At the bridge, as Naruto walked up to the bridge he saw Sakura trying to get a date out of everyone's favorite Ichiha, yeah right, hmm, maybe I should talk to Sakura-chan. Then Naruto thought of something. She doesn't care about me, she doesn't even acknowledge me. Thought Naruto with a look of gloom on his face. Naruto decided to just find a spot, stay there and be quiet. As he looked he realized that the two of them hadn't even acknowledged the fact that he was there. I guess it doesn't matter if they know I'm here or not. Thought Naruto. Sakura had stopped bothering Sasuke and sat down for some rest while waiting for Kakashi, while Sasuke was in his own little world, thinking about what his brother did and how he will pay. About two hours later Kakashi appeared and greeted the group. Yo. Said Kakashi in his usual tone. You're late. Could be heard throughout Konoha, but Kakashi, Sasuke and Sakura realized something. Sakura was the only one who said it, which was unusual to say the least because Naruto would say it with Sakura and make it even louder. When the three looked around for Naruto they were shocked by what they saw. What's happened to Naruto? Is the only thing that came to mind when they caught sight of Naruto, who was leaning up against a tree with his eyes closed. Their eyes widened at what they saw him wearing. All the vibrant colors they were used to suddenly changed to a blood red vest, a black muscle shirt, a pair of black jeans, a pair of boots, and sunglasses. Naruto what happened? Sakura seemed to get out, still a little dumbstruck. Naruto lifted his head up to see all three staring at him with wide eyes and mouths hanging open. Everything is fine. Why is something the matter? Naruto said with no emotion just loud enough to be heard which just made the three worry more. Well you look different, why the sudden change? Sakura said still the only one to speak. Naruto contemplated this question and decided to just say something and get it over with. Well Sakura-chan, this shot everyone back because this is something they had never heard before, his voice had been void of emotion and had a nice low tone. 
I decided it was time for a change, so I found these clothes lying around my house and decided to wear them instead of my normal jumpsuit. Naruto said still emotionless and unmoved. What the heck Naruto would never give up his jumpsuit, it's what makes him, him. Thought Kakashi. Hum finally decides to change. Thought Sasuke. I wonder what's wrong with Naruto. He seems a little upset or mad. Thought Sakura a little distraught. Well everyone we have a mission to do so let's get to it. Kakashi said a little nervously. Naruto changed overnight. I'm going to have to report this to Hokage-sama. After that thought the team did their assigned mission and to their surprise Naruto didn't foul up once. After the mission Naruto started walking to a store to buy some new clothes since he trashed all of his. After walking a little ways Naruto noticed a box following him. I don't need this right now. Naruto thought. The Nohimaru comes out from underneath the box please. Naruto said in a disapproving tone. Aha just as I thought from my rival for Hokage. Said Konohimaru in a cheery mood. I'm busy right now. I have to go shopping. What do you want? Said in a cold manner. Naruto nai san you said you would play ninja with us today. Said Mogi in a tone that was way too cute to ignore and with puppy dog eyes to match. Damn it I hate it when she does that, might as well help get them trained. Naruto thought. Okay here's what we're going to do you guys run and use stealth to try and evade me. I'll give you guys a little head start so you last longer. How does that sound? Ah that's too easy you'll never get us. Said Konohimaru and with that they started to run, but when they got around the corner, Naruto heard Mogi scream. So he ran to them as fast as he could. When he rounded the corner he saw a guy and girl standing there, the guy was holding Konohimaru by his scarf. That hurt you little brat. Said the guy holding the little one. I'll make you pay for hitting me, let him go to Kankuro. We don't want to get in trouble once we get here, do we? The girl spoke in I don't want to get in trouble tone. Yeah, he needs to learn not to mess with people who are bigger than him, Tamari. Kankuro said in a displeasing tone. You should put him down immediately. Naruto finally spoke out and everyone looked. You don't want to get hurt, do you? Ah, who's going to stop me, you? I doubt you even have the gall to step up to me. Kankuro said with a smirk. Even if he does have it in him I'll just get him in my chakra strings. Um, he's planning something, but I'll just do what Kakashi-san did to me. With that Tamari and Kankuro heard a puff and Kankuro was uppercutted by Naruto. Tamari looked back and saw Naruto standing in the same place with the exception that a shocked Konohimaru was standing right next to him, then she looked where Kankuro was standing moments ago to see another Naruto there. How in the hell what kind of bunshin is that? Thought a very shocked Tamari. While well, you're visiting other villages that aren't your own you shouldn't fight people who are stronger than you. With that Naruto's clone threw a kunai at a tree near them, only to have it deflected by sand. No point in hiding. Come out. Naruto said in an angry tone that sent chills down everyone's back. And then Gara stepped out a little shocked, but hit it with a cold exterior. Konohimaru, you, Mogi and Yudin get out of here now. Naruto continued in his fierce voice as he released his clone. It didn't take the three of them long to get out of there. Naruto turned back to the sand trio and started walking towards them. Damari instantly grabbed her fan ready to defend herself, only to once again be shocked as Naruto casually walked past the three. This time the shock on Gara's face could be seen a mile away, while Kankuro was deathly afraid of Naruto. The tension among the three of them disappeared as Naruto walked around a corner. This incident didn't go unnoticed by an old man with a crystal ball, but even he was shocked with what Naruto did. I've never seen anyone combine the Cage Bunshin no Jutsu and the Kawarimi no Jutsu together at once. Naruto is getting quite interesting. Thought the old man. Naruto arrived at his destination to get new clothes and other items to increase his ninja skills. When he walked in he noticed the cold stairs, but he just brushed them off. His first objective was scrolls and books since he was going to train himself he needed the proper information. He picked out a bunch of promising scrolls and came to a book called The Forge he opened it up to find in detail how to create many different types of weapons, figuring that it could be useful, Naruto decided to get it. Naruto then looked at the clothes and grabbed things that looked like they could go well together, he then took what he wanted and went to pay for them when he spotted something that could be extremely useful. How much for that? Naruto asked. The cashier looked to see where the boy was pointing and scoffed. Naruto was pointing at a nice looking sword. The sheath was blood red and the hilt was engraved with flame. The cashier told Naruto the price, which was quite expensive. Fine I'll take all of these, he placed what he grabbed on the counter. And I'll also take the sword. The cashier was a little thrown back. The boy in front of him asked for something that pricey, but nonetheless he grabbed the sword and placed it on the counter. The cashier figured the boy was just messing with him and wouldn't be able to pay. To the cashier's surprise Naruto pulled out a large amount of money and paid the man exactly what he owed him and then put all the stuff into a bag he had also purchased and then he went home. When Naruto got home he decided he wanted to train a bit but first he had to alter some of the things he got. 
He grabbed a vest and then some weighted metal and configured the vest to hold the metal. Then he grabbed some knee pads and elbow pads and did the same. He grabbed some newly acquired clothes and put them on as well as the vest and the pads. He struggled to get up, but when he looked in the mirror he was a little shocked at his appearance. He stood there with his sunglasses on, he wore black ninja boots and black jeans, the weighted pads were placed under the pants so as to not be seen, he wore a black tank top that could barely be seen because of the weighted vest which was dark red verging black. You could see the upper part of his chest where neither the shirt nor the vest reached, if worn on a woman her cleavage would be shown immediately. He wore the elbow pads on his elbows and he wore black gloves with a piece of metal on them just like Kakashi. His pants weren't sitting right, so he decided to take his forehead protector and use it as a belt, so now it looks like he's wearing a belt with a symbol for Konoha as a buckle. He decided he should start his training by getting used to the weights. He figured he'd be a lot slower, so he left his house after strapping a pouch onto his side, he doesn't have his kunai holder on, and the pouch he put on is like the one Kakashi gets his book from. Naruto found it extremely difficult to move in his new weights as he walked through the forest to get to a training area. When he finally arrived at one he looked around to make sure no one was there and sat down to take a five-minute break. After he was rested enough to start his self-taught training, he got up and started to run around the training area to, of course, increase his speed and maneuverability. He was also trying to get a good grasp on how fast he could go and getting his endurance as high as he could so he can go really fast for long periods of time. He figured it would be best not to use chakra to help him so his muscles became stronger instead of his chakra, just giving him the speed he desired. Naruto took a break after running around for half an hour, his muscles ached like hell, and he was extremely tired. He then decided to contemplate something Mizuki said the fox yakai was sealed inside me, and when I was in wave country fighting Haku, I could feel such an incredible strength that wasn't mine, it must have been the yakai's. I wonder if it can give me such immense power, can I communicate with it? Though unaware he was being watched by an old man, Naruto is becoming interesting indeed using weights to increase his abilities, and now he's meditating. I've never seen him meditate before. Thought an old man from within the trees. Naruto opened his eyes to see that he wasn't in the forest anymore, but in a cold dark hallway. I wonder where I am. He started walking down the hallway to a passage that had an unnatural aura in it. This must be my destination. He walked into the huge room to see a large cage with a flimsy looking seal on it, he could also feel the demonic presence in the room. Who dares to disturb my rest? Since I'm still sealed, it must be the brat that I'm bound to for all eternity said the grand fox in an evil sadistic way. It would assume so. So you're the grand fox yakai everyone's afraid of. Hm I see. Naruto said calmly while sizing the fox up. You don't seem scared of me boy. Why don't you show me that goal of yours and step closer to me? The fox said in a mocking way. To the fox's surprise Naruto started walking forward and stopped a few feet away from the cage. The fox thought it smart to show superiority to the boy and thrust his claw at the boy. He was completely and utterly shocked that his claws stopped a mere inch away from the boy's face, and he didn't even flinch. Well Fox since we're stuck together might as well know each other. I'm Yuzumaki Naruto and you? Said Naruto in his nice calm manner. I am the greatest of all yaokai. I am Kaiubi. Kaiubi said in a proud way. Ha this kid is brave I might get to like him. So why have you come to my humble abode? I just wanted to see if it was possible to communicate. Said Naruto as he shrugged. Well seeing as you decided to train yourself and you gained the ability to talk to me I'll help you train when you want. I also suggest that you not only train your body but also your mind. Kaiubi said a little proud of the boy. Thanks, but what can I do to train my mind? Asked Naruto a little confused. Well you'll need to read some stuff. You're going to want a better overall knowledge. Since I've been around for a long time I'll teach you. And you should also take up shogi. It will help you become a better strategist. If the greatest fox is within you, you should be just as cunning as a fox should be, my little kid. So you should stop acting stupid it defiles us both. Said Kaiubi reassuringly. Alright, I guess I should get back to training now. Bye Kaiubi sensei. Naruto started to walk out of the room. Had that kid could become as great as I. While Naruto was resting three figures approached the area and semi hid behind bushes. Two of the figures wore cloaks, while the third wore a towel on his head. You guys didn't say I should bring my cloak. Whispered the toweled figure. One of the cloaked figures was standing with his arms crossed while the other crouched out of sight. The toweled figure was holding a bush in front of his face while standing, so his bottom half was showing. Naruto awoke and started his training, but this time realized he was being watched by four figures and stopped his training he looked up in the trees at the old man. Whom he noticed no point in hiding. The old man jumped out of the tree. Naruto then looked at the last three. Do you think he can see us? Said the toweled figure loud enough for everyone to hear. Naruto just stared at the one who made that comment. I assume that he has. 
said the crouching figure as she got up, waved and started leaving. The other cloaked figure merely gestured his fingers in a sort of wave, while his arms were crossed and merely vanished. And the third figure started backing away ever so slowly, and when he got five feet he turned and dashed out of there. Okay weird bunch that was. The two remaining thought in unison. So shouldn't you be training with the rest of your team instead of by yourself? The Hokage asked. Well I would train with them if Sakura wasn't always swooning over Sasuke, and Kakashi-san wasn't putting Sasuke ahead of me. This way I can make sure that I control the training so there isn't a problem. He said in a disheartening tone of voice. I see. Who well make sure you still go to your team meetings and don't overwork yourself. Said the Hokage as he left. Naruto started training again after the Hokage left. After about three hours of this he was thoroughly tired and hungry, so he headed to get something to eat. Yo. Little kid you should try eating something besides ramen you need more nutrients. Kaiubi said. Like what? Ramen is good and the people at Ichiraku are nice to me. Naruto asked. Meat. Try fish, it's good. And you don't have to give up ramen, you should just have a different eating habit like having your ramen at lunch and an actual meal for dinner, Kaiubi said. Fine I guess and Naruto came to a restaurant and got some evil glares when a waitress came to get his order. When he got his food he ate it silently, aware of all the glares, after he was done he placed a tip and paid his bill and then left. Might as well be nice to them even though they weren't to me. When he exited the building he saw a pink haired girl and a boy with onyx hair walk up to him. Naruto. Sakura said, we've been looking for you. She said as she stopped in front of Naruto. And what do you two want? Naruto asked unemotionally I wonder what they would want. He thought. It doesn't matter, just hurry home. I have something to teach you, said Kaiubi. We wanted to ask if you were okay if you were acting differently today. She asked, a little concerned. Yeah what happened, dope? Sasuke asked inconsiderately. Bah I'm not a dope. Just wait Sasuke, I'll show you who's better. I thought Naruto was a little angry. Well Sasuke, Sakurichan Naruto said. I really don't have to tell you anything about what's happened to me, do I? Before Sasuke or Sakura could respond to Naruto the sand trio walked up to the group. It's you three again I'm not in the mood, I have other stuff to attend to. This shocked the three, no one has ever talked this way to them. Sakura just looked at the three newcomers, and Sasuke sized them up. Hello my brother Gara wanted to speak to you earlier. Tamari said, still a little shaken. Ah no excuse me, but foreigners need to have prior notice to be here, so what are you doing here? Sakura asked. We're here for the Chunin exams, and we're wondering if you were going to be in it. Gara spoke looking at Naruto. I don't know. I didn't know about it until now, so probably not. Naruto said before he turned to the sky. It's Kindle 8, I'll be going home now. Sakura had a frown on her face. Naruto turns to Sakura and Sasuke tells Kakashi Sen that if he gets there before me I'll be training elsewhere, I'll still be there I'll just be late. If he wants me he can find me. With that Naruto simply walked off. Sasuke and Sakura were simply shocked they didn't even notice the sand trio leaving. Naruto was walking in silence. He felt so tired the weights were getting to him pretty bad since he had worn them all day. Yo. Kid hurry ho a man don't think of taking those weights off. You should only take them off when you shower and change. Got it. Kaiubi practically yelled at him. Yeah yeah fine I got it. With that Naruto headed to his apartment at a better pace. When he got to his apartment he got ready for bed after he was done he heard the voice of his new teacher. It's time I gave you something. Like what? He asked. I'm going to improve your senses. Okay I guess. Is all Naruto said as pain shot through his eyes, ears, and nose. As the pain stopped he noticed the change immediately. When he looked in the mirror he saw his pupils elongated into slits and his ears seemed to sharpen at the top. If you played D&D it would look like a half-elf's ears. And now since I did that to your eyes you can activate a new eye ability that lets you see your opponent's attacks better like the Ichiha Sharingan, only it can't copy ninjutsu or jinjutsu, but you will be able to copy to jutsu. How do I get it to work? Just pour chakra into your eyes and it should activate, the more chakra you put in the better it works there is a limit to how much chakra you use. It will become more and more as you use it. I suggest that you have it activated all day every day so it improves faster. Naruto did as he was told and the world seemed to slow down. When he looked in the mirror he saw red eyes where his blue ones should be. Thanks, Kaiubi sensei Naruto deactivated his eyes and laid down to go to bed and he promptly fell asleep. Okay here's how it works since we can communicate. I'll be teaching you while you sleep so that you can train during the day and learn at night. Okay. Asked Kaiubi. Yeah okay that sounds good. Okay your night teaching will go as follows I will work on your will then I will teach you. With a good will you will be able to see through Jinjutsu and outlast most people in interrogations. Kaiubi said matter of factly. And then their night training started and ended when Naruto woke up. He cooked himself some breakfast and got ready to go. When he was ready he glanced about the room and grabbed his book and sunglasses. 
He promptly put them on and started reading his book as he headed out. He got to his training area and put his book away and looked around. He was the only one there, so he activated his new eyes from behind his glasses. The world seemed to slow down, and then he started his training. He decided that instead of running around just his training area he was going to run around the entirety of Konoha. After about halfway around Konoha Kakashi appeared in front of Naruto, and he looked quite upset. What are you doing? We have a meeting to remember. Kakashi said, obviously irritated. I was getting some training in before our meeting actually started, I didn't expect you to be on time today. He said a little annoyed. Kakashi looked a little proud that his student took the initiative to train while he waited. Well come on we're gonna go train at our usual spot. Naruto kept up with his desired training and ran to the training spot followed by Kakashi. Naruto looks worn out and he's running a little sluggish. And what's with his ears? Thought Kakashi. Dean Ten, Ino, Chaoji, and Shikamaru were waiting for Asuma. Chaoji's was eating a bag of potato chips, Shikamaru was playing a game of shogi by himself, and Ino was impatiently waiting and shifting uncontrollably. Why do you do that it is so troublesome and distracting? Replied Shikamaru not looking up from his game. Ino looked at him indignantly. He looked up to see a raging Ino. Well if you wouldn't play those stupid old man games and do something with me I wouldn't. And you if you wouldn't stuff your face all the time it would be a hell of a lot better. Ino yelled out. Both boys cringed when they heard Ino and saw the murderous intent. Shikamaru sighed and said, Ino you're being troublesome. And he immediately regretted those words because Ino ran and grabbed his shogi board and broke it over his head and started strangling him. Asuma came up and looked at the two, Shikamaru was turning blue and Ino turned completely evil. Asuma looked over at Choji and then Chaoji said something that changed Ino. I don't think guys will like you if you do things like this. Ino slowly turned her head around ever so slowly and the look on her face turned the two guys white as hell. She then cracked a smile, an evil you will pay smile. And then she released Shikamaru who already looked dead. She ran to Choji and he closed his eyes waiting for pain, what he felt was a million times worse, he couldn't feel his precious snacks. When he opened his eyes he saw her sitting down and was eating his chips. When he went to get them back she smacked his hand away. After a few attempts to free his chips he gave up and sat next to Shikamaru. Ino was eating Choji's chips when she glared at Asuma. He quivered under her gaze. I should start before I'm the next target. Well I guess you guys should know I recommended you for the Chunin exams. Asuma Sai and Ino had stopped eating Chaoji's chips and had her mouth hung open. How troublesome. Thought Shikamaru. And Chaoji also looked a little shocked. I should think of something to get them into it. I wouldn't want Kakashi to throw this in my face. Asuma thought. Aha perfect. And also you all should know that all the other rookies will be participating, especially Sasuke. Asuma said proudly as he saw Ino's face change into determination. Also you have to take the test as a team, so might I recommend a team leader. Alright. This is my chance to show up as a forehead girl and get Sasuke-kun. And you two better not ruin this for me. Ino grabbed the three slips out of Asuma's hand and grabbed her teammates and rushed off to train. Shikamaru muttered something that sounded awfully troublesome. Teammate, Gurunai was waiting for her team to arrive. Hinata, Kiba, and Shino were walking to their team's training area. To be more specific Hinata and Shino were walking, Kiba and Akamaru were running every which way chasing each other. When they arrived at the training area they saw their sensei leaning on a tree waiting for them. Gurunai looked up as her team arrived, Hinata and Shino were walking casually, while Kiba and Akamaru were jumping from tree to tree frantically. Hello, I have something to tell you guys. Kurunai said as she pulled out three slips of paper and handed them to the three genin. These are recommendations for the Chunin exams. She said as she looked at her students' reactions. Kiba was obviously excited, Hinata was pretty fearful, and Shino was well she couldn't tell what he was thinking. Oh no, are we ready for this? Hinata said obviously worried about the exams. Kurunai was gonna say something until Shino broke his usual quietness. I'm sure that Kurunai sensei wouldn't nominate us unless she was sure we were ready. He said as he put his paper in a pocket. Of course we're ready, this will be an awesome Akamaru, and I will show everyone that we are the best. Kiba said as Akamaru barked in agreement. Come on Shino, let's go train. When will it be Kurunai sensei? It will be in six days, Boo Kurunai couldn't finish as Kiba ran out after she said when it was. Shino started to follow Kiba and Hinata just stayed still, almost on the verge of tears. Kurunai sighed and said, Hinata-chan you should train also. I don't think they will let you back down. Hinata just nodded and walked to the training post and started attacking it with an open fist. I'm sorry Hinata-chan. I have to go. If you see Kiba and Shino again, tell them it's free training for the rest of the time and to meet at the academy. Hinata just nodded, obviously feeling left out. Kurunai jumped into the trees and just vanished. Team 7, I wonder where Kakashi Sensei is. He said that he was going to get Naruto so we can all train together. Sakura said. 
Sasuke looked extremely annoyed. Adobe is wasting my time. Kakashi and I could have been working on what Jutsu Kakashi was teaching me. He said in a cold I'm gonna kill you tone. Hey Sasuke-kun why don't you train on teamwork with me and Naruto. If we all are going to go to the Chunin exams we should try and work together. She said in a sing-song voice. I don't need teamwork, you two will just end up slowing me down. He said in his cold tone. Just then Naruto came into view followed by Kakashi. Naruto had heard what Sasuke had just said, but didn't want to say anything, and although he was very tired from his run, he hit it quite nicely, it was as if it was the easiest thing in the world. Kakashi pulled out a slip of paper and handed it to Naruto. I've recommended you for the Chunin exams. It's your choice if you want to go or not. It's in six days so you should train as hard as you can. He said. And also every team has a captain. We haven't chosen one yet so we should decide that now. Kakashi looked around. Sakura will say Sasuke, Naruto will say himself, and Sasuke will say himself with two votes I'll just give it to Sasuke. I think Sasuke-kun should be it since he's the strongest. Sakura said while blushing. Yeah and Naruto better not disagree with that. Inner Sakura screamed. It should obviously be me. Sasuke said in a cold tone. Kakashi was going to announce that Sasuke would be their team leader, but Naruto spoke first. It should be Sakura. He said indifferently. Sakura is the smartest and that's what we need over power. Sakura shook her head at this and said. No, Sasuke-kun is much smarter than I hell yeah and don't forget it. Naruto just shrugged. Well it's two to one. So when I'm not around Sasuke is in charge. Got it. Everyone nodded. Good now we're going to start training. Naruto, you should work on your chakra control. And Sakura you should work on your reserve. Sasuke and I will be working on a new jutsu. With that Kakashi left with Sasuke. Sakura started the tree climbing exercise, and Naruto was going to start also, but Kaiubi stopped him. I know a better method of gaining better control, and you'll get a new jutsu also. Alright if it will help. Naruto said in his head. Sakura looked at him confused, but brushed it off and started working again. What you need to do is concentrate chakra in your hand and put as much as you can and then compress it. It'll create a fire in your hand, and you'll only be able to sustain it as long as you can maintain control over it. The fire will fluctuate so that's where your control will need to come from. It's quite difficult, but if you can manage it, you'll never have problems with control again. Also since it consumes a lot more chakra than that petty tree climbing exercise your reserves will start to grow more. Kaiubi stated in a teacher tone. Thanks, but why are you helping me anyways? It doesn't make sense. I thought you hated and wanted to destroy Kanoha, and now you're helping one of its residents. I'll be an honest kid. I like you, you don't let anyone see that they're hurting you, and you're willing to protect them even though they hate you. And furthermore if I'm going to be stuck in you for all eternity, you're gonna need to be strong. I don't want people thinking I'm weak because my container is weak. Now then let's stop this talking and get started. Naruto jumped out of sight so Sakura wouldn't see his new training, and then Naruto started his chakra control and found it was a hell of a lot harder than Kaiubi described. After a few hours Naruto was able to maintain the fire for 20 seconds. When he heard people come to the practice area he jumped down and saw Sakura was passed out due to exhaustion. Akashi and Sasuke arrived at the training area just in time to see Naruto land gracefully on the ground. They looked over to see Sakura passed out by a tree and decided it was due to exhaustion. Hey Dobe still can't stick to the tree I see. Sasuke said with a smirk. Kakashi walked over to Sakura and woke her up. Okay kid this guy pisses me off so show him up. I'd say you could just merely walk up the tree without the run like the girl was doing. Okay sounds good. Naruto thought. Actually Sasuke, I think I have improved greatly, I haven't fallen once. Naruto said with a smirk. It's not a lie. Ah I bet I can get higher than you, still. Sasuke gloated all high and mighty. Okay prove it, pick a tree and we'll see who can get higher. I let you go first so you can set the bar. Naruto said holding in the pleasure of watching Sasuke crumble. Sasuke chose a tree that you could see all the way to the top of. He pulled out a kunai and gathered chakra to his feet and ran as fast as he could to the tree and started going up it. He made it three-fourths the way up before he scratched the tree and started to fall, but recompassed himself and landed on his feet. Let's see you beat that. Sasuke said as he tossed his kunai at Naruto. Naruto caught it and walked his way to the tree. Aren't you even going to try, you haven't even gathered chakra. Sasuke let out a small laugh that didn't last long as Naruto got to the tree and started walking up it effortlessly. Kakashi had already awakened Sakura and they were watching this duel of egos. All three of their jaws dropped at Naruto's effortless action. He got to the point that Sasuke had left his slash and he looked down to see if Sasuke was still watching. After he was sure Sasuke was watching he took a step above his mark and got closer to the tree. Instead of a slash Naruto had written his name and instead of hopping down, he continued to the top of the tree. 
When he reached the top he stuck the kunai in the tree, so the kunai was now the highest point of the tree. Naruto hopped down and seeing that his comrades were speechless he spoke first. If you want your kunai back you'll have to go and get it. Sasuke looked at Naruto and then back at the kunai, and then he said something. DCH so you've gained a little chakra control, it doesn't mean you're stronger than me, and I'll prove it. Let's go. Sasuke said as he got in a fighting position. Kakashi and Sakura had come to their senses and were gonna stop this, but Naruto said something before they could. I'm not gonna fight you since there isn't anything to gain out of it. Now I'm hungry as our training session is over. Naruto asked solemnly. Kakashi finally said something. Yeah. I guess you guys can go. We won't have training for the rest of the week so you guys can relax and decide if you're going to take the exam or not. That was all Naruto needed and he started walking away, when he was out of sight Sasuke walked up to the tree and molded chakra to his feet and tried climbing the same way Naruto did. His foot just slid down as he tried to put his other foot up. Your chakra control isn't good enough yet. Sakura, see if you can do it. Kakashi said. Sakura did as she was told and she fared better than Sasuke, but when she went for a fifth step she slid down. I see now Naruto has the better chakra control of the group. He said and walked away in deep thought. Sakura looked ashamed because she was no longer the best at something in the group. Sasuke was pissed that Naruto had shown him up. But Naruto, Naruto was walking to the bookstore because he just finished his book, The Forge. He was given cold stares all the way there. When he got there he looked around until he found a book about seals. He grabbed it and went and paid for it. He started reading it and headed for Ichiraku for his lunch. When he got there he sat down and ordered a Maizo Raymond and continued to read. What are you reading? A.M. asked in a cutesy voice. Naruto looked up from his book and realized both the old man and A.M. were looking at him. It's a book on different kinds of seals and how to make them. I figured it would be a good idea to learn these things. He said as he put the book on the counter and gave his full attention to A.M. and the old man. You weren't here last night. We thought something happened to you. You never miss a meal. The old man said as he placed Naruto's Raymond in front of him. My new sensei told me that I need to eat more than ramen all the time, so now he only lets me eat it for lunch. Naruto said as he grabbed some chopsticks. You have a new sensei? I thought once you get a Jounin sensei he or she becomes your sensei until you get promoted. A.M. asked, a little confused. Yeah that's true so I still have Kakashi as my official sensei, but I found someone better that's willing to help out more than Kakashi ever has. Naruto said casually as he started eating. I see that's good for you. Most people aren't able to find a suitable sensei, they just get stuck with what's given to them, and then everyone on the team is just miserable. The Hokage said, startling the three out of their conversation. I'll have pork ramen please. He said. Hi Hokage-sama. The old man then turned around and started working on the Hokage's ramen. Hokage-sama it's a rarity to see you here. A.M. said surprised. Oh well it was boring being cramped in that office of mine all day, so I decided to come out for lunch. The Hokage said as the old man finished making his ramen. So Naruto, who is this new sensei of yours? The Hokage was interested in the sensei he received. Naruto finished his bowl of ramen and ordered another. He told me not to tell anyone or he would get in trouble for taking on a pupil without authorization. Naruto lied. Thank god Kayubi sensei's been teaching me or I would not have never been able to come up with that. The Hokage looked at him for a second before he decided he was right. Well that's true so as long as you don't interrupt his actual duties, there shouldn't be a problem. Hokage said then realized something else to ask. I also heard from Kakashi that you're able to walk up a tree easily now. It was meant to be a statement but sounded like a question. Yeah my new sensei taught me better chakra control, something Kakashi didn't go into full detail on. Naruto said as the Konohamaru core came up to them. Hey Konohamaru what are you here for? Naruto Nai-chan thanks for helping me out yesterday. Konohamaru said as he, Yudin, and Mogi bowed. A head was no problem, but we didn't get to finish what we were doing yesterday. Naruto said and then looked at the Hokage. Hey Hokage-sama, why weren't we taught better chakra control in the academy? Well we didn't want to push you with both academics and stuff like that. The academy is to learn the basics and afterwards your Jounin instructor will teach you more of the advanced things. The Hokage said all knowingly. Is it against the rules to teach that kind of stuff though? Naruto asked. The Hokage caught on to what Naruto was really asking and looked at the three ninja hopefuls and back at Naruto and shook his head. It's not against any rules to be trained outside of the academy actually it would probably increase their chances for succeeding in the genin test. Although I wouldn't suggest teaching Jown in ranked moves like the cage bunch and no jutsu to academy students. Naruto caught the hint. He finished up his ramen, paid for it, and got up. Alright come on Konohamaru Kor I have something to show you. By Hokage-sama, Raymond Man, and A.M. Chan. A.M. blushed a little as Naruto waved and ran off with Konohamaru and the others. 
Naruto and the Konohamaru Corps arrived in the forest to start playing ninja. Okay guys here's what we're going to do today, I'm gonna teach you to climb a tree without your hands. Naruto said and looked at their awestruck faces. Leader, can you really do that? Mogi asked with stars all over her eyes. Of course I wouldn't tell you I'd teach you something I couldn't do. Here watch me do it first, okay? They all nodded and Naruto walked over to a tree and started to walk up it to about a tenth of the way up. He looked at the look on their faces and was proud. See. Now all you have to do is concentrate chakra to your feet and make sure it's enough to stick but not too much where you get pushed off. Now do you have any kunai? They all shook their heads, then Naruto heard someone come up from behind him and three kunai shot out of the tree and stuck to the ground in front of the three young ones. Who's there? Naruto yelled. You shouldn't worry about who I am but what I want. A rain nin stepped out into view. Naruto gave the look as if to continue. I want the scroll of forbidden jutsus and I've heard that you've gotten it once before so you should be able to get it again right. What makes you think that I'll help you out, hmm? Naruto asked. I'm beyond your level you don't have a chance, plus I have those three as targets. The rain nin said as he pointed at Konohamaru and the others. Well what do you want from the scroll? Naruto asked cynically. Isn't it obvious I want the power from within it? Once I have it I'll be the most powerful ninja of all time. The rain nin said confidently. Hmm. Naruto hummed as if contemplating things. I'm sorry, but I won't help you. I'm sorry you feel the way you do. I thought you were different from Mizuki-sensei. He said. The rain nin's features says that he was shocked at Naruto's response. Chapter 2. Contest of Skill. The rain nin's face showed many signs of shock. He couldn't believe that Naruto had just said that and he was surprised that Naruto might know who it was. The rain nin recompassed himself and started questioning Naruto to see if what he thought was true. What do you mean by that? The rain nin spoke incredulously. When you saved me from Mizuki sensei I had assumed it was to save me not try and get the scroll for yourself. Naruto said in a cold demeanor. The rain nin now knew his suspicions were correct and didn't know what to do to defuse the situation. He did the first thing that came to mind. He released the hinge. He looked at the three young ones and saw that their faces showed signs of betrayal. Aruka looked downhearted. How did this get so complicated, now I'll probably never get any of their trust back. He looked at Naruto again, and if the sunglasses weren't in the way he would probably see fury in his eyes. He thought some more and could not think of any way to get Naruto to trust him besides become Naruto's prisoner and go see the Hokage, but that wouldn't look too good. The only thing left was to try to reason with Naruto. Naruto you see there is a reasonable explanation for this. Aruka pleaded. Naruto thought for a second and motioned for Aruka to continue. You see, I was supposed to test you to see if you were ready for the Chunin exams, as well as the other eight newly appointed genin. Aruka pleaded. Naruto was going to say something, but a voice from within stopped him. He's telling the truth. I will be told him matter-of-factly. How can you be so sure? Naruto asked uncertainly. His heart rate when someone lies their heart beats faster, thus proving that he is in fact not lying. Kaiubi said. Naruto took this into thought for a second and decided to test it, focusing on hearing he started to hear Aruka's heart. Aruka sensei I want you to prove to me that you aren't lying. Aruka looked a little confused at Naruto's statement. Naruto continued I want you to tell me that I hate Raymond. Naruka was completely thrown off at Naruto's request, but if it was to prove he wasn't lying. Naruto, you do not like Raymond. Naruka said with confusion evident in his voice. Naruto heard Aruka's heart quicken its pace and then slowed down again. Hmm you were right Kaiubi that's pretty cool. Naruto said to Kaiubi. It can be pretty useful when you think about it. Kaiubi said. So what did this test tell you? Naruto asked. Aruka sighed in relief realizing that Naruto believed him, which made him very happy. He looked over at the three little ones and didn't like what he saw, they still didn't believe him, this saddened him a bit. Well actually it showed me that you are indeed ready for the Chunin exams, but how did you know it was me? Aruka asked. Naruto looked at the ground where the three kunai were and picked them all up and handed one to each of the little ones. Well actually it was your smell. Naruto had said. Aruka looked dumbfounded. Okay guys, and Mogi. Generate chakra to your feet and try the tree climbing exercise. Naruto said casually. He watched them mold chakra to their feet and run towards the trees they chose. Konohamaru, that is a big name, had taken two steps and had fallen right on his butt. Yudin had taken five steps before he fell, but he recompassed himself and landed on his feet, and Mogi had gotten extremely high, she had gotten to where Naruto had shown them, and due to lack of chakra had fallen. From the distance Mogi had gotten up to, it looked like she could get hurt, so Naruto jumped over to her tree and caught her before she hit the ground and hurt herself. You okay? He asked a blushing Mogi. Yes. Thank you Naruto Nai-chan. The blushing Mogi said. Naruto put Mogi down and looked at the marks they had made on the tree. Mogi was the highest while Yudin's mark was about 9 feet off the ground and Konohamaru's was 4 feet off the ground. 
At least he got higher than me on my first try at Naruto. Naruto looked at Aruka and it looked like he was contemplating something. So what do you think of their first try? Naruto asked Aruka. Aruka looked at Naruto, then the three little ones, and then the marks. Well considering their age I'd have to say they did really well. Aruka said. They are going to have to increase their chakra supply in order to get higher, but I'm pretty sure out of everyone else their age, I'd say they could do it. After Aruka said that, they heard someone scoff at that comment. When they turned around they saw two people standing there. One was an adult male, and the other was a young female no older than seven. The man wore a creme-colored yukata and had long black hair, and the young girl wore a faded purple ninja training outfit, and she too had long black hair. Have you guessed yet? The thing that really set them apart from others had to be their eyes, they were the color of lavender, but only if you were close otherwise they would look like they were pure white. The one that scoffed was the male. If you think those children will be better than my daughter then you are sadly mistaken. Hiashi said nonchalantly. Hiroka had fear written all over his face. Hiashi took note of this, and when he looked at Naruto he didn't get such a reaction, the boy stood there indifferently. Hiashi looked at the kids and noted that they were fairly angry. Hey weird eyes, you can't know your daughter is better than us. Konohamaru said angrily. Hiroka ran over and clasped a hand over the infuriated eight-year-old. Hiroka was going to ask for his apologies, but Hiashi just waved it off as if it were nothing. The Hyugas are the best clan in Konoha. Our children are taught chakra control techniques at an early age, so they can master Jaikin at a young age. Hiashi said casually. So Hanabi here is well adept to things such as tree climbing and such. He said with pride. Bullshit. Konohamaru yelled out. I say she is worse than me, you just want to increase your ego. Konohamaru said confidently. Ha. Hanabi probably has the best chakra control of all of you. Hiashi said just as confidently as Konohamaru. Hey little kid, here's a chance to test yourself. Kaiubi told Naruto. I guess so. You think I can beat her? Naruto asked. I'd say you have a really good chance. Your control is probably at that of a rookie jounin. Kaiubi said. If you think that then a little wager wouldn't bother you would it? Naruto asked. Iruka and Hiashi were both quite shocked that Naruto had just proposed a bet with a Hayuga. Fine if that is what you want. What are your terms? Hiashi asked with disbelief evident in his voice. I will be the one to participate for my team. And if I win then little Hanabi can help Konohamaru and the rest with their control, and who knows maybe they could become friends. Naruto suggested. Eh fine and if Hanabi wins you will be her fighting post to test her Jaikin. Do we have an agreement? Hiashi asked. Sure sounds fine now then I guess since you issued the challenge you get to pick the contest. Naruto said. Eh ho ho. This sounds interesting. I've never seen a challenge of chakra control before. The Hokage said as he stepped out into the open. All eyes were on him as he came into view. It would seem there is quite an audience here to see this. The Hokage said as he gestured something towards the trees, just then Kakashi, Sasuke, and Ibisu jumped out of the trees. Well then I guess you guys should start this contest. The Hokage suggested. Heh. Okay the contest will be quite simple all you have to do is walk up two steps and jump to another tree, and then walk two more steps and continue until you lose control, and if you make it to the top do it over just going downwards and keep up until you fall. Understand. Hiashi explained. Naruto nodded and said. Ladies first. After Naruto said that Hanabi walked up to the tree and gathered chakra and took two steps on the tree and then jumped to another tree, she proceeded up the tree in the same manner until she made it to the top and then she turned around and started heading down the same way. Everyone stared in awe at what a young girl was doing except Hiashi and Naruto. Hanabi made it to the bottom of the tree and she once again turned and took two steps when she jumped. She didn't gather enough chakra and didn't stick and she fell. She would have landed on her butt if Konohamaru hadn't caught her the same way Naruto had caught Mogi. Konohamaru put the now blushing Hanabi on her feet and Hiashi and spoke. Hanabi made it to the top, back down, and two steps. It's your turn let us see if you can do any better. Hiashi said. Three people there had actually guessed Hiashi's intentions with this bed, and Naruto himself was quite skeptical about this bed as well. The three that guessed his intentions were the Hokage, Kakashi, and Ibisu. It had been clear when Kaiubi was sealed Tiashi was quite skeptical that any ninja had the ability to handle a yaokai of such a high caliber. The only people who he told however were only the higher level ninjas and the hokage, as to not cause a panic. This was his chance to see how well the kid handled his chakra, as it could be dangerous if he wasn't in complete control. Tiashi was one of the ones who had actually accepted Naruto for what he was, a hero. No one else has such a burden as him, and there has been no problems with him, so there was no reason to be mean to Naruto. Granted he hadn't told Hinata or Hanabi, but at least no hate for the boy was transferred onto them like the rest of the kids. 
Naruto was skeptical about this whole bet because even though Hiashi had made his side of the bet so cruel, Naruto could not sense any hate from Hiashi, instead he only felt kindness which was rare from any adult. He really didn't understand the whole thing to its fullest like he wanted, but he wasn't one to complain about someone being kind to him. He walked up to the tree when he got there he heard two more sets of feet land into the area. He turned to look at the newcomers, it was Kurinai and Asuma. Hey Kakashi what's the big idea we had plans are you skipping out on us? Kurinai practically yelled. Kakashi looked at Kurinai and Asuma then back at Naruto and gave his reply. I'm not skipping out, it's just this came up and I wanted to see how it would turn out. Kakashi said unemotionally. Kurinai and Asuma looked around and realized they had interrupted something pretty important if the Hokage was there. Then they looked to see what was the center of attention, and when they realized it had something to do with Naruto they were quite interested. Sorry Naruto, please continue. Remember up, down, and just land the next jump and you win. Kakashi added. Naruto nodded and looked back at the tree and started walking up it. He took two steps and jumped as he was supposed to. He adjusted to land as he was supposed to, and as he touched the tree he took two more steps. After Naruto made his first jump, everyone let out the breath they didn't know they were holding, everyone except Hanabi and Sasuke. Sasuke was infuriated that the doe could do something that he probably couldn't and it was getting on his nerves. Hanabi was wondering why her father was so intent with how Naruto was doing, but she pushed on grounds that he was worried about losing. Naruto continued up the tree as he was supposed to. When he got to the top he turned and he just stood there looking down. When everyone saw this they were confused and wondered why he stopped. Am I supposed to see doubles of everything? Asked Naruto. No one must be performing a jinjutsu on you. Look for someone who is still holding a seal. Kaiubi said to Naruto. Naruto did as he was told and looked at all the people down on the ground. As best as he could tell from the double people no one was holding a seal. He would have just continued if he could tell where to step and not, but that's not the case the Jinjutsu was just too confusing, so he just stood there looking around in the trees, trying to find the culprit of his vision dilemma. Everyone was very confused that Naruto had stopped since he was doing very well. When they saw him looking around in the trees they were then worried a little. The Ashi got what Naruto was doing and activated his Byakugan and took a look at Naruto and true to his suspicions, there was a Jinjutsu placed on him, but that's not all he noticed Naruto himself was gathering chakra to his eyes, he decided to find out later about Naruto's chakra, first things first the Jinjutsu. Hokage-sama, Hiashi whispered, hardly able to be heard by all the Jounin and the Hokage looked at Hiashi. There has been a Jinjutsu placed on Naruto. That made all the Jown intentative, they started looking around the place, and Hiashi looked further until he found the offender. He deactivated his eyes and when everyone looked at him they all had the same thing written on their face, confusion. Then he spoke again. Naruto, can you continue? Hiashi asked. All the Jounins there looked shocked. The Hokage understood what it was, and he had to help Naruto understood. Naruto still in the tree heard Hiashi announce it was a Jinjutsu now Hiashi was asking if he could continue. Why did he say that if he knows I'm being affected by Jinjutsu? Naruto asked Kaiubi. He wants to prove something to the offender. It's probably someone who thinks they can get good favors for messing you up. Kaiubi said. But still why isn't he stopping them from the Jinjutsu instead he's letting me, oh I see. Thanks Kaiubi. Naruto said and tried to look at the real Hiashi and said. Hey yeah I was just admiring the sights from up here. Of course Naruto lied. The Ashi and the Hokage both had a smug smile on their face, and the other Jounin had no choice but to trust their judgment of course, they were still a little worried about Naruto completing this, as it is it was hard enough, and now he has a Jinjutsu placed on him. What would you do with Naruto? Was on every Jounin's, Hiashi, and the Hokage's mind as well as Naruto's. Naruto looked at the tree he was standing on and took his two steps, that was the easy part, the tree jumping would be a million times harder. Naruto looked at the tree which of course looked like two trees, and if he were to jump and miss, he would lose the bet. In situations like this your eyes can hurt you, you should feel for the tree. Kaiubi commented in his head. And how do you suppose I do that? Naruto asked. I guess I can give you something else, I was gonna give it to you later, but now is a good time. Now this is gonna hurt a bit, hold it in or they might get suspicious. Kaiubi said. And true to Kaiubi's words it hurt a lot. Naruto winced as pain filled his entire body and then nothing. Now then this might be difficult, but you're gonna need to be a quick study. You need to feel your surroundings, just concentrate on everything and you'll see the truth. Naruto didn't quite get what the hell Kaiubi was talking about, but attempted it anyway, as his focus went to the entire area, his vision changed, and he grew extremely nauseous for a couple of seconds. As he started feeling better he got even more confused as he could see anywhere he wanted, and it was red yet, no matter where he looked by feeling he could still see in front of him what he would normally see, when he closed his eyes, he could still see what he was feeling. Okay that is just awesome. Naruto thought of Kaiubi and got a knowing laugh in return. 
This happened in like a minute. Naruto opened his eyes and focused in front of him. Now instead of the two trees he saw before there were three trees except one tree was red and the others were regular. In the crowd below everyone was wondering why he had just stopped, the Jounins chalked it up to the effects of the Jinjutsu. Naruto decided that the red one was real, and the others were fake, so it was a leap of faith Naruto jumped. The Jounins immediately held their breath, and then they released it as they saw he made it. The Ashi activated his Byakugan just to see if the Jinjutsu was still active, he saw that it was, and he looked at the Hokage, who had the look of visit. On his face, Hiashi just nodded, and they both looked back at Naruto and saw him proceeding in the same manner he was before. Naruto was feeling good about himself. He was back on track. The only bad thing was that his knee pads kept digging into his legs. Damn my legs are hurting. Naruto said. Didn't you read about a seal that increases the weight of an object in that book you bought? Kaiubi asked. Naruto was pretty sure he had, only one thing to do was look. He pulled out his book and scanned through it looking for the seal, while still going down the tree without missing a beat, thanks to his new ability, granted it was a little frustrating with the Jinjutsu, but he worked around that. The people on the ground had their eyes wide and jaws hanging as Naruto was skimming a book while walking down a tree and jumping as he was supposed to. Everyone who knew him stared at Kakashi as if asking him for an explanation. Kakashi looked at the stairs and just shrugged. All their stares broke when they heard Naruto. Aha there is one for what I need. Naruto yelled. Everyone but Sasuke sweat dropped. Sasuke was pissed beyond belief here was a dope doing something he should be able to do and can't. Naruto made it to the bottom still reading his book as he turned around and started back up, completely forgetting this wasn't a normal day activity he got the first jump and kept going everyone visibly sweat dropped as they realized Naruto forgot that all he needed to do was accomplish the first jump back up. He actually decided it was time to end this. Alright Naruto you don't need to humiliate my daughter as well. He actually said his tone betrays his words. Naruto looked confused. Huh. How am I humiliating your daughter? Naruto asked dumbly then he realized what he was doing. Oh he sorry I was caught up reading something. Naruto then folded the top corner of the page he was on and put it in his pouch. Naruto released his chakra and landed on the ground as gracefully as a cat. So I guess Hanabi will help Konohimaru and his group as we agreed upon. Naruto asked. The Ashi nodded and said. Yes but first a few things. First I want to apologize. Naruto looked confused and asked. Apologize for what? Naruto asked. Naruto wasn't the only one confused because everyone was confused as to why Hiashi was to apologize. Apologize for a member of my clan's unsportsmanlike behavior. I assure you he will be reprimanded immediately. Then Hiashi glared into the trees and just as he glared, Naruto's vision returned to normal, so he stopped his feeling, and another Hayuga jumped into the group kneeling right in front of Hiashi. Explain yourself. Hiashi practically growled. What made you risk the Hayuga honor by using a Jinjutsu on Naruto? All the kids and Aruka except Naruto were shocked at hearing that Naruto had won even with Jinjutsu against him. Sasuke scowled and Hanabi hung her head low, neither of these actions were overlooked by Hiashi. I couldn't let the Hayuga name be tarnished by someone like him. The unnamed Hayuga said as he gave a disgusted look at Naruto. It was the same look the rest of the villagers gave Naruto. Naruto just looked away from the unnamed Hayuga. No one missed the look that the Hayuga gave Naruto. So you would rather make us look bad by cheating. Hiashi said. He didn't want to assault the man because of the kid's presence. No one would have known only us Hayuga. The unnamed Hayuga said. And what made you think I'd allowed? No, there is a worse matter at hand, you put a Jinjutsu on Naruto. Hiashi said. And? The unnamed Hayuga asked defiance in his voice. Hanabi lost. Well her opponent was being influenced by a Jinjutsu. How do you think that makes her feel? Hiashi spat at the Hayuga. She wouldn't have lost had it not been for the Hayuga never finished as he was knocked out by the Hokage. All the children looked at the Hokage with a questioning gaze. He will be dealt with by me as I, Hokage of Konoha, had sponsored this contest and he interfered. Congratulations Naruto. With that the Hokage picked up the offending Hayuga and vanished with a puff of smoke. Seeing as the contest was over the Jounin decided it was time for their prior arrangements to be attended to and they too were gone in smoke. Iruka had yet to finish the test of all the rookie genins and decided he should get to it before it gets too late. Hiashi went over to Hanabi and Ibisu went over to Konohamaru. Naruto was heading over to the little kids and talking to them, but he was intercepted by Sasuke. Okay Dobe where did you learn to get better chakra control? Sasuke asked, extremely annoyed. I decided it was time to get better, so I asked someone extremely strong to help me. Naruto said getting annoyed by Sasuke bothering him. Sasuke grabbed Naruto by the vest and started questioning him. Okay Naruto who is this person and where can I find him? If he was able to teach a dope like you in chakra control in such a short time he can most definitely help me become strong enough to kill my brother. 
Sasuke said the last part in sort of a growl. Eh sorry Sasuke, I can't tell you who's been helping me he told me not to tell anyone. And besides you seem to have Kakashi's undivided attention you shouldn't need any other help than his. Naruto said as he released himself from Sasuke. Fine. Sasuke huffed and jumped through the trees to another training area preparing for the Chunin exams. Naruto continued to the children where he heard Hiyashi tell Hanabi something. Naruto would have won either way so don't be upset. In all this you will be given a chance to interact more with kids your own age, which could help you more than training with me all the time. Hiyashi reassured his daughter. Naruto made it to Konohamaru and the others. And Ibisu decided to say something finally. You shouldn't bother yourself with training these guys, you should train your own skills for the Chunin exams which are in less than a week. I'll take it where you left off. Ibisu had accepted Naruto after seeing a change in Konohamaru's attitude. Hiashi and Hanabi decided to come at that time. I agree with Ibisu-sensei. You should try and improve as much as possible. Hiashi said to Naruto and then turned to Ibisu. If you are going to train them instead of Naruto, then I entrust my daughter's teaching to you so she can learn alongside them, as per my arrangement with Naruto. Ibisu nodded as Hanabi walked to the group of kids to introduce herself properly. Hiashi then turned back to Naruto and said, you should get to training. And then he walked away. Naruto followed suit and went to his apartment. When Naruto got to his apartment he decided it was time for some little modifications and started to work until Kaiubi's voice came into play. I have something else to teach you, little kid. It's an alteration to your fire technique I taught you, just very much harder to do. I'm listening. Naruto said giving his full attention to Kaiubi. Okay same concept concentrate to your hand, but instead of just compressing it, you'll have to release it, then compress it. Kaiubi said and then Naruto attempted it, and when he did a surge of electricity came from his hand for a split second before it disappeared. Naruto was amazed. Since it's electricity instead of fire it will fluctuate more rapidly, so control will be extremely difficult. Naruto just nodded his head and he was pretty much dumbfounded. He shook it off fairly quickly and went back to modifying. Day of the exam, it was the day of the exam. Everyone was training the whole time before the exam so they could be ready for whatever the exam threw at them. Sakura and Sasuke were waiting outside the academy for Naruto. Hey, I guess the dope got scared. Sasuke said as he started heading for the academy. Sakura stalled a second she looked around once before she decided to follow Sasuke into the academy. Chapter 3. First test in the exam. Sakura and Sasuke were heading down the corridor of the second floor until they came up to a huge crowd outside of the supposed room 301. They looked at each other confirming that it was indeed a Jinjutsu and started walking to the crowd. They made it to the crowd just in time to see a boy in a green training outfit and a girl wearing a pink Chinese shirt and dark blue pants that go down to about mid-calf, get knocked back into what seemed to be their other teammate. If that's all you got you might as well just quit this exam while you can. Said one of the people who knocked the guy and girl back. The two people who got knocked back got up and the girl spoke. Please let us through. The girl pleaded to the boys who were blocking their path. You should be thanking us for weeding out those who don't have a chance in this exam. One of the boys said. Sasuke and Sakura walked up to the front of the crowd where all this was happening. Sasuke spoke up first. You will let us pass. Sasuke said arrogantly. And you should remove the Jinjutsu. After he said those words everyone there was murmuring things such as what does he mean. Sasuke looked at Sakura as if telling her to continue. Yes this is the second floor we are going to the third. Sakura said proudly. Just then the Jinjutsu revealed that it was indeed room 201 instead of 301. One of the boys smirked at their cleverness and said. You merely saw through it. He said as he thrust his foot for a sidekick. Sasuke saw this and also did the same. As their feet drew closer they saw a green blur, and the boy who got knocked back earlier was now holding both their legs as if it were nothing, then he released their legs and sighed in relief. Sasuke looked at the boy and girl and saw that they were unharmed. The other member of their team, who could be identified as a high uga, decided there was something to say. What happened to the plan? You were the one that said we shouldn't make ourselves known. Niji said. Lee looked over to Sakura and started heading over to her, while Tenten was shaking her head and mumbling oh no. Hello I'm Rock Lee, let's go out. I'll protect you until I die. Lee said as he smiled and his tooth gave a ping. Sakura looked disgusted and said, no way, you're lame. She said still disgusted. Lee's head drooped as he walked over to the wall downhearted and started pounding his head into it. Niji looked over at Sasuke and called out. Hey, what's your name? Niji asked Sasuke. Sasuke's arrogant reply was. If you want someone else's name you should give yours first. Sasuke said as he was now totally facing Niji. You're a rookie right? How old are you? Niji asked. I'm not obliged to tell you anything. Sasuke said. Meanwhile Tenten was scanning around the crowd looking for something and she decided to just ask. Where is your other teammate? She asked. 
This caught everyone's attention and they also started looking, thinking he was just overlooked. Sasuke looked at her and was thinking for a second. He decided not to show it so we decided to do it by ourselves. Sasuke stated coolly. After Sasuke's statement everyone stopped looking and started looking at the Uchiha as if he was crazy. Ah that'll show you. You can't participate in the exams unless you're in a team of three. Niji stated calmly as if it was common knowledge. Sasuke and Sakura were struck by this information. Sasuke was growing pissed until he heard a voice come from behind him. Then I guess it's a good thing that I decided to come then. Naruto said calmly. Everyone looked at the newcomer and were a little shocked. Naruto stood there wearing black boots, a pair of black pants, a dark red long sleeve shirt, a sleeveless black jacket, and his fingerless gloves. His shirt sleeves were rolled up to just under his elbow, and he wore his weapons pouch mid-thigh, and red bandages went from underneath the boots to mid-calf. He had a piece of metal attached to each shoulder of the jacket, each glove, and the outside sides of each boot. He still wore sunglasses and he still used his forehead protector as a belt. Everyone seemed interested and some girls thought he was appealing. Naruto walked up to the group casually and stopped to assess the situation. So where were you? Sasuke asked Naruto. Niji and Lee both took this chance to size up the newcomer. Naruto looked at Sasuke and then just walked past the group of gathered ninjas towards his destination. Answer me. Sasuke yelled as he grabbed Naruto's arm. That was the worst thing the Achiha could have done, because as he touched Naruto, he was shocked enough to be stunned by the contact. What the hell was that? Sasuke asked, still stunned by the contact. It was static electricity I gathered during my training this morning. Naruto calmly said as he continued on his path to his destination. Sakura and Sasuke decided it best to follow Naruto as to get there on time. Hey Lee let's get going. Tenten said. Lee looked at her and then back at Team 7 and gave his reply. You guys, I want to test something. Lee said and started heading in the direction that Team 7 went. He got to the balcony of a lobby and called out. Hey, guy with the dark eyes. They all looked up to see the boy they saw earlier. Sasuke gave a look as if he was listening, he was still peeved with Naruto. Sakura was disgusted and Naruto wasn't even paying attention. Will you fight me right here? Lee asked. Naruto was now interested so he turned around and looked at Lee just as he dropped to the ground. Sasuke looked confused. A fight right now? asked Sasuke. As he looked, Sakura's expression turned to confusion, and then he looked at Naruto who looked unmoved, hard to tell what's behind the sunglasses, he looked back at Lee. Yes. Lee said. I am Rock Lee, he said and then pointed at Sasuke. When you want to learn someone else's name you give yours first, right? It's yes, Sasuke. Lee said. Sasuke's mood had calmed down a bit. Eh, so you know. Sasuke said, putting on his calm exterior. I want to fight you. I want to test my techniques against the offspring of the genius ninja clan. Plus. Lee said and looked at Sakura which made her shudder, then he winked at her. Sakura flinched, and then Lee blew a kiss at her, Sakura being the drama queen she leaned as far back as she could to dodge it, which resulted in her hitting her head on the ground. Hey don't throw weird things I barely escaped with my life. Sakura practically yelled. You don't have to be so mean. Lee said downheartedly. Challenging me knowing the Achiha name, frankly you're a fool. You're about to learn what this name means thick brows. Sasuke said as he got into a fighting stance. Please. Lee said. I'm lucky I already get to face the number one rookie. And I'll prove myself, Guy sensei Lee entered his preferred stance and said, I'll say this, you guys cannot beat me, because right now I'm the strongest leaf genin. He stopped my kick with his hand. That wasn't human, I don't know what kind of ninjutsu he used, but. Sasuke thought. Sounds fun, I'll do it. Sasuke said happy that he could show off. Sakura looked over at the clock. Sasuke don't. Sakura exclaimed. We only have 30 minutes to get to the meeting. I'll be done in 5 minutes. Sasuke said and lunged at Lee. Naruto smirked, I got to test out my Kitsunagari. Oh yeah kick ass name. He's coming. Sorry guy sensei, I might need to break your rules. I may use that move. Lee thought as Sasuke made it right in front of Lee. Lee jumped up and announced his first move. Kanoha sent you. Above. Sasuke yelled in his head. He ducked just barely managing to dodge. When Lee hit the ground he immediately followed through with another Kanoha Senpyu. Damn it I can't dodge. I have to block it. Sasuke thought as he put his arm up to block. What? Sasuke thought as Lee's attack went through Sasuke's defenses. Sasuke was knocked back due to the force of Lee's kick. Sasuke-kun. Sakura yelled. What's going on? Sasuke thought. But he had that blocked. Sakura thought. He slipped through my guard. Was that ninjutsu or jinjutsu? Sasuke thought. Naruto who was just sitting back and watching with a smirk on his face. Basic to jutsu. Thought Naruto. Sasuke staggered up and grinned. Heh, fine, this gives me a chance to practice. Sasuke thought. Sakura at Sasuke with surprise on her face. 
What? No way that's the Sharingan. When did he? Plus both eyes. Sakura thought. So that's the Sharingan. Lee thought. Hm, now let's see how he does. Naruto thought and then he looked at Sakura and frowned. Sakura looked at Sasuke with amazement. Wonder if she would look at me like that if I showed her my eyes. Naruto thought. Heh. She might, but are you willing to show her? I think you're hiding behind those glasses for a reason. Kaiubi said. If I have no choice I'll show them. Naruto said and Kaiubi just chuckled. Haha Sasuke-kun is incredible. If this is the same advanced bloodline as Kakashi-sensei then he can read thick brows moves. Sakura thought excitedly. Ninjutsu or Jinjutsu it must be some kind of magic, I'll reveal it. Sasuke thought. Sasuke-kun is getting stronger and stronger. The Uchiha clan is great. Yeah, Sasuke-kun can't lose to this guy. Sakura thought. Sakura's face contorted from admiration to fear as Sasuke was kicked into the air by Lee. The Sharingan. Sakura thought. The Sharingan can't read it. This can't be. Sasuke thought. Lee got in a crouching position. Yes, my moves are neither ninjutsu or jinjutsu. Lee said and then jumped up into the air and appeared parallel to the seemingly flying Sasuke. Kanoha cage by. Lee called out and Sasuke's eyes widened in shock. Yes, my moves are simple to jutsu, Sasuke-kun. You may not believe it because it is so basic but. They say the Sharingan has the ability to reveal all forms of Nin, Gen, and Tai Jutsu. It is true that by reading Ninjutsu and Jinjutsu which need chakra to be raised and seals to perform, you get an advantage through the Sharingan, but to Jutsu is a little different. Lee said. What do you mean? Sasuke asked. Even if you can read my movements with your eyes, your body does not have the speed to react to my Tajutsu. Basically even if you can see it, if your body can't move, then it's useless. Lee said as he released some bandages on his arm. Do you know that among strong people there are two types. One is the genius types, and the other is the hardworking types. The Sharingan that belongs to the Ichiha blood is a genius type, while well, I'm simply a hardworking type who has mastered Tajutsu. You could say my ultimate Tajutsu is the worst possible matchup for your Sharingan. And I'll prove it with this technique that hard work surpasses genius. Lee said. What's he planning? Seemingly regretting accepting this challenge. The pinwheel struck Lee's bandage, that's. That's enough Lee. A turtle yelled out, the pinwheel was secure and pulled Lee. Lee had regained his composure and landed gracefully. What's going on? Sasuke thought as he started free-falling. What's with the turtle? Naruto asked Kaiubi. It's a summoned creature that varies in size, strength and type. He is a turtle. Kaiubi said. Really, how do I get one? Naruto asked. You have to find someone who has access to the summoning scroll and sign it. Kaiubi said. Ah. Okay. Naruto said. Sasuke-kun. Sakura yelled as she ran to save Sasuke from falling on the ground. She caught him and said, are you alright, Sasuke-kun? Sakura asked. He's so shaken he didn't even try to protect himself from the fall. So you were watching? Lee asked the turtle. Lee. That technique is forbidden. The turtle spoke. I'm sorry I just. Lee sat and the turtle glared at Lee. Lee then flinched. But I wasn't planning on using the other technique. Lee exclaimed. Sakura and Sakura looked over at the turtle wondering what was going on. You fool. The turtle yelled. You think you can get away with an excuse like that? You already know what it means for a ninja to reveal his special techniques. The turtle said. Yes. Lee said head bowed. Damn I lost to these weirdos. Sasuke thought. Are you prepared to pay? The turtle asked. Yes. Lee said. Then here comes Guy sensei The turtle said then there was a poof and smoke appeared on top of the turtle. When the smoke disappeared a man that looked awfully similar to Lee stood posed in a very disturbing pose. Jeez. You guys are the epitome of youth. Guy said as his tooth pinched. The e w w w. He's got even thicker eyebrows. Yelled Sakura. Sasuke muttered super thick Sakura, then muttered super faggy. Hey. Stop insulting Guy sensei. Lee yelled. Lee. Guy interrupted. Oh. Yes. Lee said, but could not finish because Guy had hit Lee right across the cheek, knocking him back and drawing blood. You fool. Guy yelled. The other three had looks of shock covering their faces. You are, you are. Guy said with tears in his eyes. Sensei, Sensei I Lee said, tears streaming down his face. Guy then grabbed Lee and embraced him. That's enough Lee you don't need to say it. Guy said as he was crying and embracing Lee. Sensei. Lee said. The three members of Team 7 all showed signs of disgust at the sight. I lost to him. Sasuke thought. Yes. This is what youth is all about. Guy said as his tears disappeared. Sensei. Lee said. It's alright Lee youth and mistakes go hand in hand. Guy said. You're too nice, Guy sensei. Lee said, but you did start a fight and almost broke one of my rules. Your punishment will be done after the Chunin exams. Guy said. Yes, Guy sensei. Lee said as he saluted. 
Stupid. Sakura said. Then Guy looked towards Team 7. Gah he's looking this way. Sakura exclaimed. Hum so these are Kakashi's students. Guy thought. You guys, how is Kakashi doing? Guy asked. You know Kakashi? Sasuke asked. He know him. Guy said. Sasuke looked confused. And then Sasuke blinked and Guy was gone. Guy appeared behind the team faster than Sasuke and Sakura could see. Naruto had been watching Guy and saw Guy move, but not even his Kitsunigan could see him perfectly. He's faster than my Kitsunigan can't see. Naruto exclaimed in his head. He you still have a ways to go. You'll naturally grow from now on, remember you can't improve your eyes anymore, you'll have to wait for them to naturally increase. Kaiubi said. People refer to us as eternal rivals. Guy said. Shocking Sakura and Sasuke. This guy. Sasuke thought. 50 wins and 49 losses. I'm stronger than Kakashi. Guy continued. No way. Fast, his speed is above Kakashi's. Is he human? Sasuke questioned in his head. See. Guy sensei is awesome. Lee yelled proudly. Damn it. Sasuke thought. I'm sorry about Lee, I swear to this face that it won't happen again. Guy said. Above Kakashi. Damn it, how can I become stronger if the strongest doesn't teach me? Sasuke thought. You guys and Lee should go to take your test now. Guy said as he pulled out a kunai and threw it at the pinwheel holding Lee in place. As Lee was adjusting his bandages he noticed that Lee's hands were all scarred up. But luck Lee. Guy said as he jumped away. Yes, Lee said as he fixed the bandages. You know Sasuke-kun, I came here to test my abilities. I lied before. I'm not the strongest Leaf Genin, moreover the strongest is most likely on my team. I entered this to beat him, and you're also one of my targets. Be prepared during the exam. Lee said and then jumped up to the balcony. Sasuke made a fist with his hand and started to get very angry. Sakura noticed this and was about to comfort him, but Naruto decided to finally speak up and deactivate his Katsunagari. It looks like your new Ichiha ability is useless. Naruto said calmly as he started walking to the stairs. Naruto. Sakura yelled out. Naruto stopped shyly on the stairs. Uh shut up, I'll beat him next time. Sasuke said. Hey you just got your ass kicked. Naruto said not even looking at him. Sasuke and Sakura were getting more and more pissed at Naruto. Stop it Naruto. Sakura yelled out. If you were paying attention you would have noticed his hands had dozens of scars. This means he's been training harder and longer than you. You need to work just as hard or you'll never beat him. Naruto stated calmly. Sasuke's eyes widened in realization and his hand relaxed a bit. Sasuke-kun. Sakura thought. Sasuke then gripped his hand, sounds fun. Sasuke thought. The FTE. This thing is getting fun, this Chunin exam. Let's go. Sasuke announced. They all then headed to the third floor to room 301, when they got to the hall they saw Kakashi leaning against the wall next to the door. So Sakura also came so you guys are officially ready to take the test. Kakashi said looking up from his book. Why didn't you tell us that we needed to do this as a team Kakashi sensei? Sakura asked. I didn't want any of you to force another into taking this exam. Kakashi said. But you guys all came of your own free will so go, my proud team. Kakashi said as he ushered the genin into the room. When they all entered they were shocked. The room was full of various people from many different villages. So many people are here. Sakura thought. Their days however was short-lived as a blonde-haired girl jumped onto Sasuke. Sasuke-kun. Ino yelled as she clung to Sasuke. You were late, I was worried. I haven't seen you in a long time so I have been waiting in anticipation. Ino said. Naruto took this time to wander over to a wall and lean on it. Get away from Sasuke-kun, Ino pig. Sakura yelled. Ino looked over to Sakura. Ah Sakura you here? I see you have your big forehead as well. Ino said. Sakura got really pissed at that comment. What did you say? Sakura yelled, popping a few veins in her head. Just then Chaoji and Shikamaru walked up to the group. You guys are taking this stupid exam too. Shikamaru said while Chaoji was eating chips and Sakura and Ino were shouting insults at each other. Then Kiba's team approached the fray. Yahoo I found you. Kiba yelled as he and his team approached. Naruto just stood against the wall. I wonder if anyone even knows I'm here. Naruto said in his mind. You look a lot different than you usually do, so probably they wouldn't recognize you. Kaiubi said. And so had it, everyone from Team 8 and 10 were looking around. Kiba was the first to say anything. Where's the loud mouth? Kiba asked. Shino and Shikamaru stopped looking when they saw that he was standing against the wall, of course they barely recognized him. He's right there. Sasuke said as he pointed at Naruto and used this chance to escape from Ino. Everyone that wasn't looking at Naruto looked at him, then and they were all shocked. Shino didn't show anything on the outside, but was still shocked. Everyone else showed severe signs of shock. 
Hinata of course was blushing, except this time it was a lot more than usual, Ino was thinking that Naruto looked almost as good as Sasuke. Shikamaru and Chaoji were mildly interested, but interested nonetheless. Kiba was the most intrigued and he voiced his opinion. Ha ah, so the dope decided to change for the exam. This is a ninja exam not a fashion show. Kiba said and started laughing. I'm sorry Naruto-kun, Kiba-kun didn't mean that. Hinata said in her shy and timid type of way. You don't seem worried about this exam Kiba. Sasuke said. Ah we did a lot of training we won't lose to you. Kiba arrogantly said. Hey you guys should be more quiet. A white haired guy with glasses said. Henceforth known as Kabuto. You guys are the rookies straight out of the academy right? Acting like schoolgirls geez. This isn't a stroll in the park you know. At this Hinata blushed a bit, wonder what she just thought about. J, this however didn't go unnoticed by Naruto and her teammates. And who are you? Ino took it upon herself to ask. I'm Kabuto, but you shouldn't worry about who I am, take a look behind you. Kabuto said. Everyone looked behind them except Naruto. They saw three rain nins looking as if they were ready to kill someone. They are ninjas from hidden rain, they have short tempers. Kabuto said with a smirk, everyone else showed signs of nervousness. Then Kabuto continued. Everyone is nervous about this exam, quiet down before you cause a scene. Well I can't blame you, you're clueless rookies. You remind me of how I used to be. Kabuto said. Kabuto, is this your second time? Sakura asked. No, this is my seventh time. This exam is held twice a year, so this is my fourth year. Kabuto said calmly. So you must know a lot about this exam then? Sakura asked. That's right. Kabuto said. Just for you I'll share some info. With these nin info cards. Everyone had a clueless expression so Kabuto explained. These cards hold information about anything I've learned in the last four years. Right now they're blank, but when I add chakra. He said as he put chakra into the card and information appeared. This card shows how many people are participating this year. Do you have cards on individual people? Sasuke asked. Yes I do, just give me any information about them and I'll look for them. Kabuto said. Rock Lee of Kanoha and his teammates. Sasuke said. Oh you have a name that's good, let's see. Kabuto said and swung his hand over his deck of cards and pulled out three cards. Teams are organized together in his deck. And then he focused chakra on them. Let's see, they're a year older than you, and this is their first time taking this test. Rock Lee made himself known last year as an excellent ninja. His tojutsu is outstanding, the rest isn't anything impressive. Tenten is one of the top kanoichi in Kanoha. Her weapon skill is quite impressive, and her other skills are average. And the last of the team is Hayuganiji. Hinata visibly paled and again only three people noticed. Hayuga must be related, and it seems they're on bad terms. Naruto thought. Abuto continued, he is last year's number one rookie excellent to Jutsu, and as a member of the Hayuga clan, possesses the Byakugan. Leaf, rain, sand, grass, waterfall, and sound. Many great ninjas come from these great villages to take the exam. Sound was created just last year so there isn't that much info, but the rest of the villages are filled with talented youngsters. Kabuto said. Makes you lose your confidence. Hinata said with a stutter. So, basically all these people are. Sakura questioned. Yes, like Lee and his team, they are the top geniuses from various countries. Kabuto finished. All around the room all eyes were on the rookies. Gara's team, Lee's team, and the Lone Sound team were the most interested. He it looks like he made it after all. Kankuro said. Gara only gave a sadistic smile. Looks like they still want some, maybe you should have knocked more sense into them. Niji spoke. So that kid thinks our village is insignificant does he? Dosu said. Bandaged sound dude. I say we play with him. Zaku said. Spiky haired sound dude. He, good idea. Let's help him to improve his data. Sound nins are vicious. Dosu said. The three hidden sounds leapt off their seats and rushed the leaf genins. Kabuto and Naruto noticed the sound nins approach and watched closely. As the sound nins got closer, Zaku jumped into the air and threw two kunai at Kabuto, which were easily dodged. Then Dosu got right up in front of him and swung his arm at Kabuto. Kabuto once again dodged it completely. He dodged it, Sakura thought. Good speed. Sasuke thought. And then Kabuto's glasses broke which put everyone into shock except Naruto. I see that kind of attack. Thought Kabuto. What was that noise? Naruto asked Kaiubi. That ninja used that thing on his wrist to magnify the vibration to injure his opponent. Kaiubi said. Naruto looked around at the confused faces. How come no one else heard it? Naruto asked. Because it is not supposed to be heard it just makes the eardrum vibrate with so much intensity it injures it. You only heard it because of your improved hearing, which will also help you if you fight him. Kaiubi said. How? Naruto asked. That's something you have to figure out. Kaiubi said with a chuckle. What happened when he dodged that? Sasuke asked. 
It must have glanced at his nose, that's what you get for acting like a big shot. Shikamaru said. Just then Kabuto's world went vertigo and he puked. Everyone looked on, confusion evident in their stares. Kabuto-san. Sakura yelled and ran over to help him. Everyone was thinking the same thing he dodged it so why? Then a huge blast of smoke filled the entrance and there stood a bunch of Chunin with a man in a trench coat leading the group. Quiet down you worthless bastards. Yelled the man in the trench coat. Henceforth known as Ibiki. Thanks for waiting. I'm Marino Ibiki, the examiner for the first test. Almost all the people were scared at the sight of him. You sound guys stop doing as you please. Do you already wish to fail? Ibiki stated. Sorry this is our first time we kinda got excited. Dosu explained. I'll say this there will be no fighting unless the instructor says so, do I make myself clear? Ibiki said in a very intimidating voice. Most people nodded. Good. Now instead of where you are sitting now you will pick up a number and then sit there, then I will hand out your test. Ibiki said. Sakura then looked at Naruto. This is not a good test for him. Sakura thought. Everyone got their number and sat down in their assigned seats and received their tests. Naruto looked disappointed. Naruto-kun. Hinata said. Hi Hinata, what's up? Naruto said. He didn't even notice it was her sitting there because he wasn't paying attention. Let's do our best. Hinata said as she smiled and of course blushed. Yeah good luck. Naruto said to help encourage her as he smiled back. Okay listen up and listen good I'm going to explain the rules, no questions allowed. You will start this exam with 10 points. Every question you get wrong you lose a point, there are 10 questions on this test. Next, this is a team test, so how good you do is determined by your team's total score. So each team will see how much of the initial 30 points they start with they can keep. Sakura slammed her head into the desk. Now before anyone thinks to question this just listen. The next rule and most important rule. Anyone caught doing sneaky activities, like cheating, by one of the testing officials you will lose 2 points for every offense. So some will be kicked out of this exam before it is finished. Know that the pathetic ones who get caught cheating are destroying themselves. You are a ninja who is trying to obtain the rank of Chunin, so be a proud ninja. Ibiki said. Okay, it's okay, even if Naruto doesn't get any points Sasuke and I will just cover him. Sakura thought. Last rule, anyone who loses all their points or fails to answer a question right will be failed along with their two teammates. Ibiki finished. Sakura and Sasuke immediately went from calm to a weird new feeling of shock, confusion, and anger all rolled into one. Now then the test will be one hour, the tenth question will be given out 15 minutes before the end of the test, so you have 45 minutes for the first nine questions. Begin. And then it all started. This could be very bad, Naruto please just don't get zero points. Thought Sakura. Contrary to what Sakura and Sasuke would have thought, Naruto was the calmest person in the room. Yo hey Kaiubi can you help me with these questions? Naruto asked Kaiubi in his head. He no problem this should be easy. Kaiubi said. And then Naruto started the test and three minutes later he finished. Thanks Kaiubi. Naruto thought. Ibiki and all the Chunin examiners were completely surprised that Naruto had completed all nine questions in three minutes. Hinata was just as surprised, she was gonna help Naruto cheat and hopefully get him to like her more, but he had done it himself. Naruto had caught Hinata's distress and wrote something on the top corner of his paper. Naruto decided it was gonna be a long hour, so he put his head down on the left side of his paper. Sakura and Sasuke both saw Naruto go through all the problems and then write something on the top of the exam and then lay his head down, they were confused to say the least, but needed to worry about their own tests. Everyone who gathered what type of exam it was started to use anything in their capacity to cheat. Sasuke activates his Sharingan to copy someone's movements, Sakura did it all on her own, and when she was finished she got taken over by Ino. The sound nins were using the sounds of the people's writing to get the answers. Kiba used Akamaru, and Shino used his bugs. Denton had used the old mirror trick to get her and lead the answers they needed. Niji used his Byakugan to see through people and copy their answers. Hinata too used her Byakugan, but when she used it, she saw what Naruto wrote on the top of his paper. Hinata, it's okay you'll do just fine, but if you need any answers just copy them off of my paper. Hinata's eyes widened in shock, and when Naruto noticed this he knew she had gotten his message. He wasted no time and erased his message so no one else could read. Of what he could tell only four people saw the message one of which was Ibiki, but since he didn't do anything he figured it was alright he just didn't want to push his luck. Needless to say Hinata whispered a thank you to Naruto and copied his answers. Naruto had taken the rest of the time to get a lesson from Kaiubi. By the end of the 45 minutes out of the 51 original teams, there were only 33 left. Naruto noted that Hinata was smiling the biggest smile he had ever seen on her and that the rest of the rookies were still in it, as well as the San team, Kabuto, and Lee's team. Kenkuro then entered the room, and Ibiki started to talk again. Well then, now that he's done playing with his dolls we can get started. 
Ibiki said taking Kankuro by surprise. We will begin the 10th question, but first I have some additional rules I must add. These will be the rules of desperation. Ibiki said. More rules. Why doesn't he just give it a break? Sakura thought. Okay first you have to decide whether you want to take it or not. If you don't wish to take it then you will lose all your points and you and your teammates will fail. What? If that is the consequence then of course we'll take it. Someone yelled. Ah but if you take it then get it wrong then you will be a genin forever. Ibiki said. What kind of rule is that? There are people here who have taken this test before. Kiba yelled. Ibiki started laughing. You guys are unlucky this year, it's my rule, but I'm giving you a way out. So choose now. Ibiki said. Naruto was easily the calmest genin in the room because with his heightened senses, he could tell that Ibiki was bluffing. People started giving up after a few teams left there were only 26 remaining. Ibiki took a look around and found that there were only two people who were unsure of what to do. Sakura and Hinata. Sakura wasn't worried about herself, she was worried for Naruto. Hinata was worried that if she didn't get it right what her family would think. Both girls looked at Naruto to try and get a feeling of what to do, and they got their answer. Naruto was sitting there with a grin on his face like he knew something someone else didn't. So they decided that they would trust Naruto, and both their doubts were gone. Ibiki knew that it was done, everyone in that room decided, so it was time to announce the tenth question. Everyone in this room. Has passed. Chapter 4. Naruto, wait, what do you mean? What about the tenth question? Sakura asked. Almost everyone was shocked that Ibiki had announced victory without asking the question. There is no tenth question. Or rather the choice to take the question or not is the tenth question. Everyone's confusion was wafting, but there were still some questions that needed to be answered. Then what about the other questions? If you were just going to pass everyone after the tenth question what was the point? Tamari asked. Ibiki grinned. Those questions already served their purpose. Those questions were there to test you on your information gathering skills. Since the rules said that success is based on the whole team doing well, it puts pressure on you not to screw up. Of course the questions were set up so that most genins wouldn't be able to answer them. Ibiki said and shot a glare at Naruto. Everyone caught this and looked at Naruto. So the dobe did answer all the questions without cheating. How did he get so good? Sasuke wondered in his head. How was Naruto able to answer all those questions? Even I had problems with some of them. Sakura thought. Everyone else was thinking along the same lines. And then Ibiki continued. Because of this most people came to the conclusion I have to cheat to pass. So we put a couple chains in the group to give you guys the answers without being obvious. But those who cheat poorly and get caught, fail. Ibiki said and removed his bandana to reveal horrible scars, burns, and holes. Most gasped at the sight. Information is the most important thing to most shinobi and they give anything to have it. If you get caught there's a chance that the information you get is fake. Ibiki put the bandana back on his head and continued. When you're a Chuanin you will be in charge of important information that you will have to protect for your comrades and your village. So we had you gather information. Which clearly got rid of all of the people who didn't have the right abilities. Ibiki said. But what about the final question, it doesn't make sense. Tamari said. Ibiki gave a warm smile that freaked everyone out. The tenth question was the purpose of this test. When you are put on dangerous missions. You will tend to ask yourself if I should or shouldn't do it. You will face uncertainty such as. Are there guards, how many, are there traps, etc. So do you take the assignment? The answer should always be yes. The people who think there will always be next year are despicable. You should always take any mission given to you no questions asked. So those of you who chose to take it, passed. I wish you luck from here on in. Ibiki said. And then there was a crash, and the window to Ibiki's right burst into shards of glass as a woman came through and stuck two kunai into the ceiling to show a banner. Everyone just sweat dropped at the scene. This is no time to be celebrating. I'm Mitarashi Anko, I'm the second test examiner. Now let's go. Follow me. She yelled. Everyone stared wide-eyed at this new examiner. Bad timing. Ibiki said. Anko looked around the group and noticed something. 78. Ibiki you left 26 teams. This year's test must have been too easy. Anko said, sounding disappointed. This year there are a lot of outstanding ones. Ibiki said. It doesn't matter, I'll cut them in half in the next exam. Anko explained in a giddy tone. What? She'll cut us in half. Sakura thought. This is getting exciting. I'll explain everything when we switch locations. Everyone follows me. Anko said and started to leave, but Ibiki whispered something to her. I need to borrow one of them. Ibiki whispered in a calm voice Anko merely nodded. As everyone started filling out, Ibiki nodded to one of them and then nodded at Naruto. The Chuanin understood and went to Naruto. Excuse me may I ask that you stay behind? Chuanin asked Naruto. Hinata who was still there next to Naruto was confused and then scared. 
I hope Naruto-kun doesn't get into trouble because he let me copy. Hinata thought. Naruto nodded to the chunin and sat back down. Everyone who was left thought it weird that Naruto was now sitting instead of leaving. Kiba went over to Hinata. Hey Hinata let's go. Kiba said. Hinata nodded and gave one last look to the calm Naruto still sitting there and left with Kiba. Sakura, Sasuke, Naruto, Ibiki and the Chunin were the only ones left. Um Naruto we're going to be late. Sakura pleaded. Ibiki stepped up. You two should go. I have to talk to young Yuzumaki Naruto here. Anko gets upset when people are late. And she tends to get bloody. Ibiki said not to take his eyes off of Naruto. Sakura and Sasuke nodded and started to leave. Ibiki looked at the Chunin and gestured for them to leave as well. They nodded and puffed away. Sasuke and Sakura, these next three scene changes are at the same time. What do you think he wants with Naruto? Sakura asked Sasuke as they ran to catch up with the rest of the genin. Sasuke looked at her and then back at their target. Don't you find it weird that Naruto finished the test before everyone else? Sasuke asked. Sakura nodded. This means that there was no one to cheat off of and yet that dobe still answered all the questions. Sasuke added. Maybe he found it futile, so he just guessed on all the questions. Sakura said, trying to figure out the situation. Sasuke shook his head. No. From what I saw there were a bunch of people who copied off of him, and when I took an answer someone got from Naruto and worked backwards to see if he was right, I found out that he was. Sasuke said. Sakura looked Sasuke wide-eyed. So he answered all the questions and they were most likely right. Sakura asked and Sasuke just nodded. They were nearing the rest of the group so they slowed their pace and stayed in the back of the group where they saw a few people stare at them and look away. If anything Naruto just showed the rest of the people that we are good, or at least he is. So most likely we'll be targeted in whatever the next exam is. Sasuke said Sakura just nodded as they walked behind the big group until they reached their next testing area. The rest of the testing genins, they were all walking towards their next destination following closely behind Anko. They all were curious about what the next test would be most of course were thinking about Yuzumaki Naruto. Their thoughts were along the lines of how did he finish in 3 minutes. Or how strong is he. The members of the rookie nine were discussing matters amongst themselves. So how do you think Naruto finished that fast? Ino asked. Everyone was brought out of their original thinking to figure it out. He's been studying so much. Shikamaru said as he peered up at the clouds. Everyone thought on this for a second and all came to the same conclusion. But the question is when did Naruto decide to study? Shikamaru added. How do we even know he got them all right? He probably just put a bunch of nonsense on the paper. Kiba said. Anada was next to him. Shino said, and then everyone looked at her. She was in deep thought that she didn't even hear any of the conversation. Hinata. Kiba said and broke her out of her thoughts as she looked around and noticed that they were looking at her. Ah no, yes Kiba-kun. Hinata said timidly. You were sitting next to Naruto, did you happen to see his paper? Kiba asked. Hinata nodded and looked at the ground. So did he get them right or did he just put a bunch of nonsense on the paper? Kiba asked. They looked like they were right. Hinata said timidly, not looking up from the ground. I got all my answers from him, and I think he's in trouble because of it. Hinata said as tears started welling up in her eyes. Everyone looked at her expecting an explanation when Shikamaru interrupted. I don't think they would do such a troublesome thing. Ibiki already said we all passed so there shouldn't be any problem. Shikamaru said reassuringly, everyone was a little confused. Hinata nodded, feeling a little better. Sakura and Sasuke finally reached the group. The rookie nine looked at them momentarily and then looked away. They are probably the most troublesome team. Shikamaru muttered under his breath so no one heard him. The group stopped at what they assumed was the next testing area. They stopped in front of a big forest that had a very disturbing aura to it. This is test course 44, labeled the forest of death by those who have been in there. Anko announced. Everyone looked in awe at the sight before them. This will be the area for your next exam. You will spend 120 hours within the forest, roughly 5 days. The hopeful Chuan intensed at Anko's statement. She continued. You will be doing an all-out, survival, scroll hunt. Anko saw the confused faces and took out two scrolls to clarify. You will be fighting against each group for possession of these scrolls. Each team starts with either the heaven or earth scroll. In order to pass you will need to get to the center with both scrolls. In order to accomplish this goal you can use any means necessary, that includes killing your opponent. Anko said and she looked about her at the faces of the genin. She took note that there were some unsure ones and the maniacal ones who were smiling. There are going to be a lot of deaths this time around. Anko took note. I will need you to sign these forms in order to participate in this exam. All members must turn in their form before the exam starts or none of them may participate. Anko said. She got a shocked expression from all members of the rookie nine and all the genins looked over at Sasuke and Sakura. Wait, our teammate was kept behind by Ibiki. We can't be penalized because of that. 
Sakura stated. Anko just smiled a wicked grin until Ichuanin came up to her and whispered something in her ear. Her grin was then removed by the message she got, and she was then a bit worried. She looked right at Sakura and Sasuke, and she looked at all the other anxious faces. Damn this is problematic. Anko thought. You will have 20 minutes to read over the form and decide if you will take it, no more time is allowed. If your teammate hasn't returned by then you will be disqualified. Anko said in a deadly serious tone. Sasuke and Sakura flinched. Now then in 20 minutes you go to the booth behind me to exchange your three forms for a scroll. Anko said and vanished in a puff of smoke. Everyone gave one last look to the two-man team and went their ways to discuss the next test. The eight members of the Rookie Nine were standing there. Sasuke was getting pissed again and Sakura was getting worried. Kiba had a cocky smile, Shino had a stoic face, and Hinata was worried, of course you wouldn't notice since she was looking down. Shikamaru had a bored expression, Chaoji was munching on chips, and Ino was worried that a crushing friend wouldn't be able to continue because of an idiot. Naruto, after the Chuanin disappeared, Naruto was left in the room with Ibiki. Naruto was wondering why exactly he was left alone in the room with what looked like a very intimidating guy. Ibiki broke Naruto's thoughts. Do you know why I asked you to stay? Ibiki asked Naruto to look right at him and shook his head. You broke the test record. You completed the first test in three minutes. I have a file on everyone in the test and you are supposed to be the bottom of your class. Ibiki said. Naruto was confused. Is that a bad thing? Naruto asked. Ibiki flinched. The supposedly smartest of your class took 15 minutes to answer the nine questions and here the bottom student does it in a fifth of the time. Something smells fishy. Ibiki said. Naruto caught on to what he was insinuating. Do you think I'm an imposter? Naruto asked. Ibiki nodded and reached into his jacket and pulled out a kunai. And is there anything that will prove my innocence? Naruto asked. I've already sent for some Anbu and others to help put this matter to rest. Ibiki said. The best thing you can do is remain where you are and don't give me a reason to think that you're hostile. Naruto just sat there waiting until he thought of something. And what about the next exam my team can't proceed without me, right? Naruto asked. I have informed Chuanin to make sure Anko understands the situation. Ibiki said reassuringly. This of course didn't ease Naruto. I would have preferred you to relay the message to her. Not many people like me. Naruto said downheartedly. Hey don't worry, if you are actually the brat, I told one of the Chuanin who actually respect you to relay the message. Even though they're hard to find, some people actually acknowledge you for what you gave up for the village. Ibiki said Naruto physically relaxed. After waiting a couple minutes a group of Anbu, three Hyuga, the Rookie Nine Jounin and the Hokage entered the room. They all stood in front of Naruto with a good distance in front of him and weapons at the ready. So do you know why we are here? The Hokage asked, Naruto nodded. The Hokage continued, so do you have any objection to our inquiries? He asked. Naruto shook his head. Good. The Hokage then waved his hand at the Hyuga, as if signaling for them to do something. All three activated their Byakugan and scanned Naruto. Kakashi lifted his forehead protector to reveal his Sharingan. After the Hyuga finished their investigation one went to the Hokage and whispered their results. He's not using Jinjutsu or any other ability to change his appearance. He is Uzumaki Naruto. However there is something strange. The Hyuga reported silently to the Hokage who raised his eyebrow in curiosity. The Hyuga continued, his eyes have become unnatural, they're more feline than human, they have slits. The Hokage immediately gazed at Naruto as if he was the most important thing in the world. Naruto sighed, this is not going to be easy. I guess you get your way, they get to see my eyes. Naruto said to Kaiubi. It was only a matter of time. Kaiubi said in a concerned tone. Naruto looked right at the Hokage and took off his glasses. Everyone gasped and gripped the weapons they were holding. My eyes aren't the only things that have changed, I have improved my ears and nose also. This enables me to hear people better, such as when they whisper something important to someone else. Everyone visibly tensed, they were fearing the worst that could have happened. Has Kaiubi taken control? Kakashi asked, extremely worried. Naruto glanced over at Kakashi. No, I'm still Naruto. He hasn't taken control, nor has he attempted to take control. Naruto said reassuringly of course this didn't deter anyone, and Naruto knew it. I'll just have to let them ask their questions and hope they believe me afterwards. Naruto said to Kaiubi. Hell little kid you got yourself in a tight spot. Kaiubi said. I know. Was all Naruto could answer with. Naruto when did this happen? The Hokage asked. The night before Kakashi announced that we would be taking the Chunin exams. Naruto answered. Everyone was sizing Naruto up looking to find some way to figure out how to handle the situation. Can you communicate with the Kaiubi? The Hokage asked. Yes. Naruto answered. Everyone tensed again. Are you in complete control of the Kaiubi? Ibiki was the one to ask. I have no control over him. 
was Naruto's response, which worried everyone the most. I have been in constant communication with the Kaiubi this whole week, and he's been nothing but helpful. Naruto said, trying to reassure them. And how has Kaiubi done that? Asuma asked. I was able to master my chakra control thanks to Kaiubi. Naruto said. Kakashi and the Hokage relaxed a bit. I was also given a couple of jutsus to help me. This made everyone curious. What kind of jutsus? Kurinai asked. Naruto then held out his right hand and concentrated a little chakra to his hand and compressed it to form his fire. Everyone stepped back as they saw fire come right off his hand. What is that? Kurinai asked. It's my kitsune bai. Naruto said as if it was nothing. Then out of nowhere the fire turned from fire to electricity. Everyone there gasped. Naruto released his kitsune bai and looked at the shocked faces in the room. And the kaiubi taught you this? The hokage asked. Naruto nodded. Is there anything else? The hokage wondered out loud. I have learned how to forge things, use seals, and other various things. Naruto claimed. I also have an ability similar to the Sharingan, I call it the Kitsunigan. Naruto said, the eyes on the members in the room widened. You what? Asuma asked. Naruto activated his Kitsunigan to show the group. Everyone flinched at the sight of Naruto's eyes, they resembled the Kaiubi so well. Naruto being satisfied that they all saw the ability deactivated it. He looked at everyone for their reactions. The Hokage thought it best to end this meeting soon. Naruto, your new abilities are quite unique. At this moment in time the only thing that we can do is trust your judgment. I think that by what you told us there isn't a threat at this time, so there shouldn't be need to worry. The Hokage said and looked about the room at the elder ninjas. They all seemed to agree with his decision. I will inform the more empathetic members of the council about this, so that there will not be a controversy about you hiding your abilities to threaten the village. The Hokage said and Naruto was feeling better that this was off his chest. Everyone's thoughts were interrupted as they heard a poof. They all got in their fighting positions until they realized it was just Anko. It was a party and no one told me. Anko asked jokingly then she took note of the seriousness in the room and asked. What's the situation? She asked. The Hokage looked as if he was thinking of how to finish this. After the next sections of the exam we will have to talk more on this subject. The Hokage said. Naruto nodded glad that this was almost over. I suggest you tell your teammates about your new abilities. The Hokage announced, Naruto was confused, so the Hokage clarified. The worst thing for a team is hiding your abilities. Say for instance that you're on a mission and you haven't told anyone your abilities, the leader of your team might send you somewhere where he believes your powers will be beneficial. Now if you haven't told your team about your abilities, then someone might be sent to a place where your abilities would be more suited. In this instance a member of your team could be killed because you were more suited, yet no one knew that you were. The Hokage stated. Naruto understood completely. The Hokage turned to Kakashi. Can his abilities be copied? The Hokage asked. Naruto was a bit upset that the Hokage asked that. Kakashi shook his head, this made the Hokage sigh in relief. Good. Everyone was then confused. Anko was totally lost so she just listened. Since your abilities can't be copied, we can label them as a bloodline limit this way there will be less questions. Everyone but Anko then understood and felt a bit more relieved. I will put in the records that you have an eye ability called the Kitsunagari, and since we do not know the extent of the Jutsus you will learn I will put that you have an unknown number of bloodline abilities. Is this acceptable? The Hokage asked. Naruto nodded. The Hokage then looked over at Anko and began. Have you started the next exam? No, I gave all the teams 20 minutes with the excuse to read over the forms and make their decisions. We have about 5 minutes. Anko said. The Hokage nodded and looked back at Naruto. You are free to go, just remember what we talked about. The Hokage said. Naruto got up and bowed to all the upper level shinobi and started to leave. He stopped at the door and looked back. Everyone was confused at why he stopped until he asked his question. Where is the next exam? Naruto asked sheepishly as he rubbed the back of his neck. They all totally forgot that no one had told him where to go. Anko pulled out a map and handed it to Naruto. You are to report to Area 44. It's the one circled on the map. Anko said and she pulled out a sheet of paper and handed it to him. Fill this out and have your team fill you in on the rules for the exam. You have five minutes so you better hurry. She said, Naruto nodded and ran out the door to the next area. Anko turned back to the rest of the group and they looked at her incredulously. What? Anko asked. Kakashi covered his Sharingan and answered. You know he won't make it in five minutes. So why didn't you take him, you guys would have made it there in a minute. Kakashi questioned. Anko took on a devious smile and responded. I just wanted his team to sweat. I told them that they had 20 minutes no more. Anko said. Everyone's sweat dropped, the Hokage coughed to get everyone's attention when he had it he made his announcement. What Naruto has just told and shown us is not to be told to anyone else without his discretion. P.
people already look at him as if he was the Yaokai already, if they were to find out he was in constant communication with it and that he had its powers, just think what would happen. Everyone shuddered knowing exactly what the Hokage meant. I will post his blood limit in the records and tell a select few members of the council. No one here is to announce this to anyone else. Understood. The Hokage asked forcibly. They all nodded and gave an affirmative. You're all dismissed. The Hokage said and they all scattered in whatever direction they were to go. Anko appeared at the forest of death with two minutes left. She looked about and found that everyone was ready excluding the rookie nine. Sasuke kept looking in every direction, Sakura and Hinata just stood there with their heads down, Shino was leaning against a tree just waiting, Kiba was in an argument with Akamaru, Ino was trying to provoke Sakura to no avail, Shikamaru was looking at the clouds, every once in a while he glanced about, and Chaoji was just eating. It looks like he at least has some friends. Anko thought as she looked at her watch. A bug had just landed on Shino's outstretched hand, Shino raised his eyebrow and pushed himself off the tree. He walked over to the group, which everyone looked right at him because of it. He's on his way. Shino said. Everyone sighed in relief, but Shino continued. He won't make it. He has less than a minute and he is at least five minutes away. Everyone looked at him as if he were crazy, then Anko stepped forward which caused them to be worried. Twenty minutes are up, everyone turns in their slips and gets your scroll. Anko said knowing full and well even at running speed, it would take at least six minutes. She walked over to the group of rookies. I gave him 20 minutes and he didn't show up which means you're discal. She didn't finish however as Naruto dropped out of the sky at that second then landed with a huge thud and created a small crater. Everyone was just plain shocked, Anko of course was the most shocked by his appearance. Naruto's way to area 44, oh yeah here come some new abilities. Naruto ran out of the academy and looked at the map. He now had 4 minutes and from the looks of the map it would take longer. If this is some kind of test to see if I'm a capable ninja I'm going to be mad. Naruto thought as he was running to the location. By the looks of the map no one without a teleportation skill or super speed could make it. I'd say she knew you wouldn't make it on time. Kayubi said. Well I guess I'll show her what I'm made of, right? Naruto announced to Kayubi and gave a grin which was returned with another grin. Naruto stopped abruptly and gathered chakra to his hands, shoulders, and feet. All six plates then had a seal glow on them. If anyone was looking at him he went from tense to relaxed in a second. Naruto then jumped up into a tree, when he jumped it looked like he was just floating up the tree. When he reached the top he quickly grabbed the closest branch. He pulled himself onto the branch as he stood up on the branch it kind of looked like he wasn't even standing on it. He looked in the direction of the forest where he was to go. When he spotted it, he crouched down on the branch and grabbed hold. He turned away from the forest and got ready to push off. When he pushed off of the tree he was floating backwards above the village, just to let you know he cannot fly there is another explanation. He looked behind to judge if the trajectory was adequate and gathered two very powerful kitsune by, one in each hand. Naruto let out a breath and slapped his hands together, making a very powerful explosion that sent him flying to the forest. He was just zooming over Konoha backwards until he turned in midair to make sure he was on course. When he saw he was getting close he once again put chakra in the six plates. As he was getting closer Naruto activated another set of kitsune by but smaller. He turned around and slapped them together making a small inaudible explosion and plummeted to the ground at a very fast rate, he turned just in time to land on his feet and make a crater in front of his shocked classmates. Everyone was shocked at what they saw. Here, from out of nowhere, someone falls out of the sky fast enough to make a crater. Not only that, but this person's clothes and hair are singed, which means that something which involved fire is at fault. And the last fact is that this is the missing genin who almost got their team disqualified. The most shocked was of course the people in front of him. When he landed everyone else was getting worried that this guy was in fact strong and they would possibly have to fight him to the death in the next round. There were a few exceptions, there were some in the group that were actually excited. These groups are Lee's team, Gara, the sound team, Kabuto's team, and a group of grass ninjas. They all thought about finally being able to have a good fight. The rookie nine who were once pensive were now quite nervous of Naruto. Anko was quite surprised, she was just going to play with the group until Naruto arrived, but he made it on time, which should be impossible for a genin. And of course the fact that he came out of the sky was very unnerving. Naruto was starting to stand from his landing. As they got a good look at him they noticed that he was breathing heavily and that smoke was rising off of him. Naruto was now standing before the rest of the rookie nine and as he looked around he saw that all eyes were on him. The every hero needs to make a heroic entry. Naruto said as he rubbed the back of his head. Everyone's sweat dropped and yet they were relieved that the Naruto they once knew had not completely vanished. So did I make it in time? Believe it or not you did. Anko said, still in a little disbelief. That's good. Now then, on to the next matter of business. Naruto said everyone was confused. 
Why the hell did you have me come here by myself when you could have brought me here? Naruto yelled, pointing accusingly towards Anko. Anko was a little afraid for herself now that she was caught red-handed. Well you see, I kinda wanted to make your team sweat a bit. Anko admitted and immediately noticed a killing intent being thrown at her. She immediately escaped and went near the booth and started announcing what can get you disqualified, since she forgot to say it before. The rookie nine weren't listening, instead they were taking note of Naruto, then they all noticed something irregular about Naruto. His eyes had cat-like slits in them. Naruto noticed that his classmates were looking at him wide-eyed. He was trying to figure it out when he finally realized what they were looking at. Shit, I forgot to put my glasses back on. Naruto thought as he glanced at his fellow ninjas. No one decided to talk about it because he would tell them about it when he was ready to. After Anko's speech about what gets you disqualified, she signaled for the genins to get their scrolls. The rookie nine split up to get their scrolls and plan ahead. Dean 10, Ino, Shikamaru, and Chaoji were thinking of what to do, they had just received their scroll and were waiting in front of their assigned gate. Shikamaru was going through a lot of plans in his head, trying to figure out a best course of action when Ino decided to ask. Okay so how are we going to do this? Ino asked. We are probably the weakest group and there are a lot of strong people in this test. I don't want to get killed. Ino said a little nervous. I would have suggested going after Naruto's team, but things have seemed to change. Shikamaru said, Ino looked at him like she was expecting a further explanation. Before, Naruto always fought Sasuke, and Sakura would always fight with Naruto which gave an enemy advantage. Now Naruto is more collective. Ino was now completely lost. What do you mean? Ino asked. A couple of days ago Naruto came up to the hill I was playing a nice quiet game of shogi on. When I saw him coming I thought, now that he was there I wouldn't be able to concentrate. When he noticed me he came over and watched me quietly. I asked him what he wanted, he actually asked me if he could play. I tried telling him that there wasn't anything special about the game, but he insisted. Shikamaru said. Ino was getting a bit intrigued. So what happened? Ino asked. The first game we played was pretty much a tutorial. Then we started playing more seriously. After about five games he said that he had to get back to training and thanked me for teaching him how to play and for playing with him. Shikamaru stated. So he's starting to get more interested in more stuff than just power, Raymon, and Sakura. Chaoji decided to add. That's not my point. He didn't complain once, he was patient and collective. Also I always play shogi, so I figure I'm pretty good since Asuma sensei says that he is one of the best and I have a record of wins against him. And Naruto was doing well against me in the last two games. He was matching the strategies I came with and lasted quite a while. Shikamaru added. Ino and Chaoji both realized that if someone got Shikamaru's praise in Shogi, they must be good. Now on to why we can't go after them. 1. Naruto is a decent strategist. 2. Sakura is overall smart, so she will most likely be able to find an advantage easily, and Naruto outbeat her on the written test, which suggests he has gained the same knowledge. And 3. Sasuke is the number one rookie. He is strong, fast, and he has a variety of jutsus available, and Naruto is also strong, and I don't know what kind of techniques are available to him. So in conclusion their team is not a wise decision to go after. Shikamaru said. As he looked up to the clouds. So what team should we go after? Ino asked. One of the Leaf teams, they seem to be the most nervous about this exam. We just have to stay away from Naruto's team, Kiba's team, and Hayuganiji's team. We should be fine otherwise. Shikamaru stated. Ino and Chaoji both nodded in acceptance to Shikamaru's plan. Demate, Anada, Kiba, Akamaru, and Shino were standing outside their gate waiting for it to open. Kiba and Akamaru were getting a bit impatient. Shino was standing there stoically, and Hinata was in the background a bit nervous. They weren't talking, they didn't have anything to discuss, they already knew what to do, it was the same as they always did. Hinata would use her Byakugan to locate an enemy, they go to intercept the enemy, Shino sets up traps using bugs, and anyone who escaped the traps would have to face an assault from Kiba and Akamaru. Team 7, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura had just received their scroll and were waiting for the start of the exam. Naruto was there trying to come up with a plan until Sasuke broke into his thoughts. All right dub, spill it. Sasuke demanded. Sakura looked at Sasuke as if he were crazy and then looked at Naruto accusingly. Spill what? Naruto asked not really wanting to get into this right now. How did you finish your test so fast? Why were you kept behind? And your eyes. I want to know what the hell you're hiding from us and I want to know now. As the team leader these are things I demand to know. Sasuke demanded. Sakura flinched at how cold his words were. Naruto looked straight at Sasuke and gave his answers. I finished my test so fast because I've been studying a lot. I was kept behind to discuss just that matter. And as for my eyes, during training I stumbled across a bloodline ability that changed my eyes to that of a fox. The way they are now is just a reaction to their ability. Naruto said. 
Obviously his answers weren't full truths, but they made sense, and that is what he needed to do. Sasuke was a bit skeptical, but let it go for now, they had the next test to worry about. Sakura noticed that Sasuke was letting it go for now and sighed in relief. All the gates opened and all the Chuanin hopefuls jumped into the forest going for the targets they felt would be the best to go after. Naruto and Ko. Entered and headed away from the entrance at a comfortable speed. After a while of travel they took a little break in a small area. The whole way Naruto was trying to come up with a good plan for this test. He came up with one and started to put it into motion. Hey, I'm gonna go take a piss. I'll be right back. Naruto said. Sasuke nodded and Sakura was disgusted but nodded nonetheless. After he got behind a tree he went to the next step, first he used all his senses to make sure no one was around. When he was satisfied no one was around he activated his cage bunch and no jutsu. When the smoke cleared for the ability there were 10 Naruto's. The real one looked around the group and said silently, okay you four stay with Sasuke and Sakura-chan. Three of you stay completely hidden so you can stop ambushes. You five will come with me. Now then let's go. All the Naruto's nodded and went their ways. Three Naruto's concealed themselves as one went back to the rest of Team 7. Sasuke and Sakura took note that Naruto had returned. We're going to take this time right now to get supplies. Sasuke stated, Naruto and Sakura nodded. Sasuke distributed jobs. They separated to get what they were assigned to get. The three hidden Naruto's also separated one followed Sasuke, and the other two followed Sakura, since they can't lose a teammate, and the other clone isn't important. This of course was a good idea because while Sakura was gathering her portion of the supplies a ninja appeared in front of her. This ninja of course looked exactly like Sakura. Sakura immediately dropped her gathered supplies, but it was fruitless because she was knocked out. As the lookalike Sakura was getting ready to tie the real one up, the two Naruto clones came out of their hiding place and attacked the impostor. Before the impostor knew what was happening he was kicked in the gut. As he was kicked back the other Naruto swept the legs of their opponent from behind him, causing him to fall towards the ground. The clone that initiated the attack followed through his counterpart's attack by a kick to the impostor's head, which sent it into the ground with tremendous force. Both clones stood up to look at their handiwork. The impostor henge was released to reveal a mist nin with a gas mask on. One of the clones went to tie the mist nin up, while the other woke Sakura up. As the clone shook Sakura she woke up immediately and shot up to look around her surroundings, just to find a knocked out mist nin and two Naruto's. What happened? Sakura asked the two Naruto's. Well you were attacked and knocked out, we came in and beat him up. The clone started calmly. What should we do with him? The other clone said. Sakura looked at both Naruto's one after another. Why are you here? Sakura asked. We were just making sure something like this didn't happen. There's a clone trailing Sasuke as well. One of the clones stated. The clone that was binding the Miss Nin picked him up and put him over his shoulder. The one that tended to Sakura got up and jumped into the trees. Let's go, we should decide what to do about this situation. The clone said as he started heading back to the meeting place Sakura followed, wary of another attack. The two reached the meeting place to see that Sasuke was already there. Sasuke looked up to see Sakura and Naruto coming up to him. He immediately took note of the enemy Naruto head and stood up. What happened? Sasuke asked. I was attacked. Sakura admitted guiltily. TCH, just great already being attacked and it's this early in the exam. Sasuke said angrily. The clone's enhanced senses picked up a disturbance and pushed Sakura out of the way as a giant wind blast picked up catching Team 7 by surprise. The clone immediately popped out of existence as the current hit him. There was too much dust, so the clone's disappearance was well hidden. Sakura was pushed into Sasuke and they landed outside of the blast. After the smoke cleared the two of them were just getting up as Naruto came up to them. Are you guys okay? Naruto asked. They both gave a small nod, and then out of nowhere another Naruto dropped the Naruto, who had asked if they were okay. Sasuke and Sakura were taken aback at the sight of two Naruto's looking at each other preparing for a fight. The two Naruto's were sizing each other up trying to find the right time for the first attack. Sakura and Sasuke couldn't tell who was who and didn't quite know how to handle the situation. The real Naruto, this is right after they split up. The six Naruto's were using their enhanced senses to find other ninjas to accomplish their objective faster. They had sensed a team just a little ways from where they left the rest of Team 7. And we're heading there right now. When they got to where the team was, they spotted them taking this time to gather supplies. The team was warily eating glances about making sure no one would sneak up on them. Luckily Naruto's eyesight gave him a good distance so as to not be spotted. Naruto came up with a fairly simple strategy and used his cage bunch and no jutsu again. This time there were 36 Naruto's and every one of them transformed. Now Naruto looked like he was half of the people taking this exam. Each team split up to surround the unsuspecting team. The real Naruto disguised as Lee gave his signal and all the teams rushed in. The team in the center now fully aware of their predicament glanced about and what they saw scared them. 
this area they claimed for a slight break was to become a battlefield. As all the Naruto's reached the area they started attacking each other and the other team. The only one not getting hit was the real Naruto, his target was the real target. The real team was doing all they could to defend themselves from this all-out brawl. If they were smarter they would have realized two things. One. They were the only ones getting hurt and two. Ninjas wouldn't go after a scroll using these kinds of tactics. Of course the reason Naruto had chosen this kind of plan was for three reasons. One. Confuse the enemy, two. He didn't want to go against an entire team by himself, and three. After the team recovered he didn't want them to know who was responsible for taking their scroll. The real Naruto got behind one of the members of his objective and activated his electric version of his Kitsune Bai. He put his hand right on his opponent's back where his heart was. The ninja collapsed onto the ground unconscious. He repeated this with the other two members of the team. He ordered his clones to leave, after they had all disappeared he searched for the scroll. He found it and was a bit disappointed that it was heaven and they needed the earth. I guess I could always negotiate for the other one. Naruto said to no one in particular. Then Naruto felt one of his clones poof out of existence. He set off to help his team. He really hoped that he wouldn't be too late. Back with Team 7, this is probably going to be confusing. The two Naruto's were looking at each other trying to decide who should go first. One got tired of waiting and charged the other. The charging Naruto went to punch the other's chest but was blocked and countered with an uppercut. The charging Naruto evaded the attack and went for a sweeping kick. The sweep missed as the receiving Naruto flipped over the leg, as he landed he went for a kick towards the other's head. The charging Naruto saw the attack towards his head and blocked the kick with his forearm, he then grabbed the other Naruto's leg with his free hand and used his forearm for leverage as he flipped the other onto the ground. As Naruto hit the ground, the Naruto flipping him received a kick to the head and he flew into a tree. The Naruto on the ground disappeared into smoke and they all saw that another Naruto had kicked the once winning Naruto into the tree. Sasuke and Sakura had gotten severely confused with the new Naruto. Sasuke, Sakura, why are you guys just sitting there? Help me. The Naruto that hit the tree yelled at them. Sakura and Sasuke then figured out which was the real Naruto. When have you ever wanted my help before? And you always use the chant suffix with Sakura. Sasuke asked. The Naruto that asked for help started to crackle. Looks like I made a little mistake. The fake Naruto announced and he then released the hinge. There before the three members of Team 7 was a grass nin. He you are pretty good Naruto-kun, so let's just get this out in the open. I have the Earth Scroll, but if you want it you will have to kill me. The grass nin, henceforth known as Arachimaru, stated, he then pulled out the scroll and swallowed it. The three genins were disgusted by that show. Naruto was trying to figure out what he was going to do. Arachimaru glanced to both his right and left. Naruto noticed this, but before he could do anything he felt the two clones that were hiding vanish. Naruto figured that this was going to be a tough fight. Arachimaru looked at Naruto as if he was piercing his soul. Sasuke and Sakura were trying to come up with their own plans when they saw the way Arachimaru was looking at Naruto. Arachimaru called out, Sine Jashu. Then snakes shot out of his hand and struck Naruto through the chest. Team 7 looked at the snakes protruding Naruto's chest in shock. Naruto frowned before he disappeared into a cloud of smoke. Arachimaru smirked when he saw Sasuke's and Sakura's expressions. Now that I've dispatched the clones it's just the three of us. Arachimaru said. Sakura and Sasuke looked at him as if he was crazy. Arachimaru reached up and grabbed his bottom eyelid and pulled it down. Sakura and Sasuke looked at the now revealed red eye and saw horrific images of their deaths. They both fell to their knees. Sakura was unable to process any thought while Sasuke puked. What the hell was that? Sasuke thought then he realized he could not move. Damn it what is this? It's not Jinjutsu, no this is fear. This is nothing but killing intent and it's so horrific that we can't move. Sasuke thought as he looked over at Sakura. She was so terrified she couldn't move, not even to blink. Arachimaru pulled out two kunai and tossed them at Sakura and Sasuke. Sasuke saw the kunai coming towards them. Move. 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 Sasuke chanted in his head as he willed himself to plunge a kunai into his leg. After the kunai hit flesh he leapt over to Sakura, grabbed her and retreated to the trees. Sasuke ran for a minute with Sakura in hand. He stopped at a large tree, very shaken. He set Sakura down and dressed his wound. Sakura woke from her stupor to see the fear running all over Sasuke. Sasuke-kun, wah. Sakura started but was abruptly stopped by Sasuke's hand over her mouth. He was looking around the tree making sure their enemy wouldn't get them. A giant snake appeared behind Sasuke so suddenly with no noise. Sakura saw the snake but couldn't say anything with Sasuke's hand over her mouth. She pushed his hand away and yelled, Sasuke-kun. Sasuke looked at her and then saw the snake. Shit. Sasuke berated in his head. He quickly pushed Sakura to safety and jumped away from the lunging snake. He was clear from the first strike, but the snake recovered quickly and lunged at him again. 
As Sasuke looked at the eyes of the snake he was reminded of his fear. Get the hell away from me. Sasuke yelled as he threw a multitude of kunai and shuriken at the snake. The projectiles entered the beast's head with enough force to pierce through its skin, killing it instantly. Sasuke landed on the tree huffing. Then the snake skin began to crack and out came a body. As the person stood completely Sasuke and Sakura were once again afraid of what could happen. Well now, Sasuke-kun. It's not wise for prey to stop running when the predator has its eyes on you. Orochimaru said as he started slithering toward Sasuke. He got halfway to him when he was kicked in the head. Orochimaru, getting severely annoyed, took the hit and struck back with a punch to the offender's stomach. The offender disappeared into a puff of smoke and Orochimaru was kicked again in the stomach. Orochimaru, tired of this game, kicked the offender, making him disappear. Another kick came at Orochimaru from nowhere, but Orochimaru was through playing games and before he was hit punched the offender in the gut. Sasuke and Sakura were shocked and relieved to see Naruto after Naruto jumped out of the trees and struck Orochimaru. Every Naruto went for a distinguished blow to try and stop Orochimaru, alas, whenever Naruto got within striking distance, he was hit and disappeared before he could hit Orochimaru. Orochimaru was getting severely annoyed with the endless amount of Naruto's. How much chakra and stamina does this kid have? Is he not even getting tired summoning these cage bunshins? Orochimaru thought. No Naruto could hit Orochimaru, and despite what Orochimaru thought Naruto was indeed getting tired continuously summoning bunshins. Naruto just summoned another set of 10 cage bunshins and fell to his knees. Damn I can't keep this up. I'm not causing any damage anymore. Time to switch strategies. Naruto thought as he stood back up and saw the last of his bunshins enter the fray. Naruto then remembered Haku's attack, he summoned 50 more bunshins, and regardless of the exhaustion he felt he sent them to surround the area. Sakura and Sasuke couldn't move for a few reasons. 1. They were still afraid of Orochimaru, 2. They were shocked to see that 100 or so Naruto's were coming out of the trees in an endless stream, only to be disposed of as he got close to Orochimaru, and 3. They had no idea of what to do. Orochimaru just dispersed the remaining clones and looked around to find the next attack. What the three saw next shocked them. Throwing knives were sent at Orochimaru from every direction with extreme speed. Since when has Naruto used throwing knives? Sakura and Sasuke thought. Orochimaru dodged the knives by dropping below the branch he was standing on. As the knives hit the branch they exploded. What? They all thought. Orochimaru was thrown down by the explosion. They didn't have any explosive notes attached to them. So how? Orochimaru thought Sasuke and Sakura were thinking along the same lines. Naruto didn't let up and started throwing the knives constantly. Orochimaru had to move quickly as an endless stream of knives attacked him from every direction. Everyone around the forest could hear the constant explosions from within the forest. This of course had some of the genins extremely nervous that there was something in the forest that could cause extreme explosive damage. Sakura and Sasuke had to jump away as the explosions were getting too close to them. Orochimaru, finally tiring out, decided he needed to put an end to this or he could actually lose by a mere genin. Orochimaru watched a stream of knives to pinpoint the attacker's location. He saw where every Naruto was hidden and pulled out 51 shuriken and threw them with extreme force that no Naruto dodged the impact. All the clones disappeared and the real one was struck in his stomach, ouch. Naruto pulled the shuriken out of his stomach and winced at the immense pain that followed. Sakura was worried that something bad happened to Naruto. Sasuke was more worried that now that the threat of Naruto was over, Orochimaru would resume his attack against him and Sakura, what an ass. Orochimaru, Sakura and Sasuke gasped in surprise as Naruto jumped into view with red eyes blaring. They all took note that he was holding his stomach and blood was flowing. Sakura knew that a stomach wound like that hurt a lot and was almost always fatal. Ah so the real one finally shows himself. Orochimaru said with a grin. Orochimaru removed his grin when he saw the stoic face of Naruto. Those eyes. So that's why, he's the Kyubi brat. Orochimaru thought. Sasuke took note that Naruto must have reached his limit, Sakura couldn't fight well enough to fight practically anyone, and Orochimaru was way above his level. Wait. Sasuke yelled. Everyone looked at him as he pulled out the heaven scroll. This is what you want, take it and leave us. Sasuke said. Orochimaru smirked. Naruto was pissed at Sasuke, but was in too much pain to stop him and could only watch the conversation unfold. Sakura was a little upset but didn't want to be killed, they still had to treat Naruto or he could die. I see. Give the predator something else in order to save yourself. Truly despicable. Orochimaru said, giving off a very weird grin. Whatever. Sasuke said and threw the scroll to Orochimaru. Orochimaru caught it in one hand and held it for them to see. You have what you want now go. Sasuke exclaimed. Ah oh, but who said this was what I wanted? Orochimaru said as he set the scroll ablaze. Sasuke and Sakura looked on in horror as Orochimaru brushed the ashes from his hand. Naruto was teetering on unconsciousness and could barely comprehend the situation at hand. 
He knew what happened and just couldn't find any way of reacting as he fought to keep conscious. Hey Kaiubi can you do anything to help me? Naruto asked in his head as he winced because of the pain. The wound is fatal. My power is able to heal it, but it will take time. I can, however, numb the pain and give you a surge to keep you awake, but in your condition, you won't be able to fight on par with an enemy of his caliber for long. It will only last a few minutes. Also the ability I will use to numb your body has a very bad consequence. After its effects wear off you will feel all the pain tripled. So your stomach wound will be monstrously painful as well as any injury you sustain while in this condition. Kaiubi said in a caring tone. Do it, if anything I can stall him long enough for Sasuke and Sakura-chan to escape. Naruto said. The burst of chakra shot through Naruto, he could no longer feel anything, and he was fully energized. He knew of course that it was false energy, and that after the effects wore off the pain would be tremendous. As Naruto was receiving his help Orochimaru and Sasuke were already in combat, and Sakura was rushing to aid Naruto. When Sakura got there she saw that Naruto stood completely straight and looked as if he wasn't hurt at all. Naruto are you alright? Sakura asked in a caring tone. Naruto looked at her. For now. I'm going to try and stop this snake freak. He should be getting tired from all the attacks I sent at him and his fighting with Sasuke. Naruto said. Sakura looked at him as if he were crazy. You can't fight in your condition, your wound will just get worse. Sakura pleaded. She's right. Kaiubi stated. Naruto ignored both of them. When you get the chance go get Sasuke and you two get out of here. Naruto said then he jumped to fight Orochimaru. Orochimaru had just used Kanashibari no Jutsu on Sasuke. Sasuke was frozen in place as Orochimaru did a bunch of hand seals and his neck extended toward Sasuke. Sasuke closed his eyes so he didn't have to see the possibly fatal wound. When the attack didn't hit he opened his eyes to see that Naruto was in front of him and Orochimaru bit into Naruto's neck. Orochimaru's eyes widened in shock as he disengaged from Naruto's neck and went back to how he should look. A seal then appeared on Naruto's neck. The seal looked a lot like three commas circling each other. Naruto winced from the feeling. I thought I wouldn't be able to feel anything. Naruto asked as he grabbed his neck. You're not supposed to. This is not good, anything painful enough to go through my ability will kill mortals after the effects of my skill wears off. Kaiubi said. You bastard. Orochimaru said and he noticed that Naruto was barely affected by the seal. Well now that's interesting. I've never seen anyone withstand the pain of the curse seal before. Orochimaru said. Naruto glared at Orochimaru and rushed at him, figuring that he will die in the next couple of minutes anyway. Sakura took this time to go to Sasuke who was still frozen. Orochimaru saw through Naruto's speed and figured in the contest of strength Orochimaru would win. So using his logic Orochimaru went for a punch to Naruto's face while well, Naruto went for the gut. Both fists connected with their targets, but Naruto's punch was more than what it seemed. As Orochimaru felt contact from Naruto's weak punch and the contact from his punch he inwardly smirked. Before Naruto was thrown back by the punch a 12-inch blade shot out of Naruto's glove. Orochimaru was shocked by the feeling of a blade entering his flesh where he was punched. Since Naruto was punched at the same time as his punch, the blade only went 4 inches before Naruto was knocked back into a tree. Sakura and Sasuke looked wide-eyed at this seemingly invincible enemy that was now bleeding. Orochimaru looked down and saw the blood and was amazed at Naruto's trickiness. As Naruto hit the tree his senses were coming back. The effects of the numbness are wearing off. Kaiubi said Naruto tried to ignore the pain while he charged at Orochimaru. Orochimaru decided that he'd better play it safe by avoiding any tricks that seemingly non-human Naruto could throw at him, so he used his tongue to grab Naruto and hold him. Naruto, now starting to feel a lot of pain, couldn't focus as he was grabbed by Orochimaru's tongue and held up to eye level with him. Naruto gave very little resistance which made Orochimaru's job a lot easier. This kid will be good, maybe I can get him to join my side as well as Sasuke-kun, of course Sasuke-kun will be my host, well Naruto-kun can be my high guard. Orochimaru thought all giddy as he did some seals and stuck his hand into Naruto's stomach. Sakura and Sasuke feared the worst when Naruto got caught, but what happened scared them more than that. Ah! Naruto screamed a blood-curtailing scream that held more pain than anyone could ever imagine for the whole forest to hear before he passed out. Orochimaru, who was shocked at the sheer velocity of the scream, was worried that he would be found with that noise. He threw Naruto toward Sakura and Sasuke and called out. I must be going, but keep this in mind Sasuke-kun you will never reach Itachi's level staying in this place. Orochimaru said as he melted down into the tree. Sasuke was going through a lot of emotions right then that he didn't even realize he could move again. Sakura ran to Naruto who landed a few feet in front of them and checked to make sure he was still alive. When she was sure he would live she turned to Sasuke. Sasuke-kun, more people might come to this location. We have to go somewhere safe. Sakura said almost in tears by the scream Naruto let out. Sasuke only nodded as he went to help Sakura carry Naruto somewhere safe for now. 
They were both shocked that anyone could be alive with all the pain Naruto must have felt. As they picked him up they realized he was much heavier than he usually was. Naruto's yell was heard by everyone in the forest, and a lot of them knew who made that yell. Chapter 5. Snake Sanin's Revenge. All the genin stopped what they were doing as the sound of the most horrific scream ran through the forest. Anko, who had been traveling through the forest to find Orochimaru, heard Naruto's scream of agony. Her blood ran cold at the sheer pain that was within that yell. Something big must have happened to make him yell out in pain like that. Anko thought. She started heading in the direction it came from. After a minute of travel she found what she first came into the forest for. Orochimaru stood there clutching his stomach where Naruto had stabbed him. Damn it, what did that brat do to me? Orochimaru said in his head. He was too distracted to notice that Anko had landed in front of him. Orochimaru was distracted because Naruto's attack did more than just go four inches into him, the wound wouldn't heal. Now Orochimaru wasn't a medic nin, but he still knew basic healing jutsus, however every one he tried had the same effect, absolutely nothing. And what's more he was having a lot more trouble forcing his chakra to the designated place it needed to go. So Orochimaru was here dying by a cut, and Anko had just found him. Orochimaru thought this day would be simple. Find Sasuke, give him the curse seal, and get away without any disturbances. Out of his three tasks he only accomplished one. Orochimaru. Anko said. Orochimaru's eyes widened in horror at the voice of his former prized pupil. Shit. Damn you Yuzumaki Naruto. I cannot fight in this condition, I'll surely die. Orochimaru thought in horror as looked up and glared at Anko. Anko looked at the glare and saw a bit of fear in his eyes. What happened to him that made him so afraid? Anko thought as she looked down at Orochimaru's wound. To say she was shocked was an understatement, Orochimaru one of the legendary Sanin was bleeding profusely from his stomach. She looked at his feet to see that a pool of blood had started to form. She looked at his face to see that all the color was removed. He's dying. Anko thought. Now of course her job was to come in here to kill him, but by the looks of him he wouldn't survive but 30 minutes. There was no way he could fight in his condition. What happened to you? Anko asked, she wanted to get as much out of him as she could before he died. I underestimated one of the genin in this test. He pulled a trick on me. I was too careless. Orochimaru said guiltily as he winced from the pain. Anko was shocked that a genin would be the downfall of one of the greatest ninja of all time. There is someone that powerful in this test, as a genin. Anko was afraid that whichever team would face such a monster. Do you know who it was? Anko asked, trying to find possibly the biggest threat to Konoha. Yes I do. That damn brat, first he takes the curse seal to protect his teammate and then attacks me as if it were nothing. Orochimaru said in a snide tone. Anko was now even more afraid, someone who was given the curse seal would have their power amplified, but to keep fighting after getting it was extraordinary. This is extremely bad. I have to report to the Hokage immediately. Anko was frightened. Stupid brat. If I survive this I will kill him. You hear me. I will kill you, Yuzumaki Naruto. Orochimaru yelled, regretting it immediately as the pain shot through his body again. Anko was shocked beyond belief that Yuzumaki Naruto had done this to Orochimaru. Then she remembered the yell that belonged to Naruto. So that's it, they fought, and now they are both regretting it. Anko thought still speechless at the revelation. Orochimaru was growing cold, he knew his time was coming, and there was nothing he could do about it. He watched Anko thinking of how to solve her problem, and then she shot a look at him. What are you doing here anyway? Anko asked forcefully, trying to think of something besides Naruto. Orochimaru was shocked that she had asked him that, but got over it. Well now with the way it looks I'll take that secret to the grave. Orochimaru said more in a grunt than words. Anko was now a little worried that something was going to happen, and she didn't know what. Orochimaru was getting woozy and was about to pass out when he saw something coming their way. Orochimaru smiled at the sight. Anko saw Orochimaru's smile and was worried that something bad was about to happen, and she was right. Anko felt her body stiffen, and then she couldn't move. Three leaf nins came from behind her and went towards Orochimaru. She recognized them from the genin test, but she had no idea why they were here. They rushed past her heading towards Orochimaru, and before she could call out to warn them they were already next to Orochimaru. What appeared to be the leader leaned down next to Orochimaru. Orochimaru-sama, are you okay? The white-haired genin asked. Anko was perturbed by the fact that a leaf nin had asked an enemy if he was okay. Orochimaru was falling deeper into unconsciousness, so the white-haired genin started to use a scanning that is used by medic nin. He stopped at the wound on Orochimaru's stomach, and his eyes widened in shock. Orochimaru-sama, your blood isn't clotting, and medic jutsus can't heal it unless your blood starts to clot. Kabuto said. Orochimaru looked at Kabuto warily as he was slowly slipping to his death. Anko looked at both Orochimaru and Kabuto in shock. What did that brat do to him? Anko wondered. Kabuto thought for a second and had a good idea, hopefully. He pulled out a pill from his pouch and offered it to Orochimaru. 
This is a blood clotting pill, hopefully it will negate whatever is happening to you. Kabuto said in a hopeful tone. Orochimaru didn't think twice as he took the pill from Kabuto and ate it. Kabuto activated his scanning again and sighed in relief that the pill had indeed worked. Kabuto then activated his healing to make sure that Orochimaru wouldn't die. Orochimaru could feel that he was being healed and was thankful that Kabuto had made it to him in time. Banko was worried, Naruto may have caused a fatal blow to Orochimaru somehow, but this traitor was able to screw up his plans. Damn it all of Naruto's work was useless and now no one will figure out Orochimaru's plans until it will be too late. Anko thought to herself as she watched color return to the snake sage's face. The two remaining members of the supposed genin team were looking around constantly making sure there wouldn't be a trap for them. Kabuto fished his healing and stood up. Orochimaru was still conscious, but he was in no condition to fight. Kabuto pulled out his curved blade and looked over at the still motionless Anko. Anko saw the look on Kabuto's face and knew she would die today. Kabuto started to walk forward but was stopped. Don't kill her. Orochimaru started weakly. Kabuto looked back at Orochimaru for an explanation. We need her to tell the Hokage to continue the Chunin exams. If the exams were to end well I couldn't be held responsible for what I might do. Orochimaru said with a slight smirk. Although it's sad that you three can't continue the exam because your cover has been blown, it's all for the best I think. Orochimaru said as he signaled for the genin to help him up. As the genin helped him up and supported him he looked at Anko. You're lucky today. This will not happen again because that brat will be under my control shortly due to the seal. Orochimaru said with a smile. And just think of the kind of monster he will become under my tutelage. Orochimaru said, giving off a small laugh before the pain resurfaced. Anko looked at him worriedly. Orochimaru signaled for them to leave and that they did. Anko was left stuck where she was as the four of them disappeared into a cloud of smoke. I have to warn the Hokage about this. I'll have to send a unit to retrieve Yuzumaki and his team for questioning. Anko said as she was released from her immobility. She headed off to the central tower to inform everyone there of the threat. I do hope that you are okay with Yuzumaki Naruto. Anko said sadly as she ran through the forest as fast as her feet allowed her to. Team 10. They had heard Naruto's scream of pain and were terrified. Ino was worried about her friend and crush alongside Naruto. Shikamaru and Chaoji worried about them as well, just not as passionately as Ino was. They were heading to where the scream had originated in hopes that they could help in any way possible. They arrived at the battle point to see that it was filled with craters, blown up trees, and blood trails every which way. Ino held her hand up to her mouth at the destruction of the place. She was on the verge of tears. Shikamaru and Chaoji saw Ino's despair and decided to look for any clues of survival. After several minutes of searching Chaoji came across a trail of blood leading away from the battlefield. He signaled for Shikamaru to confirm his findings. Shikamaru came over and studied it and in a very quiet voice so Chaoji could hear him. All the blood minus a small amount was from the same person. Shikamaru said dismally and then continued. The injured person was most likely Naruto. Sakura and Sasuke must have carried him off. Most likely they were leaving this area to get away from possible enemies due to their current condition. Shikamaru said as he looked back at the frozen Ino. He got up and went over to tell Ino his findings. Ino saw Shikamaru coming over to her with a grim expression which started to scare her. What do you think happened? Ino asked, barely audible, holding tears in her eyes. Shikamaru looked around the battle site looking for something to disprove his analysis when he found none he started to give into his theory. I'd say they came across a very strong enemy. There is shattered metal in each crater, which means the explosions were caused by a metal catalyst. So most likely each weapon had some sort of explosive tag on it. Shikamaru started looking around again to make sure his conjecture couldn't be proven wrong. Chaoji was making sure they wouldn't be ambushed while Shikamaru gave his theory. Ino was listening intently waiting to hear about what happened to their friends. The fight was ranged throughout this whole area, I can't tell who had the upper hand in the battle, but I can be sure that there was only one enemy. Shikamaru stated. Ino and Chaoji looked at him with wide eyes. He continued, there is a lot of blood around the area and the majority of it came from the same person. Shikamaru said, Ino was now terrified. There is a small amount over there that came from the enemy. The proof I have that it came from the enemy is that it is sitting there with no trail, while the massive blood trail leads to it and away from it. Shikamaru said. Ino's hopes that Shikamaru was wrong were vanishing with the proof he was giving. Shikamaru sighed, the next part is the worst news I have. Shikamaru thought and then continued. By the looks of the battlefield I have concluded that Naruto was the only one who fought with the enemy. Shikamaru stated in a disgruntled tone. Chaoji and Ino both looked at Shikamaru in shock. And by the looks of this place I'd have to say that he is severely injured. Shikamaru concluded. Ino was in deep thought about the situation while Chaoji didn't know what to think. He blurted out his question. So Naruto did all this? Chaoji asked. Shikamaru looked around once more and nodded. 
Chao Ji couldn't find anything else to add, so he looked at Ino to find out what to do. Ino noticed the look from her two teammates, and she remembered back in the days when she was friends with Sakura and what caused their friendship to end. She made a decision. We should find them. If what you say is true then they could be in trouble and need help. Ino stated timidly. Shikamaru and Chaoji nodded and they followed the blood trail that Chaoji had found. Demate, Inata, Kiba and Shino had already gotten the scroll they needed at the beginning of the test and were heading to the central tower to rest for the remainder of the exam. Then they heard Naruto's scream of pain. They had already made it three-fourths of the way there and had instantly stopped to hear the terrifying scream. Kiba and Shino were shocked to say the least that they were this far and could hear Naruto as clear as day. Hinata on the other hand was scared and almost in tears when she heard the pain-filled scream. Kiba looked at Hinata with concern while Shino was stoic. Hinata was struggling with what she should do when Shino said something. We mustn't go. Shino stated casually. Both Hinata and Kiba looked at Shino with shock and pain. But what if Naruto-kun is in danger? Hinata asked fearfully. Kiba looked back at Hinata and made his decision. Hinata, even if we go we would be too late and would only be endangering ourselves. And who knows they all may be fine Naruto was probably just overreacting about a small cut. Kiba said as he gave a small laugh. He looked back at the unconvinced Hinata. He continued, the best thing we could do is go to the tower and wait for them to arrive there. Kiba said reassuringly. Hinata nodded and gave one last look in the direction the scream had originated. She wiped the forming tears from her eyes before they headed to the tower once more. Everyone else was either wondering what the hell could make someone yell in that much pain. They mainly stayed away from the location of the scream in order to avoid whatever it was that caused that much pain. There were only three teams who decided to stay around that area, along with Team 7. And soon enough they would all meet. Team 7, Sasuke and Sakura were carrying Naruto to find some place for shelter. As they were carrying him his temperature dramatically increased. Sasuke had looked at the curse seal a couple of times to see what Naruto had protected him from. As he looked the curse seal was constantly glowing and every time it got brighter Naruto would get hotter. Sakura was worried about many things, almost all of which had concerned Naruto. He was getting unbearably hot and his stomach wound looked like it was only getting worse because of the constant blood flow. They needed to get somewhere safe to get Naruto into at least a better condition than he was in at the moment. They found a small little area where they could deal with Naruto's condition at least a little. Sakura tries whatever you can to close the wound. I'll keep watching for a while. Sasuke said as he left the confines of the alcove that Naruto was placed in. Sakura started to take off Naruto's jacket and shirt. When she took off his jacket she felt that it was extremely heavy for a jacket, but she didn't have time to worry about that. She looked at Naruto's shirt, it was covered with a vast amount of blood. It also had rips here and there, it was pretty much unwearable. She proceeded to take it off and was shocked at what she saw. Besides the fact that the amount of blood that was on his body was scary, he had seals on his abdomen. What are those? Sakura asked as she brought her hand down and touched the seals. As she touched Naruto's abdomen he flinched, most likely in pain. She then started to clean the area surrounding the wound. After it was clean she wondered what she was going to use in order to dress the wound. She looked in her pouch to see if she had placed anything in there and to her dismay she had not. She looked over at Naruto and said, well it wouldn't hurt to see if he has any. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. She lifted the lighter Naruto up slightly to remove his pouch to see if he had any bandages. When she opened the pouch she was completely taken by surprise by the first thing she saw. When did Naruto get this? Sakura asked as she pulled out the heaven scroll Naruto had collected. She looked at it briefly and decided it wasn't the time for that and she went back to looking for some bandages. She had found a roll of bandages neatly placed in his pouch. She dressed Naruto's wound quickly enough so she went back to pondering when Naruto had time to get another scroll. She remembered the mist nin that had attacked her and figured Naruto had taken his. She then took notice of the blade attached to his hand. She realized that her first thought of it coming out of his hand was incorrect. It was collapsible and came out of a contraption under his glove. Naruto was now burning hot, almost unbearable to the touch, yet he laid there peacefully with a few flinches, but nothing too drastic. The seal on Naruto's neck was glowing red and was the focal point of the heat. Sakura was very concerned and she couldn't do anything but watch her teammate die. She got up and walked out of the alcove to talk to Sasuke. How is he? Sasuke asked unemotionally. He was in deep thought about what Orochimaru had said, so he didn't even turn to look at Sakura. Sakura on the other hand had a very worried expression. She was afraid that Naruto wasn't going to make it and it was because none of them knew how to heal serious wounds. I don't know. Sakura stated through unshed tears. I think that the wound in his stomach is fatal. And I think the seals on his body are making his condition worse. Sakura said as she let a tear roll down her cheek. Sasuke finally looked at her and saw that she was indeed crying. Sasuke noticed that Sakura was holding a heaven scroll. Where did you get that? 
Sasuke asked incredulously. Sakura was shocked by Sasuke's outburst, but answered nonetheless. Naruto had it in his pouch. I think he got it from that Miss Nin that attacked me. Sakura said. Sasuke looked at her again and walked into the alcove. Sakura followed and saw Sasuke go for Naruto's weapon pouch. What are you doing? Sakura asked in shock. I want to know what this dope is hiding from me. Sasuke said as he detached the pouch from Naruto's hip. He walked past Sakura and out of the alcove, jerk. Sakura gave one last glance at Naruto and went after Sasuke. I don't think you should mess with his stuff. Sakura said as she caught up to Sasuke. Sasuke was beyond reason, he wanted to know exactly what Naruto was hiding, and he didn't want to wait. Sasuke was standing in the middle of the area that they had claimed as their safe house location. He opened the weapons pouch to find four throwing knives, nothing else. Sasuke was confused, so he took out one of the knives and looked at it intently. Sakura was also looking at it for some sort of explanation, but didn't see anything that could make it explode. Sasuke was also stumped and was getting a little irritated. It doesn't make sense. Sasuke said. Sakura looked at him and he continued. He must have done something to them when he threw them, but what? Sasuke asked as he threw the knife into a tree. As the knife hit the tree it exploded. Sasuke and Sakura looked worried that their position was compromised, while in the alcove Naruto had shot up because of the explosion. As Naruto shot up chakra shot through the seals Orochimaru had placed on Naruto. Naruto winced a severe pain shot through his neck, abdomen, and stomach wound. The pain eased, and the two new seals disappeared, causing a new shot of energy through Naruto. This was pure energy the kind you get when you're well rested. What the hell was that? Naruto asked. That was the seals being removed from your body. The seal that holds me got rid of the one on your neck. The seal that was placed over my seal was removed by the seal on your neck. Kaiubi said. Naruto was slightly confused, but remembered why he woke up. Naruto reached for his weapon pouch to protect him from whatever caused the explosion. When he found his pouch missing he knew exactly what caused the explosion. He looked around the alcove for the rest of his clothing. He found his shirt and jacket a few feet away from him, upon looking at his shirt, he knew it wouldn't work as anything but a wash rag. He grabbed his jacket and put it on. The zipper was broken so he would have to make do with the bandages keeping him semi-warm. He left his jacket on just so he didn't feel naked. And now to find out what that bastard has done. Naruto said as he walked out of the alcove. Sasuke and Sakura looked extremely worried and went to get Naruto so they could get to a new location. As they headed to the alcove a kunai was flung right in front of them. They turned to see where the kunai came from and found the three sound nins that attacked Kabuto. Sakura looked worried while Sasuke was trying to figure out a way to get out of here. The three sound shinobi were looking at Sasuke and Sakura as if they were studying them. Then they noticed the heaven scroll in Sakura's hand. Dosu started to laugh which unnerved Sasuke and Sakura. Well now Orochimaru said to just come and kill Yuzumaki Naruto, so if you hand over the scroll we will not harm you. Dosu said as Aku started to chuckle. Ino's team, who had arrived at the same time as the sound team, looked at Sasuke and Sakura to see what their answer was. Sasuke thought about this choice and was going to give his answer, but was cut off by someone else's words. Don't you dare even think about doing it. Naruto said. Everyone looked at Naruto in shock. Sakura was glad to see that he was alright, Sasuke looked at him incredulously, and everyone else was transfixed on the blade that looked like it came right out of his arm. Naruto continued, that scroll is mine. You may have been willing to give up the other one without a fight, but I don't like my belongings being taken without my permission. Naruto said. Now all eyes were on Sasuke who was thinking of giving up what appeared to be Naruto's scroll, took Naruto's weapons, and gave up his original scroll without even a fight. Sasuke was ready to defend himself, but was cut off by Dosu. Well then Yuzumaki Naruto I have orders from Orochimaru Sama to kill you for what you did to him. Dosu said. Naruto looked confused for a sec, then realized who Orochimaru was. Oh, so that snake freak survived, that sucks. Naruto said stoically and then continued. Well then I guess we're even. Him surviving my critical wound and me surviving his. Sakura then remembered Naruto's wound. Ino's team looked at him like he was insane. Of course you trying to kill me sets the bar towards his side. Naruto said. Zaku grinned at his statement. Naruto then thought of the seals placed on him. Well I guess we'll be back even since I removed the seals he placed on my body. Naruto said as he grinned. The sound nins however were a bit terror stricken. Orochimaru said that he placed a curse seal on him by accident. But that seal is supposed to be irremovable. Dosu thought. The other two were thinking along the same lines. Everyone was looking tense as a fight was about to start, but then something happened. Naruto fell to his knees and coughed up some blood. Everyone looked right at him, some had faces of horror, while the sound nins were pleased. Well then it looks like you won't be able to fight properly, so we'll just take out the other two first. Zaku said with a grin as he lunged at the unprepared Sasuke. 
Sasuke caught his mistake and went into a defensive pose. Zaku struck Sasuke with an open palm which turned into a wind blast as Zaku yelled, Zanku uha. Sasuke was pushed back into a tree headfirst with so much force it knocked him out. Sakura looked at Sasuke for a brief second, but that was enough for Kin to get behind Sakura and grab a handful of hair. Now Sakura and Sasuke were both immobile and Naruto was struggling to get up, and Dosu took it upon himself to attack and finish Sakura off. Dosu struck Sakura in the chest and created vibrations within her entire body, which caused her to puke and pass out. Kin released Sakura's hair and stood in front of Naruto with her two teammates. Ino's team looked on in shock as Sasuke and Sakura were both knocked out so effortlessly. Naruto was now standing and looking at the three sound nins with a look of pure malice. He touched the two metal pieces on his hands and then on his shoulders. They glowed for a second, and then the glow disappeared and Naruto untensed immediately. Zaku looked confident and rushed in on the side of Naruto that didn't have the blade. He went for a punch but immediately stopped. Dosu and Kin looked at him, and when he stepped back they saw that a blade was now on each of his hands. Dosu and Kin looked at Zaku to see if he was cut, he was. Naruto took this chance and attacked Kin with the blade on his right hand. She dodged but not well enough, she also had a cut from his blade, and they all knew what that cut could do. Ino's team looked on in shock as Naruto shot out a blade from the back of his hand. And now the sound team was backing away from him. Naruto coughed up more blood and stepped forward. Dosu being the only one not cut figured out a way out of this. We have underestimated you. Dosu started. In exchange for passage I will give you our scroll. Dosu said as he placed his earth scroll on the ground right next to the heaven scroll. Naruto looked at the scroll then the sound team. If we are to fight again in this exam, or anywhere else for that matter, you will not live to regret it. Do I make myself understood? Naruto said in a commanding tone. The sound team nodded and jumped away. Ino's team looked at Naruto, doubting if they should show themselves. Are you going to come and attack me for my scrolls or not? Naruto said depressed as he looked at Team Ten's direction. They visibly flinched, Shikamaru was the first to react as he casually walked out of the bush. We're not here to fight you, we're here to make sure you guys are alright. There was a lot of blood and craters at your last battlefield. Shikamaru said as Chaoji and Ino walked out of the bush. Naruto sighed in relief and leaned against the opening of the alcove for support. He clutched his stomach which was where all the pain originated. Ino went over to make sure Sakura was okay, while Chaoji and Shikamaru made sure Naruto was alright. Ino made it over to Sakura and checked for a pulse, when she found one she let out a breath of relief. She carefully picked Sakura up and set her against the opening to the alcove. They were looking nervously at Naruto, and Chaoji decided he wanted to know something. Do those things come out of your arm? Chaoji asked. Naruto looked at the blades for a second and then back at the team who were waiting for an answer. No. They actually come from a contraption I made, so I can surprise my opponent. Naruto said as the blades shot back into the sliding contraption and made a click. The team looked surprised that Naruto had come up with something that complex. How Sakura-chan and Sasuke? Naruto asked. Sakura is fine and we really haven't checked Sasuke yet. Ino said. Everyone looked at her, shocked that she said Sasuke's name without adding kun. She noticed everyone was looking at her questioningly, so she looked away. After Naruto was able to move and Sakura was finally awake, the team then said their goodbyes and good luck and took off. Naruto collected his belongings and the two scrolls. Sakura hadn't said a single thing since she woke up. Naruto lifted Sasuke up onto his shoulder. Sakura-chan, we're in no condition to fight. We should get to the tower, that way we won't have to worry about being attacked anymore. Naruto said as he found a comfortable position where he could carry Sasuke and get a good speed. Sakura only nodded and they set off. It took them two hours to get to the tower at a nice even pace. They stepped in and looked around to find no one in sight. Chapter 6 complications. Naruto and Sakura had arrived at the tower easily enough. Sasuke had become more of a burden than Naruto had thought, but still managed. As they entered Naruto set Sasuke down beside the door and gave his shoulder a rest as he looked around. Sakura looked around and then sat down next to Sasuke. She had been traveling at a quickened pace for two hours, and even though they rested a bit every once in a while, it still took a lot of stamina to do. Being a ninja helped her when she was traveling, but two hours running at that run should wear anyone down, she looked at Naruto. He wasn't even panting. He looked as if he had when they started, and here she was, muscles burning, sweating uncontrollably, and panting. How is he able to stand after a run like that? He even had to carry Sasuke, and it doesn't even look like it. Sakura thought. Sakura was trying to figure out how Naruto was able to have as much stamina as he does, while Naruto was talking about the reason for the stamina. Hey kid, something happened in the forest. Kaiubi said. Naruto was brought out of his sight seeing as Kaiubi started talking. What do you mean? asked Naruto. Well those seals were made to do something, and when they were put on you the effects started to work. 
However since the seal that was placed on your neck cancelled the one placed over the seal that houses me, and the seal that houses me cancelled the one on your neck the effects were negated, but due to the ability I placed on you all the seals decided to play around with your body. Kaiubi said. Naruto was slightly confused by what Kaiubi was saying and decided to just try and listen to the rest of the explanation. We are two separate entities, which is why I never tried to take control. Putting it plainly I couldn't. Kaiubi said. Naruto thought of this and thought it reasonable. While I am in your body you merely house me thus I can share my power by forcing it out of you, but two souls cannot control the same body, and since this is your body I am just along for the ride. Naruto understood what Kaiubi said. Okay I understand, but what did the seals do? Naruto asked. The seals were both made to affect your chakra system, and since they had the time to conjoin with you, they connected to your chakra system, and when they were forcibly removed, they punctured it. Kaiubi said. Naruto had a look of pure dread on his face, and if he wasn't facing away from Sakura, she would have been worried. So what does this mean? I mean I used some chakra in the fight with the sound nins, and nothing happened. Naruto panicked. You are able to use your chakra still, but the more you use the worse your chakra system will get. If you keep using chakra you will die. Kaiubi said sadly. Naruto was in utter shock and dismay. But that can't be. Wait, you said you can give me your chakra by forcing it out. I can just do that, right? Naruto asked worriedly. If I force my chakra out it would be a lot worse. By forcing my chakra through your system it will just destroy it faster. Kaiubi said. Naruto was just devastated, his entire thought process was destroyed in one conversation. He ended up just collapsing the landing square on his butt. Sakura had fallen asleep on Sasuke's shoulder, so she didn't see Naruto in his devastated state. That's not all. Kaiubi said. Naruto just didn't care anymore, his life was going down the drain. The seals also forced some of my energy into you. That is why you felt so energized, however since you were not fully energized by yourself, you are solely running on the energy you have from me. With some rest you will have a seemingly unlimited supply of stamina, and your healing has greatly improved. Kaiubi said trying to make Naruto feel better. Naruto brushed his hand across his stomach where his wound was and found that it had been healed. So I can heal better and it doesn't make any difference. My life as a ninja is over, my dream, my future it's gone. Naruto said to Kaiubi. Kaiubi was trying to find some way to cheer his vessel up when he remembered something that might help. There might be something that can be done to fix this problem of yours. Kaiubi said. Naruto's head shot up excruciatingly fast. What? Naruto yelled in his head. He was feeling quite hopeful right then. I remember seeing a ninja get his chakra system rearranged so he could use Jutsus again after his chakra system ruptured. He had hired a very well experienced medic nin to do the procedure, and after it was done he was as good as new. Kaiubi said, trying to remember the exact details. Naruto had wondered how a giant fox was allowed to see a procedure like that, but put that to the back of his head for now. So I just have to find this medic nin to help me? Naruto asked hopefully. Kaiubi sighed and finished, that happened close to 1000 years ago, the medic is well dead. Naruto thought for a second. So we'll just have to find someone else that can do it. Naruto said matter of factly. That procedure hasn't been done in 9 centuries. We won't find anyone that can do it as good as she did. However I can do something similar to the procedure, but the chances of it actually working are pretty low. Kaiubi said. I don't care. If it's the only way, I will do it. When will you be able to start? Naruto asked. It'll be a fairly long and painful process, so I suggest as soon as we have time away from other people we start. Okay. Kaiubi asked, Naruto nodded and took a look back at the sleeping forms of Sasuke and Sakura. Demate, Anada and her team were inside a large waiting area doing nothing. There wasn't anything to do. They were told that they had to wait here for the remainder of the exam. They were given rations and a room for the team to share while they waited. The waiting area was quite boring. There were chewing and around so no one would cause any trouble. The only other team there was the sand team and they didn't want to go over to them because Kiba had said they smelt like blood. So they were waiting around for a team that they knew to talk to. Kiba and Shino were fairly calm. Kiba was playing with Akamaru and Shino was leaning against the wall. Hinata on the other hand was a nervous wreck thinking about everyone's favorite blonde. When they saw an enraged Anko enter the area followed by an Anbu squad, they stopped what they were doing and watched her. She stopped in front of Chunin to give him an order. When Team 7 arrives, immediately notify me, understand. Anko ordered. Chunin nodded at his order, and Anko continued on her way. The Chunin made sure all the other Chunin knew the order just in case. Hinata, Shino, and Kiba all heard the order which just made Hinata more worried. Why does she want to know when Naruto-kun's team arrives? Hinata thought as she watched all the Chunin carefully, because she too wanted to know when her crush arrived. Kiba and Shino were thinking that Hinata might be affected by anything that might be coming. They were waiting for any news whatsoever. 
Hinata was waiting vigilantly for any news from her crush. Kiba was still playing with Akamaru, but he made sure to look towards Hinata every once in a while to make sure she was alright. Shino was leaning against the wall, he knew exactly where Naruto was due to a bug he placed on him before the exam. Shino was quite suspicious of a few people so placed a bug on Naruto for Hinata's sake. He knew what had happened to Naruto, but he couldn't just tell Hinata or anyone for that matter what had happened. When Shino found out that it was Orochimaru that attacked Sasuke, he didn't want to endanger his team by going anywhere near a dangerous man like him. From what he got from his bugs, Naruto had fought him on a level playing field for a while but still lost. Shino had just been notified by his bugs that the object of the topic had arrived. He's in the tower. Shino said offhandedly. Kiba and Hinata looked at him briefly before they saw Chuanin leave the area to go where Anko was. Hinata activated her by Akigen and looked for Naruto. When she found him she blushed due to his lack of shirt and watched him go through various emotions. She unconsciously held her hands to her chest. Her teammate saw this and knew she saw who she was looking for. Anko's report, Anko had run into more trouble after she headed off to the tower a team of Genin had thought that she was a Genin in disguise to avoid fighting. She tried and failed to convince the team that she was the actual moderator of this exam. The only thing she could do was dodge their attacks for if she attacked it would be unfair. She was losing her patience because she was in a hurry. One of the Genin caught her off guard and nicked her cheek with a kunai. She was furious, no one cuts me and gets away with it. Anko yelled as the four rushed only to be stopped as Ten Anbu jumped in between them. The team of Genin were now a little worried that they made a mistake. Anko-san, Hokage-sama is waiting at the tower for your report. One of the Anbu said. Anko nodded her head in acknowledgement and gave one last glare at the Genin who nicked her before, her, and the Ten Anbu disappeared. The Genin were terrified. Anko wasn't terribly far from the tower when she was ambushed, so it didn't take long to get there. When they arrived they immediately went to where the Hokage was located after making an order to Ichunin. The Hokage was standing at the window looking out over the entire forest, watching the young Genin go for the gold. He turned around as Anko and Anbu entered the room. He took notice of the serious and grim face Anko had and knew this wouldn't be good. Report. The Hokage said with a dead serious tone. Anko had been trying to figure out how to word a report the entire way there. Rajimaru was in the forest of death. Anko started. Everyone looked at her with grim expressions and she continued. When I found him it appeared that he was mortally wounded. She said, everyone was immediately interested. He said that he had run into Team 7 in the forest of death. And apparently they fought and Yuzumaki Naruto was the one that dealt the mortal blow. Anko said. The Anbu in the room scowled at Anko's words, the Hokage was indeed shocked but held it into the rest of the report. But there might be a problem. Orochimaru said that he gave Naruto the curse seal. She said, the Hokage was not able to hold in his reaction as he shot up with worry on his face. Are you sure of this? The Hokage asked. Everyone in the room knew that the seal might have some kind of effect on Naruto and the Kyuubi seal. Fairly certain. Orochimaru claimed that he took the seal to protect his teammate. This means he wasn't the target. Anko said. That gave the Hokage more worry. Just then a Chunin came into the room. Anko-san, they're here. He said as he turned on a TV and showed them that Naruto and his team were in the tower. Sakura had just sat down and leaned her head on Sasuke and fell asleep. They watched as Naruto's reactions went from one to another with no cause. They had full audio, but there was no sound in the room. Something's wrong. Anko said as she was watching Naruto. They all nodded in response. After they saw that his reaction changed back to expressionless. Should we send someone to pick him up? She asked. The Hokage was looking at Naruto carefully trying to find some clue as to what happened when he noticed something. I want you to zoom in on his neck. The Hokage said. They all immediately looked at his neck to find that they didn't see the seal. The Chunin zoomed in, and all that was on his neck was soot making a surrounding shape of the curse seal. It looks like the seal was there. The question is what happened to it. The Hokage said. The members looked at Naruto pondering for a couple of minutes before the Hokage spoke. Anko, I want you to go and retrieve Naruto and his teammates. And I want Kakashi here also. The Hokage said and they all nodded and left to retrieve the people. Anko walked out of the room and headed to where Team 7 was waiting. On her way she passed by Team 8. Team 8 watched her head to the area where Team 7 was located. Hinata looked a bit worried because of the look of seriousness Anko had as she walked past. Anko entered the room that Team 7 was located in which alerted Naruto immediately. Naruto spun around to see Anko looking at as if judging him. Anko looked at the sleeping forms of Sasuke and Sakura. Naruto looked back at Sakura and Sasuke. She fell asleep when we got here and he was knocked out in the forest. Naruto said as he stood up and looked at Anko. Anko looked back at Naruto, shocked. Was he knocked out by Orochimaru? Anko asked. No, he was knocked out by a sound nin. We were attacked after my fight with Orochimaru. 
Orochimaru sent them to finish me off. Naruto said. I see. Hokage-sama wishes to speak with you. Anko said. Naruto nodded and looked back at Sasuke and Sakura. They can come, but Hokage-sama wishes to speak with- Hey, Sakura-chan get up. Naruto said. Sakura started to stir so Naruto moved over to Sasuke and kicked him. Wake up bastard. Naruto stated. Sasuke shot up and grabbed Naruto's neck. Sakura was still resting on Sasuke's shoulder when he shot up, so her head met the ground exceedingly fast. Sasuke took a moment to look around. Where are we? Sasuke asked not to let go of Naruto's neck. Naruto just stared at Sasuke not even batting an eye. Anko watches the situation unfold. Of what she could tell Sasuke and Naruto usually fight and Sakura is forgotten. How can this possibly be a suitable team? Anko thought. Sakura was struggling to get to her feet. You're in the central tower. Anko said. Sasuke didn't look away from Naruto as he just held him. Sakura finally got to her feet and saw the situation and set out to defuse it. Sasuke-kun, what are you doing? Sakura asked softly Sasuke didn't say anything as Naruto had finally started choking, but tried not to show it everyone knew though. Sasuke-kun, he's choking. Sasuke released Naruto and walked past him. Naruto compassed himself fairly quickly and acted like nothing happened. Anko was extremely surprised by the entire team's attitude about the situation. What are we supposed to do now? Sasuke asked while his back was turned to Naruto. Anko just sighed as she spoke. You and Sakura can wait in the waiting room. Anko said, signaling for them to follow. They started walking when Sakura asked something bothering her. You said to Sasuke-kun and I, what about Naruto? Sakura asked. Anko looked at her briefly before she continued walking. Naruto has other appointments to attend to. Anko said not looking back. Sasuke looked back at Naruto and glared at him. Naruto kept his stoic attitude as they continued to walk. They arrived in the waiting room to see the San team and teammate already there. Anko abruptly stopped and said, you two wait here, I'll send someone to tell you where you will be staying. Naruto please come with me. She said as she started walking again. Naruto briefly took recognition of the other six people before he followed Anko. As Naruto and Anko left the room the eight Gen and Plus watched them go. Anata thought something was wrong with the way Naruto was moving, so she activated her by Akigen and saw into Naruto's chakra system. What she saw shocked her completely. A good portion of his chakra system was ruptured, chakra was flowing through the six plates Naruto wore, and there were things attached to his hands. She released her by Akigen as Naruto left the area, and she looked at her team. Sakura was standing right where she was left, and Sasuke was leaning against a wall. Kiba went to approach Hinata, but she brushed him aside as she went to her room to think. Shino and Kiba looked confused, but figured she would tell them when she was ready. Anko and Naruto walked to the room that had the Hokage in it. As they entered they saw Kakashi and the Hokage waiting for them. They were looking at the TV screen with the room that Naruto had come from. Naruto looked at the TV briefly before he fixed his gaze on the three people in the room. Naruto would like to know what happened in the forest. The Hokage said. Kakashi, who had been briefed when he got there, looked at Naruto intently. Well, we were going through the forest and an enemy appeared, we fought and I lost. Naruto summarized. The members in the room were not pleased with Naruto's response. Naruto, this is a very serious matter. We need to know anything that you know. Kakashi said as he looked at his pupil. Pine, this guy attacked us, and I held him off so Sasuke and Sakura could get away. They didn't run like I asked. During the fight I got hit with a shuriken, the guy bit me on the neck and placed some weird seal on my abdomen. Naruto said. I don't think it wise to tell anyone about your chakra system. Kaiubi said. The group looked at Naruto for more info. So he placed a seal on your abdomen and you didn't feel that you should have told us? Anko asked. Naruto shook his head and clarified. It's not that important, the seal is gone, so is the other one that was put on my neck, they cancelled each other out. Naruto said. The group looked at him briefly before the Hokage spoke. Are there any complications due to the removal of the seals? The Hokage asked. Naruto shook his head and replied. None that I've noticed. Naruto lied. Anko and Kakashi believed him, but the Hokage was a bit skeptical. The Hokage had seen Naruto lie all his life, so he knew Naruto wasn't telling the whole truth. He would just have to watch the boy just in case. If there are any problems you will tell us, right? Kakashi asked. Naruto nodded. Kakashi continued, now we need to figure out what to do about Sasuke. Orochimaru said that he was after him, and Sasuke doesn't seem to want to be a team player. Kakashi said. Kakashi, after this next part of the exam I want you to take Sasuke and train him away from the village for a while, so nothing happens to him. The Hokage said. Naruto looked a bit dejected but compassed himself before anyone saw. Everything that was discussed in here is not to be shared anywhere else, am I understood? The Hokage said firmly. Everyone nodded, good, you're dismissed. He finished. 
Kakashi puffed out of the room while Naruto left the way he came in. He went down to the waiting area where the rest of his team was. He arrived to see Sasuke brooding in the corner and Sakura sitting gingerly. Kiba and Shino were lounging about as well. Hinata was nowhere to be seen. The sand team was on the far end of the room away from everyone else. There is something vaguely familiar about that boy. Kaiubi said, referring to Gara. Naruto looked at him discreetly and then turned away. Naruto went over to his team to rest. Naruto arrived near his team to receive a scowl from Sasuke and a glance from Sakura. Anko came up behind Naruto and made an announcement. Your guy's room is ready, you can come here or your room only. You can train but under no circumstance can you fight anyone else. She said as she looked at Sasuke specifically. She led them to the room which was fairly big with three beds with a very bland atmosphere. This is your room. There are rations in a box under each bed, enough to last you till the end of the exam. Anko said as she left. The three of them looked at the beds briefly before picking which one was whose. None of them really wished to talk to each other at the moment. Naruto laid down on his bed and promptly fell asleep, while Sakura and Sasuke just laid on theirs not sleeping just thinking about things to come. The four days passed by quickly. Sasuke would always train in the waiting room when no one else was there, Sakura would watch Sasuke train, and Naruto only left his room when everyone was asleep. He didn't want to be around people, he was still a bit worried about not being able to use chakra. He had wanted to do the procedure while in his room, but Kaiubi said that they were too close to people. He just laid there and looked at the bland room. He ate when he was hungry and slept when he was tired, which wasn't that often. He seemed to be more energized with sleep than he ever was, he only slept four hours a night, which made the four days boring as hell. He got up once a day while almost everyone was sleeping and ran about 1000 laps around the waiting area. Gara had caught him a couple of times, but neither of them said anything and went back to what they were doing. Hiba would always play practice with Akamaru, and Shino would secretly spy on people with his bugs and make notes of certain things. Hinata would wait in the waiting room for Naruto to come out so she could somehow ask him what happened, she kinda figured that if she had the chance she would wimp out immediately. Whenever she thought of seeing Naruto though she grew the brightest blush, she just couldn't get a bare-chested Naruto out of her head. Gara only popped out of his room at night while Naruto was running, and the other sound siblings never came out, only they and Shino knew what they were doing. Shino was confused by some of the things that he had gotten from them because they never used full explanations, only things like the plan, signal, or fragments of information. Lee's team arrived on the second day bearing very little injuries. They were very scarce the whole time they were there. The mate came in on day three, and when Sakura had started going on about how she was getting closer to Sasuke, Ino just stopped listening and walked off. Sakura had thought Ino crazy, but left her alone thinking that she needed to be alone. Shikamaru and Chaoji were just relaxing the whole time complaining about things keeping away from the subject about what happened in the forest. When the sound team walked into the waiting room on the third day, Sasuke glared at them like no tomorrow and only received a smirk from the entire group. When they were told that there was no fighting they pouted a bit and just stayed in their room. When the fifth day came around the six teams were herded to another room with staircases leading up to balconies and a statue of two hands in the seal for goat, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. They were put into rows and set in front of the high-level ninjas. Congratulations on passing the second test. The Hokage said. I will now explain the real reason for having the Chunin exam together among all the other villages. Naruto was going to listen to the Hokage's explanation until his resident spoke. There's a snake in the room. Kaiubi said. Chapter 7. Ready for a fight. Naruto looked around the room he was in and he was clearly confused. I don't see any snakes. He said to Kaiubi. But you can smell it. Kaiubi said. Naruto took a sniff of the air and sure enough he could smell a snake somewhere in the room. He tried to pinpoint the smell from where he was standing, but wasn't as skilled as he needed to be in order to smell out something from standing in one place and getting the exact point. It kind of smells like that one guy I fought in the forest. Naruto thought. You know you can train your nose to be able to find where scents are coming from. That's how the animals that hunt do it. Kaiubi said. Naruto put that information into his head for reference. Naruto started to pay attention to what was going on in the room a little too late as everyone was heading to the stairs to the balconies. He looked around a second and saw a TV screen with two names on it. Hayuga Hinata vs Haruno Sakura. To say Hinata was shocked was an understatement. Not only would she be the first to fight, but she had to fight Sakura. Hinata was having internal disputes about the whole thing. I have to fight Sakura. What if Naruto gets mad at me for hurting Sakura? But what if I beat her will Naruto like me more? Hinata thought as she glanced at Naruto who was now heading to the balcony with all the other leaf ninjas. Hinata had no idea what she was going to do. On one hand she could fight and try to win, and Naruto would admire her strength. On the other hand Naruto could get mad at her, and he would never like her. Sakura was thinking about Sasuke and what he would think about the outcome of this fight. 
Naruto was trying to come up with what he was going to do about his fight. He couldn't use chakra without damaging himself, and he didn't know if he could beat anyone with just pure tojutsu. Naruto drew his attention to the ground to see that the match had just started. Sakura was the first to move, figuring she would try to knock Hinata out as fast as possible. Hinata had not expected Sakura to attack so soon, so she had no time to activate her by Akigen, so she dodged instead. Up in the stands Niji was just shaking his head detested at Hinata's inability to fight as a high Uga should. After Hinata dodged Sakura's initial attack, Sakura kicked Hinata in the gut and then followed through with a kick to the chin. Hinata flew back three feet. Sakura gave Hinata the chance to recover, and Hinata used that time to activate her Byakugan. Hinata's world went weird for a second as she got used to the sight of her Byakugan. After the vertigo was gone Hinata was ready to fight. Sakura reeled back as she saw Hinata's eyes bulge and veins pop out at the sight of her eyes. It was Hinata's turn to rush in and attack. Hinata struck her hand out with an open palm at Sakura's chest so she could disrupt the flow of chakra and claim a quick victory. Sakura watched as the attack came closer, she can't be serious. That attack won't do anything to hurt me. I'll just take the hit and counter when she's open. Sakura thought as she stood prepared for Hinata's attack. Everyone who knew Hinata's attacks just smirked at the non-moving genin. Hinata struck Sakura in the chest with a chakra-enhanced open palm attack, and Sakura hit Hinata with her knee into the gut. Hinata fell down, and Sakura flew five feet before landing with a wicked thud. Everyone looked surprised. Sakura wasn't moving, and Hinata was struggling to get up. Hinata's team was overjoyed that she had won. While Sasuke was just annoyed for being on the same team as someone weak enough to get knocked out with one hit. Naruto looked indifferent. Sure he should be upset that Sakura had lost that fast, but she was up against someone that was most likely on a higher level than her. Niji had an indifferent look as well, but thought on a different wavelength, hump she got lucky she was against someone so weak she wouldn't last in a fight against anyone else. Niji thought as he looked down on Hinata Ino was shocked that her, once upon a time, friend had been beaten down so fast. If Sakura was beaten so fast, how long would it last? Ino thought with concern written all over her face. Shikamaru saw this, but had no way to help Ino. Hei announced Hinata the victor as medic nins came to heal Sakura. Victory had barely caught up to Hinata as she just stood there shocked. She was easily the most surprised person there. As she looked around she saw that in fact she had won and she wasn't imagining it. She looked to see an indifferent expression on Naruto. She shrunk into her more shy self as she slowly walked over to the stairs twiddling her thumbs. The medic nins finished looking at Sakura and took her away on a stretcher. Hinata made it up to her team and was praised for her victory. She looked over in Naruto's direction to see what he thought of her match. When she looked towards Naruto she saw her cousin glaring back at her, and she quickly turned her head and looked at the arena. Naruto had seen this nonetheless and was annoyed. He must be a real jerk like someone else I know. They eight started the scoreboard to start the next match. The scoreboard flashed all the names before stopping on the next two competitors. Nara Shikamaru vs Kintsuchi. Kin was a bit impatient and just jumped down from the balcony, while Shikamaru being the lazy person he was, took it nice and slow as he walked down the steps to face his opponent. Ino was still reeling over Sakura's quick loss that she didn't even notice Shikamaru leave. As Shikamaru got across from his opponent he took his bored stance. This is troublesome fighting a girl. Shikamaru said as he looked at his opponent. Ino snapped out of her daze and noticed that Shikamaru was on the ground about ready to fight. Kin eyed Shikamaru before she looked up at Naruto. Begin. Hey, said. Shikamaru, not one to deny something given to him, charged Kin before she even knew the match started. Shikamaru knocked Kin a good ways back, about a foot away from the wall. As Kin got up she was about to attack Shikamaru with needles if only she could move. Shikamaru put his hands into his pockets and Kin did the same thing. What is this? Kin exclaimed. Shikamaru put on a smirk. This is my family, cage main no jutsu. Look at your feet. Shikamaru said. Kin looked at her feet and saw that her shadow was connected to a longer shadow that was connected to Shikamaru. You see now. We will do the same things as long as we are connected. Shikamaru stated. How will that help you? If we do the same things it'll just end up as a stalemate. Kin said, unsure of herself. Shikamaru frowned. You can't have a stalemate in Shogi, you either win or lose. We have different body types so one of us should be able to withstand weapon assaults longer. Shikamaru said as he reached down into his weapon pouch and pulled out a shuriken Kin mimicked his movement. You're crazy, you'll only hurt yourself. Kin said, sounding worried. Shikamaru just threw his shuriken at Kin, and Kin did the same. As the shuriken flew through the air everyone was watching intently on what would happen. As the projectiles came closer Shikamaru started to dodge by leaning back. Ha. I knew he was bluffing. Kin thought with a smirk until her head rammed into the wall with enough force to knock her out. Shikamaru turned his backbend into a backhand spring and landed on his feet. 
Heiei checked to see if Kin was out. Winner, Nara Shikamaru. Heiei announced that a medical team came out and took Kin away. Shikamaru lazily walked to the rest of his team. The monitor started to do its thing again as Shikamaru made it back to his team. The screen stopped to reveal the next set of competitors. Tenten vs Aburam Shino. Tenten hopped down to the arena getting the spot that she wants to start off with. Shino merely turned and started to walk down the stairs. Good luck Shino-kun. Hinata said shyly, barely audible. Shino gave a nod before he went down and stood across from Tenten. Tenten was anxious for a good fight and she was glad that it was her turn this early on. Shino was indifferent about when he was going to fight. So he didn't care if it was his turn this early or not. Begin. Hate said. Tenten jumped a step back in order to get a little distance for attack and defense purposes. Guy and Lee were overly excited for Tenten. Kurinai was getting a little fed up and butted in. You know my Shino will beat your Tenten. Kurinai said. Guy and Lee stopped their shouting and looked at Kurinai. Ah. You seem sure of yourself. How about we make a deal then? Guy exclaimed, putting on his good guy pose. Kurinai was interested, but she wasn't the only one. Oh a game is it? Asuma said, lighting a cigarette. I know a good one. The Jounins were intrigued. And what did you have in mind? Kakashi asked. The Jounin who has the most team members passes wins. Asuma said. Guy and Lee looked ecstatic, Kurinai looked a bit suspicious, and Kakashi looked displeased. That means I'm already losing, Guy is on his first pupil, and you and Kurinai are leading. Kakashi said. Asuma smirked and Kurinai smiled. I agree. Kurinai said. I too agree, because the flame of youth is strong within my students. Guy exclaimed, giving his good guy pose. They all looked at Kakashi who in return sighed. Hein, I agree. Kakashi said. What are the stakes? Kakashi asked worriedly. Kurinai thought for a second and came up with a devilish idea. Whatever the victor asks for. Kurinai said with a smile. Asuma nodded in agreement as did Guy, leaving Kakashi little choice but to agree. And what if there is a tie? Guy asked. Same applies to the losing teams or the team just has more to do. Asuma said. They all nodded and turned their attention to the arena. They were surprised to see a massive amount of both. Weapons and bugs. No one except Naruto was paying attention to the match, so they did not understand why Tenten was cowering against a wall surrounded by bugs, pointing accusingly at Shino with a look that would say she had been to hell and back many times. This will all be over if you forfeit. Shino said. Tenten looked at the bugs then Shino then the bugs again, and then she raised her hand. I forfeit. Tenten said. Kurinai would have been jumping for joy if she wasn't as refined as she was. Guy on the other hand just fell down. Kakashi laughed and then spoke. Now Kurinai is winning with two, while myself and Guy are in last place. Kakashi said. Shino disbanded his bugs and began to walk up the stairs after Hade announced him the victor. Tenten however went nowhere near Shino as she jumped back up to join her team. What happened to Tenten? Lee asked. Tenten started to shiver and she slowly looked at Lee with a pale white face. I don't ever want to talk about it as long as I live. Tenten said, ending the discussion completely. The scoreboard started to mix up the names and the next competitors were chosen. Yamanaka Ino vs Kankuro. Both combatants walked down to the arena ready for a fight. Ino was still worried about losing as quickly as Sakura did, but Ino had a plan that would hopefully succeed. Begin. Heit said. Ino looked at Kankuro for a moment and Kankuro removed the thing from his back and set it on the ground. I am a gentleman so I will give the first attack to you. Kankuro said. Tamari nearly laughed, it took all her will to stop herself. This is perfect. I'll win this in one move and hang it over Sakura. Ino thought confidence was back. Why thank you. Ino said as she did the seals for her family. Shintenshin no jutsu. Ino said as her body went limp. Kankuro didn't move at all to dodge. Ino's team looked happy for a moment before Kankuro walked towards Ino, picked her up and put a kunai to her neck. Everyone was surprised to say the least. A little trickle of blood came from Ino's neck as Kankuro pushed the kunai into it. That's enough. Kankuro is the winner. Hei said as he grabbed Ino from Kankuro. Kankuro put on a weird look as he grabbed his bandage thing and walked up the stairs. Ino regained consciousness to see her opponent walking away from her and the test examiner was holding her. I'm sorry but you have lost. Hei said as he let Ino stand on her own. Ino was still a little disoriented but she still walked up to her group wondering what had happened. She was mildly disappointed in herself that she let that weird looking guy beat her and she didn't even do anything to him. Her head hung low as she reached her team. Asuma, feeling a little upset, decided to lighten things up. Well at least she wasn't taken to the infirmary. Asuma said with a kind smile. Yeah only one team is missing someone. Kurinai said lightly as she looked over in Kakashi's direction. Kakashi had his head hung low, but he was the only one to have both the Achiha and a ninja being taught by the greatest yaokai. 
he was sure that he would get two and at least he would get two points. He glanced up at the scoreboard for the next two competitors. Dosu Kanuta vs Uzumaki Naruto. Kakashi looked down at Naruto. Well Kakashi I guess we'll see if you still have a chance to win your little competition. Naruto said as he jumped over the railing onto the ground. Everyone was intrigued to see if Naruto would be able to beat this guy. Oh Naruto-kun, I hope that you will be okay. How are you going to deal with your chakra system being screwed up? Hinata thought with her hands up to her chest. On the other side of the arena a conversation was being held. I don't want Yuzumaki Naruto to come out of this fight alive. Do you understand? Arachimaru said. Dosu nodded. You better not disappoint me again. Arachimaru concluded. Dosu hopped down onto the arena floor and stepped up to the fight. Naruto looked indifferent about his fight but wanted to get a few things out. You know I have excellent hearing. Naruto said. Dog's eyes widened. And I told you in the forest you wouldn't live to regret it. So since your orders are to kill me and I promise to kill you, we should be agreed that this match will be life and death. Everyone heard Naruto's cold words, but what interested them the most is that there was no killer intent, no feelings of hate, nor any violence towards Dosu, it was as if he was stating a fact. It was a shock that Naruto had said them it was almost scary. The genin didn't believe that Naruto could be serious, the jounin however were unsure. They ate looked at the Hokage with a look that asked if he should start. The Hokage looked at all the shocked faces to see if he could get assistance in his decision, when he found no help he chose. With a nod of the Hokage's head, Hei began the match. Begin. Hei said and stepped back. Dosu rushed in to get a good advantage by hitting Naruto with vibrations. He watched Naruto's hands carefully so he didn't get caught by one of the blades. Naruto stood unmoving as Dosu came at him. As Dosu swung a punch at Naruto, Naruto lifted his left arm and blocked his punch. Dosu smiled and released the vibrations and directed them to Naruto's ear. I can make the wave travel wherever I want. Dosu said with a hint of arrogance. Naruto struck Dosu in the gut with his right hand. While Dosu leaned over due to the pain Naruto did a backflip connecting a kick as he did so, making Dosu rise into the air. During Naruto's flip he grabbed Dog's legs and pulled him under him so he could land on Dosu instead of the ground. As Naruto landed he did a backhand spring off of Dosu. Everyone was surprised that Naruto performed such a complicated combo so easily. Dosu stood up and everyone could see blood leaking through his bandages around his mouth. His visible eye was wide with shock. Naruto stood indifferent as if nothing important had happened. How was he not affected by my amplifier? Dosu thought to himself. Naruto's body felt like it was on fire. He knew he couldn't use chakra, but he just found out that even though he can do anything physical without harming his chakra system, it still hurts like hell. Damn this fight will get complicated. Naruto thought. Well kid, what did you expect at a tea party? You're fighting without chakra and you will be hit with backlash with every attack. This will prove how good of a fighter you are. And this guy isn't a pushover, these kinds of handicaps prove who is better than the rest. Kaiubi said as he went back into the recesses of Naruto's mind for the rest of the fight. Naruto knew this was going to be hard, but he couldn't help but feel proud of himself. Dosu was trying his hardest to figure out what he was going to do. He was told by Rachimaru all the things Naruto could do so he was going through every possibility in his head. The sidelines were all silent due to the fact that this fight was proclaimed to be a fight to the death. No one wanted to know what was going to happen, but they needed to. They didn't want to break any concentration, and not many had a reason to cheer. Only one could say she wanted to cheer, but was too scared to do so. Even though the Hokage was wondering what was going to happen, he was worried for Naruto. If he loses he dies, if he wins there's a chance that it could be devastating to the boy. Naruto became tired of waiting and charged his opponent. Dosu broke his thoughts and went defensive. Naruto went for a punch at Dosu's face, Dosu dodged and countered with a kick to Naruto's side. Naruto saw this and Naruto dropped and did a sweep, completely dodging Dosu's kick and attempting to trip him. Dosu jumped over Naruto's leg and went to punch Naruto as he landed. Naruto rolled over a little to avoid the attack and while still on the ground, went for a high kick towards Dog's head. Dosu grabbed Naruto's leg and picked him up and twirled around, then threw Naruto towards the closest wall. Naruto twisted his body so he hit the wall feet first. Discus throw was so strong that as Naruto hit the wall, he created a crater with his feet. As Naruto hit the wall he pushed off to get enough force so he could add to his punching power and speed. While Naruto was in midair ready for the strike, Dosu did a front flip and connected his heel with the back of Naruto's skull. Naruto was sent to the ground face first with tremendous force. Everyone heard probably the most sickening thud and breaking of something they had ever heard. Dosu picked Naruto up by his hair revealing Naruto's battered face. He was bleeding from his forehead, next to his right eye, both nostrils, and his mouth. You could easily tell Naruto's nose was broken just by the look of it. The side of Naruto's face made Ino, Hinata, the Hokage, Kurinai, and surprisingly Anko turn their heads. 
the Kashi, Gai, and Asuma were all half tempted to stop this match right then and there. Orochimaru, Zaku and Gara had the most sinister smile on their faces. Those who took a look at his work momentarily before he struck Naruto in the gut and sent vibrations throughout his entire body. Naruto coughed up a massive amount of blood. Dosu released Naruto from his hold and kicked him in his right arm with as much strength as he could manage. Everyone heard a loud snap as Naruto was flung helplessly into a wall, creating a huge crater and a lot of dust. Everyone was completely surprised at what happened to Naruto that no one even blinked as they watched intently as Naruto was being killed right before their eyes. They all knew there was nothing that could be done. The match was declared a death match, and if anyone intervened there could be many problems. Dosu started walking over to Naruto but stopped abruptly as the dust cleared. Naruto stood there as the dust cleared. His right eye was closed, most likely sealed shut due to blood loss. He was cradling his right arm with his left. His pants were all torn up and the bandages on his legs fell off. His weapons pouch was dangling on his leg and his hip pouch was in the rubble with his bandages. Surprisingly enough his vest was unscathed and so were the bandages on his abdomen. His pants were torn up to his knees and you could see blood trickling down his left leg from a spot where a bone was sticking out. Both his arms were bleeding profusely, but his right arm had a bone sticking out of it right above his elbow. The way Naruto looked made everyone in the room nauseated. Even the San team and Orochimaru had trouble looking at Naruto. No one could believe that Naruto was even standing in that kind of condition. What shocked them more was that Naruto still looked ready to fight. Dosu couldn't believe that Naruto was still willing to go at it in the condition he was in. Naruto looked down at his arm and tried to move it. His body felt like it was squashed by a building, thrown through miles of walls, and burned by the sun. The pain was so excruciating that he was surprised that he was still alive. Naruto used his left arm and pushed his bone back into his arm and repositioned it to where it belonged. He winced in pain, but on the inside he was ready to finish himself off to relieve himself from the pain. Everyone looked at him wide-eyed, they could not for the life of them believe that Naruto had just repositioned a bone in his own body and just flinched and looked away. No one wanted to watch as Naruto reached down and repositioned the loose bone in his leg. Naruto was in so much pain it was unbearable. He would have passed out if he wasn't so bent on finishing this match. He was still bleeding, but he could move his arm and leg again granted it was excruciatingly painful. Hey Kaiubi I thought you said my healing abilities increased. Naruto said to Kaiubi. Have you seen yourself? You shouldn't even be conscious and you're complaining you're not being healed fast enough. Damn you are crazy. It will take about a day for all those injuries to heal completely without outside help. Kaiubi said. That long? Damn. I'll just have to endure it. Naruto said mentally laughing. Naruto knew good and well he couldn't run. He was extremely low on throwing knives and he couldn't use the blades on the back of his hand because he needed chakra to activate them. Although if he used enough force to activate them it would work, but he wouldn't be able to use them that well because he's too hurt. He could try to move quickly so he can utilize his weapons better. Of course the problem being the pain would be so strong that he didn't know how long he could last. Osu had a hard time comprehending the fact that he was fighting someone who stood up even though he was beaten to a bloody pulp. He was just staring at an inhuman being that would not die. Orochimaru was getting really pissed that Naruto would not die. Naruto was done trying to figure out what to do and take the risk of pain, it wouldn't be too bad just adding to what was already there. He took off his vest revealing the start of a toned body. All the girls blushed at the sight of Naruto's chest. He then took off both his gloves, revealing a weird looking thing on each of his hands. Naruto looked into his weapons pouch to see his last two throwing knives, which were of course the only two that needed his blood to take out of the pouch. He let some of the blood fall into his pouch, and then he pulled out one of his remaining throwing knives, which was glowing an eerie red color. Everyone looked at Naruto's new weapons with confusion and interest. Orochimaru wrote something down on a piece of paper and handed it to Zaku. Zaku read it and destroyed it as soon as he was finished reading. Naruto noticed that just holding the throwing knife was so painful because it was burning his hand. God damn using your chakra for these two throwing knives was probably a bad idea. Naruto said to Kaiubi. But the weld of the explosion will be bigger than the ones that you used your chakra for. Kaiubi said. Naruto couldn't disagree with that, but it still burned when he held them. He had wished that he had some of his other ones, but Sasuke took his last one. Well he made sure everything was set for his last attack, because no matter what happened to Dosu, Naruto knew he couldn't go on after his attack. He circled Dosu until he was next to the wall that had the entrance. Dosu never took his eyes off of Naruto, he knew whatever Naruto was planning was over. Naruto threw the throwing knife as hard as he could towards Dosu, in doing so the bone in his right arm dislocated from its fixed position. Naruto hit the wall with the back of his left hand creating a small crater, but in doing so the blade popped out into its battle position. Dosu saw the knife fly towards him with tremendous speed. 
He knew from what Orochimaru said that they exploded, so not only did he dodge it, he jumped forward so he wouldn't get caught in the blast. Naruto ran towards Dosu as quickly as he possibly could. The knife hit the statue of hands and blew up. Everyone was surprised that the knife blew up, but that didn't last long as they had to shield their eyes, as the whole room burst into light and the explosion covered half of the room. The Jounin teachers shielded their students from the actual explosion. The light had temporarily blinded everyone so no one saw what had happened. As everyone started to get their sight back they saw that there was still smoke all over the room. No matter where you looked you could only see smoke, you couldn't even see the people closest to them. Everyone was in total shock at the force of the blast that came from such a little thing. Kakashi did some hand seals, and a gust of wind blew all the smoke away. After the smoke was cleared everyone was surprised to see that the statue was gone. There was a crater in the floor, three of the four walls, and the ceiling. Both balconies were missing a section of space. Anko and Asuma had taken a bit more damage than the rest, since they were the closest to the explosion. They were okay, however, just some burns. Hayate was unlucky since he was the examiner. He had been thrown towards the doors leading out of the room because of the strength of the explosion. He broke through the doors and was now lying unconscious outside. The most unlucky however were Naruto and Dosu. They were both standing, however they both were stabbed by their opponent's weapons. Dosu had pulled out a kunai before the explosion, so when the blast sent him flying towards Naruto, the kunai stabbed him. The same effect happened to Dosu, the blast sent Dosu right into Naruto's blade. Everyone was surprised to see a kunai embedded into the right side of Naruto's chest and Naruto's blade protruding out of Dog's back. They all looked at the blade and at its position and could tell that it went right through Dog's heart. There were pieces of stone embedded into Dog's back and some in Naruto's left arm. A large amount of blood was flowing through the wound on Dog's chest and through the bandages around his mouth. And Naruto was just a bloody mess. Everyone watched the unmoving forms of Naruto and Dosu. They all thought that they had ended up killing each other. Everyone was shocked when they saw Naruto unceremoniously pull his blade out of Dosu. Blood splatter on Naruto's already bloody face and Dosu fell to the ground lifelessly. Naruto turned and started walking to the unconscious form of hate. No one knew what to say. Naruto looked like he was ready to die and he was still able to move without help. He was covered from head to toe with blood, he had a kunai protruding out of his chest and he looked like he didn't care about any of it. When he got to Hayate he looked him over to see if there were any life-threatening wounds. There were a couple of medic nin standing there just looking at Naruto not moving, they were too terrified to go near Naruto. No one dared move. They couldn't find it in themselves to even speak, they were too surprised at Naruto's fight. Gara was the only one who wasn't afraid to speak. Well, he won. Can we finish this up? Everyone looked at Gara incredulously. Have none of you seen someone kill before? And they call you ninjas. Gara said as he leaned against the wall. Naruto was finished looking at Hade, and he stepped away so the medics could treat him. Naruto staggered back into the room and went over to where Dosu threw him, and he picked up his vest. When he went to pick up his pouch he realized that his arm was broken again. He put his vest down, and then he put his bone back into place. Naruto was on the verge of tears, he was so badly injured he couldn't even tell which pain came from which wound. After he was sure his bone was said he put on his vest, and then he noticed there was a kunai in his chest, he pulled it out and tossed it on the ground, then he grabbed his pouch and started walking slowly to the balcony. The entire room was so tense as Naruto walked up the stairs, as he got to the top of the stairs he took a seat against the wall. He leaned his head back and closed his one open eye, and it looked as if he was sleeping or dead. Hayate walked into the room holding his head. He looked around and saw that only Dog's body was in the arena, he looked and saw that Naruto was sitting up in the balcony. Hayate walked over to Dosu and checked for a pulse when he found none he signaled for the medics to take him away. Hayate then jumped up to meet with the Hokage. What are we going to do now? Hayate asked. The Hokage took a glance at Naruto and then the destruction that was once called an arena. We will continue the next four matches. We will use a drawing method to see who fights who. The Hokage said. Hayate nodded and took out eight small pieces and wrote the remaining names on it. And the mess? Hayate asked as he finished up the names. The Hokage looked around and gave his answer. The terrain on the battlefield is never always nice and neat. The Hokage said. Hayate nodded and jumped down and put the names in his pocket. What about Yuzumaki Naruto? Anko asked. There isn't much we can do about that right now. And anything that we say now he can hear. The Hokage said. Naruto didn't even move. Hayate was in the middle of the arena admiring the destruction. He caused quite a mess. Hayate thought as he pulled out two slips of paper. Akamichi Chouji vs. Tamari. Please come to the center. Tamari hopped down while Chouji walked down the stairs minding Naruto. Chouji reached his position on the ground, then Hayate began the match. Tamari wasn't in much of a mood to fight anymore, she was disgusted after seeing Naruto fight, so she wanted to end this fight quickly. She grabbed her fan from behind her and swung it. 
Kamitachi. Tamari yelled as a large gust of wind flew at Chaoji. Chaoji had no time to dodge as the gust hit him head on. Chaoji was lifted up into the air by the now formed tornado. He was propelled in air and was being sliced by the massive wind. Shikamaru looked on as his teammate and only friend was being assaulted, and there was nothing he could do. Naruto was watching the entire room, so he saw Shikamaru look helpless as his friend was being assaulted. Choji fell out of the tornado and onto Tamari's fan making a sickening thud. Thankfully due to Chaoji's size the fan didn't break anything, just knocked him out. Winner. Tamari. Hey, said. Tamari had an evil glint in her eye as she lifted her fan and threw Chaoji off of it. Shikamaru was worried and scared that the fan had broken something or caused damage, that if he landed, it could possibly cause the second death of the prelims, and he did not want his friend to die. He was about to jump and help if he wasn't beaten to the punch by Naruto. Naruto jumped down and caught Chaoji. He flinched as pain enveloped his body. I should not have done that. He would have let Shikamaru do it, but it would have had more of an impact on Tamari if Naruto did it. What better way to say leave my friends alone than to scare them? And Tamari was scared, especially when Naruto glared at her with evil, menacing eyes. The only person that could scare her like that was her brother, and even then it wasn't directed at her like this, it paralyzed her. She was looking into bright, blue, slit demon-like eyes that were from someone who had blood running free all over him. No one could handle that sight for long. Tamari broke out of her fear when Naruto turned his attention to Chaoji to make sure he was alright. He saw that the medics were hesitating to walk over there, so he set Chaoji down and stepped away. Shikamaru jumped down to see how Chaoji was doing and to thank Naruto. The medics checked Choji and placed him on a stretcher and carried him away before Shikamaru could see him. Shikamaru walked over to Naruto. How is he? Shikamaru asked. He'll be fine, he was just knocked unconscious. If he didn't have the extra mass he would have been in a worse condition. Naruto said to stay away from the word fat. Shikamaru looked a little distraught. Thanks. Shikamaru said. Naruto looked at him once and started heading for the stairs. Come on, we're in the way of the next fight. Naruto said. Shikamaru started to follow behind Naruto. They both took a seat near the stairs and were going to watch the next match. Meanwhile on the other side of the balcony, Asuma tries to lighten the tension. Well I guess I automatically lose the bet, huh? Asuma said as he lit a cigarette. The rest of the Jounin briefly looked at Asuma before turning back towards Hei to see who was the next competitor. Hei pulled out two more slips and announced who were on the slips. Rock Lee vs. Ichiha Sasuke. He said. Guy and Kakashi looked at each other and then at their students. Lee and Sasuke also looked at each other. Naruto started to laugh. What's so funny? Shikamaru asked. Naruto looked at Shikamaru and told him through laughter. Sasuke is going to lose. And that means Kakashi loses just like Asuma. Naruto said as his laughter died down. How do you know that Sasuke is going to lose? Shikamaru asked. Sasuke lost to this guy before. Naruto said offhandedly. Shikamaru looked back at the ring and then back at Naruto. Maybe he's stronger than when they last fought. Shikamaru said tiredly. In five days. Naruto asked. Naruto's statement shut Shikamaru up immediately. They both looked back at the ring where Sasuke and Lee were getting ready to fight. Sasuke and Lee were facing each other ready for the fight that was about to happen. Hey I'll show that dope how to fight. Sasuke thought in his head as hate started the match. Sasuke automatically activated his Sharingan. Lee charged Sasuke and performed his Konoha Senpyu. Too predictable. Sasuke thought as he ducked down and attempted to sweep Lee's feet as he landed. However when Lee landed he saw Sasuke's attempt at a sweep, so he did a backflip thoroughly kicking Sasuke in the chin doing so. Sasuke was hit back and when Lee landed he rushed Sasuke again. Sasuke was a bit woozy after the hit, so when he stood up he failed to notice that Lee was attacking until he was kicked up in the air. He fell for the same exact move as last time. Naruto thought. Lee then used his cage Konoha Bayou and appeared behind the disorientated flying Sasuke. Hard work does prevail over genius. Lee thought excitedly as his bandages started to unravel and encircle Sasuke. Oh, Lee is going to be punished early. Guy said in a low tone so only Kakashi and the ever-listening Naruto could hear. Well my rival looks like you will lose alongside Asuma. Guy said proudly. After Lee's bandages surrounded Sasuke, Lee pulled him down towards the ground and started spinning wildly. As they grew near the ground Lee led up and Sasuke hit the ground with tremendous force while Lee just jumped aside as to not get hurt. Everyone looked at the crater left behind by Lee's attack to see an unconscious Sasuke laying in the center. Hey, it walked over and checked Sasuke. When he was sure of the outcome he stood and stated, it's just Sasuke is unable to continue. Rock Lee wins. Kakashi looked a little disappointed while Naruto looked indifferent. He has a long way to go. Naruto said to no one in particular. Shikamaru looked at him briefly before looking back to the arena. What happened to you? Shikamaru asked a little concern evident from the lazy genin. 
Naruto let out a small sigh, but didn't look away from the still form of Sasuke being carried away by medics. I grew up. No one cared about me, so why should I care about them? Naruto said softly. Shikamaru didn't want to believe what Naruto had said. If that were true then you wouldn't have done anything when Chaoji was thrown by that sand guru. Shikamaru said, fixing his gaze on Hade as he pulled out another two pieces of paper. I was actually thinking I could set things as right as they should be. I don't want anyone to think I'm immoral, and when I saw your worry I just did what I should have. Naruto said. Shikamaru turned his gaze over to Naruto who had a downtrodden look on his face. Shikamaru let a sigh pass through his lips as he looked back at the ring to see Akamaru and Kiba getting in attack positions, while Niji stood there nonchalantly. Naruto, when I was younger I was just as lazy as I am now. I didn't have any friends I didn't really want any. I was fine by myself, and I probably would have had a messed up life had I been as alone as I wanted to. Shikamaru said not even looking at Naruto. Naruto however was looking right at Shikamaru while the lazy ninja was giving his words of wisdom. One day some of the kids were playing ninja like they usually did. I was just wandering by, but when I saw the numbers it looked uneven. I usually saw them playing while I was just lying around and always saw one kid who no one liked playing with. So when I was passing by that day I knew they wouldn't let him play because of the numbers, so I joined so he could play as well. Shikamaru sat and would have continued if Naruto didn't interrupt him. When they picked teams they didn't pick the boy that you had wanted to play. Saying that no matter whose team he was on he would be at a disadvantage, right? Naruto asked. Shikamaru was confused, he was looking at nothing but Naruto at that moment. How did you know? Shikamaru asked with disbelief. Chaoji was usually too slow, and when he went to hide he was usually caught, and so would the person Chaoji was trying to catch up with. So they didn't like playing with him. Then the day that you were talking about a large group was there and they didn't want their big game ruined. After the game started you didn't want to play since the only reason you started had been denied. You do know no one realized you left the game so it ended in a draw. Naruto said with a small smirk. You were watching it then? Shikamaru asked. Naruto gave a small nod with a saddened look on his face. I was like Chaoji except the parents didn't want me playing so they would always push me away. Naruto was saddened immensely. So what were you getting at before I interrupted? Naruto asked. After I left I found Chaoji. We sat on a bench eating his snacks while watching the clouds. It was the first time I had been happy in the longest time. Chaoji and I have been friends since and no matter what happens we will be happy just because we each have at least one friend waiting somewhere. Shikamaru finished and looked back in the ring just in time to see two kids hit by Niji with an open palm strike to their chest. Naruto thought very clearly on what was just said to him. Thank you Shikamaru. That made me feel a lot better. I could only wish for a friendship like you and Chaoji have. Naruto said. Shikamaru let himself smile before he talked some more. You know I'm sure Chaoji wouldn't mind having another friend, especially one that had saved him from being slammed into the ground. Shikamaru said. Naruto smiled. Yeah, thanks, that would be great. Naruto said. Of course neither of them had noticed that they were being listened to by someone. I wish I could have talked to Naruto come like Shikamaru sanded. Little Hinata thought. On the other side of the balcony there was a conversation going on between the Jounins. I have beaten my eternal rival once again. Guy exclaimed. Lee pumped a fist into the air to acknowledge his teacher's statement. Yeah yeah so how does this work you each can have a suma and I do anything you want? Kakashi asked. Kurinai gave a nod and had a very wicked gleam in her eye that was completely scary. Asuma and Kakashi sweat dropped and wondered what they had gotten themselves into. Okay then it's settled Asuma you're going to take me out to dinner. Kurinai said. So is this your normal way for getting dates? Asuma said with a chuckle as he put a cigarette in his mouth. Kurinai however didn't even consider it a date until Asuma said something. Actually this is how I get an expensive meal for free. Kurinai said with a wicked smile. Asuma's jaw went slack and his cigarette fell out of his mouth. Hayate had chosen that time to pull the last pieces of paper out of his pocket and announce the competitors. Gara vs Akua Pumi. Hayate said. Gara let his sand swirl around him and he disappeared and reappeared on the ground. Zaku jumped down and stood in front of Gara. Begin. Hayate yelled as he backed away. Zaku took no time to thrust his arms in front of him, ready to activate his technique. Zanku. Zaku yelled as a burst of wind shot out of his hands towards Gara. Tamari looked on and was trying her hardest not to laugh at Zaku's attempt at hurting her brother. After the dust cleared Zaku saw Gara in the exact same spot unmoved. Zaku was a little pissed and decided to kick it up a notch. Zankakyaku. And a huge blast was shot out of Zaku's hands. The leaf ninjas had to jump away again as the blast destroyed the rest of their balcony. When the dust cleared once more Gara still stood in the same place unmoved and the leaf ninjas were now on the arena level standing in various places against the wall. Your attacks are too weak. Gara said. Zaku was enraged so he attacked head-on, which was the stupidest thing to do. 
When he went to punch Gara, sand swirled around him and caught Zaku in a vice grip. Zaku was stunned as the sand started to encase him. What are you doing? Release me. Zaku yelled. It was too late Gara completely encased Zaku. Zabaku Kayu. Gara exclaimed as Zaku was completely engulfed. Gara looked at Orochimaru as he announced his next attack. Sabaku Sausu. The sand caved in on Zaku with huge amounts of pressure. Zaku screamed for just a second before blood flew out of the sand tomb of Zaku. Everyone looked astonished at how easy it was for Gara to kill Zaku, but nonetheless Hade announced the victor. Winner Gara. Hade said. The Hokage and Anko hopped down from their spots on the semi-destroyed balcony and stood where the statue used to be. Well now this was a very interesting preliminary match, and I hope that it will be just as exciting in the main matches. The Hokage said mainly looking at the kneeling form of Naruto and the still form of Gara. You have no idea, old man. Orochimaru thought as he left the arena with a fake scowl. Naruto's sense of smell kicked in as Orochimaru was leaving. He's the snake. Naruto thought of Kaiubi. You should do something. Kaiubi said. Naruto not so casually pulled out his remaining throwing knife and threw it at Orochimaru. Everyone in the room was shocked at Naruto's actions. Orochimaru was not one to be caught off guard, so he whirled around and caught the blade by the handle. I'm guessing that it blows up when the blade touches something. Orochimaru said with a slight chuckle. His hand then started to burn and he winced. He looked down at the blade then back at Naruto. You're a smart one aren't you? You were the only to figure out who I was. Orochimaru said as he pulled off his current face, showing that he was in fact Orochimaru. Naruto was worried. Orochimaru had a Kaiubi enhanced weapon and could take out everyone in the room if he aimed it correctly. Well now the prelims were quite entertaining, but I must go. I thank you Naruto-kun, now I don't have to go through all the trouble in stealing this from you. Orochimaru said with a huge chuckle as he melted in the ground before anyone in the room could act. Everyone cursed for not noticing that it was Orochimaru. Naruto was the most pissed. Not for losing his weapon, but for not being strong enough to stop Orochimaru. Anko, Kakashi, and Guy try to stop him before he escapes. The Hokage ordered. He then looked at Naruto. Can he replicate that weapon? He asked Naruto. No. It is designed to destroy itself if anyone attempts to search for its secrets. And even if he does figure it out, it would only be as strong as a kunai with an explosive note attached. Naruto said not lifting his gaze from where Orochimaru left from. Tenten trying to figure out what was going on and being the weapons expert noticed a very big difference to what Naruto said. This crater couldn't be made by a normal explosive note. Tenten said, pointing at the crater made by Naruto's Kaiubified knife. Those were an experiment and the process can only be replicated by someone of my unique blood. Naruto said making sure the Hokage got the hint. He did and the Hokage cleared his throat to get the genin's attention. Okay. The Orochimaru problem is being handled now as for the main matches they will be in one month and in order to know who will be fighting who, you all will draw lots. So will the winners please stand in a line so we can see who will fight who. The Hokage announced. Everyone did as they were told and all drew lots and the Hokage announced who would fight who. They're in order so the first name would be the person who picked one and so on, just in case you were wondering. Aburam Shino vs Kankuro, Tamari vs Nara Shikamaru, Hayuga Hinata vs Hayuga Niji, this last match made Niji smile and made Hinata cringe. Naruto noticed both responses and took note of them. Rock Lee vs Gara and Naruto you will face the winner of that match. Naruto nodded as the Hokage finished. Now I suggest everyone train for the finals and it would be wise to make sure that you are well healed for the exam. He said the last part was mainly towards Naruto. You are dismissed. And everyone started to leave in their own directions. It was at that time that Naruto fell unconscious from blood loss and pain. Chapter 8. Increasing problems. Everyone saw Naruto collapse, some were worried some were not. The Hokage rushed to Naruto to make sure that he was okay. After checking Naruto's vitals he signaled Hei to get medics immediately. Hinata was scared, she was worried that Naruto was physically unstable, especially since she knew something was wrong with his chakra coils. The medics arrived shortly to see Naruto collapsed on the ground leaking blood from various wounds, some severe and some not. They made a quick check and closed off the more damaging wounds so that he wouldn't die of blood loss, however, as soon as the more serious wounds were healed, Naruto's hand went right to his forehead and he groaned. What happened? Naruto is confused about seeing medics hovering over him. Everyone's sweat dropped. You passed out, idiot. Kenkuro said as he and his siblings left. Naruto looked down at himself and noticed that his more serious wounds had been healed somewhat and they were healing better because of his natural healing abilities from Kaiubi. The medics done with their job decided to leave. The Hokage and Shikamaru helped Naruto up. I want you to go to the hospital immediately, understood. The Hokage stated. Naruto nodded as everyone else left the room with Naruto trailing a little. Naruto started to go to the hospital because he knew that if he didn't the Hokage would probably force him. 
because of his various injuries that he had he was a bit unsteady. All the other rookie Genins were also heading to the hospital to check themselves up or to make sure that their teammates were okay. All the Jounins left to go make sure that Orochimaru was found. They all knew that he was probably out of Konoha already. Naruto was trailing behind because of his various injuries, while Shikamaru and Ino stayed behind with him to make sure that he got there without. Gara, Tamari, and Kankuro had already left for their apartment with Baki. Shino and Hinata were walking ahead of Naruto, Shikamaru, and Ino, but they were walking at a nice slow pace, so they were only a few feet ahead of them. Ino and Shikamaru were talking with Naruto, while Hinata and Shino were eavesdropping on them. Are you sure you'll be alright? Ino asked Naruto. Yeah. I just need some rest and a little medical help, otherwise I'll be good in about a week. Naruto said. Ino and Shikamaru had doubts about that, but left it alone. So are you guys checking on Choji? Naruto asked. Yeah, and Sakura. Said Shikamaru and nodded in Ino's direction. Ino had a faraway look on her. Naruto looked forward towards Hinata and Shino who had been quiet. And you guys are probably going to check on Kiba, right? Naruto asked Hinata and Shino. Hinata and Shino stopped dead and looked at Naruto. Hinata dropped her head to hide her blush. Yes. He is our teammate after all. However Hinata also wanted to talk to you about something. Shino said. Naruto, Shikamaru, and Ino looked over at Hinata. Hinata however looked shocked that Shino had said that. Shino started to walk towards the hospital again. Ino and Shikamaru continued moving as well to give Hinata and Naruto their privacy. So what is it you wanted to talk about? Naruto asked. Hinata wanted to talk about a lot of things. She had so much to ask and she had a lot to tell him. But she could never, one thing did come to her that she really did want to know. I saw your inner coils and the damage done to them. Hinata said in a low tone, stumbling on a few words. Naruto looked at her briefly before figuring it was because of her eyes. He remembered when the Hokage had all the other Hayuga use it to see if it was really him. Now Hinata had seen his problem and now he needed to reassure her so she wouldn't tell anyone else. I'll be fine Hinata. My new sensei told me that he knew a lot about medical stuff so he should be able to fix me up. Naruto said. I don't remember ever saying that I knew a lot about medical procedures. Kaiubi said to Naruto. I had to say something. Naruto said to Kaiubi. Kaiubi scoffed but remained quiet. Hinata was unsure if she should believe him, but something was telling her that he would be fine. Naruto saw that Hinata was a little unsure and Hinata saw that Naruto was looking right at her, so she blushed and turned her head away from him. Hinata I'll be fine, you don't have to worry. Naruto said and started to walk past her to the hospital. Hinata started to walk behind Naruto and she was thinking about Naruto's massive injury, I wonder how he got it. Hinata whispered to herself. In the forest myself, Sakura and that bastard Sasuke came across this really strong opponent. Hinata was shocked that Naruto had started to answer her question which she thought he didn't hear. While Naruto was talking he slowed his pace so he was walking beside Hinata. He wanted to tell somebody what happened and since Hinata already knew he might as well tell her. He was the one who stole my throwing knife. Hinata had a thought and said it aloud accidentally. The legendary Sanin, Arachimaru. Hinata said originally it was meant to be to herself, but with Naruto's hearing he heard and looked at her questioningly. Hinata saw Naruto's expression and blushed at the attention. He's one of the legendary Sanin like Jiraiya-sama and Sanadi Haim. Hinata said in a low tone. Why do you announce only two of them with respect? Naruto asked, confused. Arachimaru betrayed Konoha when he wasn't chosen to be Yandame. Hinata said sadly. Naruto drooped his head prepared to finish his explanation. Well in the forest he tried doing an attack on Sasuke, but I jumped in between them and took the hit myself which put a seal on my neck. And then we fought. After a while of us fighting he put another seal on me that was meant to disrupt my chakra control. I was knocked out and when I woke up the seals all screwed up in their original duties due to the effects of the seals. The seals were forcefully removed from me due to the fact that they were cancelling each other out. Since they were attached to my chakra coils in important places they caused problems. I didn't find out until I got to the tower and I had used my chakra before we got there which caused a problem to accelerate the destruction. Naruto said purposely leaving out anything about Kaiubi. Hinata understood his explanation and let it be. They continued to walk in silence until they reached the hospital. The group had waited for Hinata and Naruto at the receptionist's desk, they had already found out where their friends were located and Shikamaru had already registered Naruto to get fixed up. There weren't any problems as all the teams were in a large hospital room that could fit six patients and a large number of visitors. So Naruto was also put into the same room as the rest of them to get his wounds fixed. They all walked together to the room but remained silent thinking of what they would say to their friends. When they got to the room it had Sakura, Sasuke and Choji on one side and Kiba on the other. They were all still resting. By the bed next to Kiba was a nurse waiting for Naruto. Hinata and Shino sat in the two chairs next to Kiba. Shikamaru and Ino sat in the two chairs in between Choji and Sakura. 
and Naruto laid down on his bed after removing his vest and his weapons. The nurse checked his various injuries and then she removed his bandages around his abdomen, revealing a very visible seal, as well as the hole from the shuriken that Orochimaru hit him with. Everyone who was conscious saw Naruto's abdomen which was given a couple of blushes and four wandering eyes. Naruto didn't even gaze at the four looking at him as he kept his eyes on the nurse's hands as she closed up his wounds with her chakra. After she was done she checked his heart rate and then his temperature. After she was done she scribbled something on his medical chart and left it at the end of his bed and left. Naruto re-administered his bandages to his abdomen to get rid of the eight eyes that were watching him. Inada was confused, Naruto had told her not ten minutes ago that the seals cancelled each other out. Naruto didn't say anything about a third seal. Hinata thought it hurt a bit that Naruto hadn't told her everything. Maybe I can ask him about that. But he may get mad at me for prying. Hinata thought as she looked down at Kiba. Everyone else was confused about the seal also, but they had no knowledge about anything about it and decided that if he wanted to tell them that he would. So when are you guys gonna start training? Naruto asked as he finished administering his bandages. Ino looked downtrodden since she wouldn't be able to participate in this conversation. I was gonna start as soon as I talked to Kiba. Shino said first. TCH. Training is troublesome. I'll probably start tomorrow. Shikamaru said. Everyone looked towards Hinata. She felt their gazes on her and she blushed. I don't know when I'm going to start. I don't have anyone to train with. Hinata said quietly. When are you going to start training Naruto? Shino asked. Naruto looked at him briefly and then looked up at the ceiling. As soon as the doctor says I can go. Naruto said. Everyone looked at him surprised but didn't comment on it. After a half an hour the four unconscious people started to stir. Naruto and Shikamaru were entertaining themselves with a few games of shogi which Naruto kept losing, but only by a small margin. Once they noticed that everyone was up, Naruto forfeited. They were all a bit groggy waking up from being unconscious due to being knocked out. They didn't even have a chance to sit up before the doctor came in and grabbed all their charts and looked at them thoroughly. When the four bedridden Genin finally were able to understand what they saw they all sent questioning glances about the room. Hmm, well now this Chuanin exam must have been rough. The doctor said getting everyone's attention. Let's see here Akamichi Chaoji, you have suffered mild back trauma and will be fighting fit in a couple of days. Next we have Miss Haruno Sakura and then everyone saw a cloud of smoke appear in the room and when the smoke cleared the three Jounin instructors were there. Aw, oh, you must be the instructors. They all gave a nod and went to their respective students. I just announced Chaoji Kun will be fit in a couple of days. And was about to announce young Haruno's condition. The Jounins nodded again, understanding that they were caught up. Okay Miss Haruno, you were hit with a gentle fist attack and you will need to let your coils rejuvenate themselves and are thus bedridden until further notice. The doctor said. Hinata cast her head down so as to not show her ashamed face. Ichiha Sasuke, you have had severe head trauma and your upper back and collarbone have been mildly damaged. Your back and collarbone should be fine in about three days, however because of the head trauma you received a concussion, so we need you to remain where you are for about a week. The doctor said, Sasuke was pissed and Sakura was worried, yet happy. She was going to be able to spend a while with her Sasuke-kun in the same room. The doctor turned and faced Kiba. In Yuzuka Kiba you are in the same boat as young Hirano and are thus bedridden until otherwise noted. And also your dog is being tended by your sister and she will bring him by later when she gets him fixed up. The doctor said, Kiba gave a worried nod. The doctor then turned to Naruto. He looked at his chart three or four times and then looked at Naruto. Well doc. Naruto asked impatiently. Everyone in the room looked curious about how long he would be staying if they all had to stay in there for a good few days. Do you feel any pain in your abdominal area? The doctor asked. Naruto touched his stomach and then turned a little left, then right then he bent forward. No, it feels fine. Naruto said. The doctor marked something on the chart and continued. How about your right arm and left leg? The doctor asked Naruto to check his arm and leg by moving them in different ways. They feel fine. Naruto said. The doctor marked a few more things on the chart and then he wrote something on the bottom of the chart. Which one of you is his sensei? The doctor asked. Everyone was wondering what was going on. None of them had been asked those questions and none of their senseis were needed. Kakashi stood up and walked over to the doctor. That would be me. Kakashi told the doctor in a worried tone. The doctor handed Kakashi the chart and pointed to an area of it. Sign here. The doctor said in a calm tone. Kakashi did as he was told and handed the chart back. Would I sign it? Kakashi asked. Oh, Naruto-kun doesn't have a guardian, so I needed his sensei's signature for his release forms. Everyone had looks of either amusement, curiosity, jealousy, admiration, shock, or in Sasuke's case, the most pissed off expression he has ever had. You mean he gets to leave right away after what happened to him in that fight, well the rest of us were hit only once and we are in here for undefined amounts of time. 
Sasuke said, obviously pissed beyond belief. Yes, young Naruto-kun's injuries were mostly superficial and were well enough for him to move freely. And since the bones that were broken were set quick enough the nurse was able to mend them perfectly. Naruto-kun has a clean bill of health and as long as he keeps a good diet and exercises right, he'll be at full strength in about two or so days. Until then he is fine to do whatever he was able to do before his fight, he just needs to be sure to not overexert himself. The doctor said, most of the group understood what he said minus Kiba, Ino, and Chaoji. The doctor left after his explanation and left the group to talk amongst themselves. Well then there is a meeting that us Jounin have to attend so we must get going. Kakashi said. Also Sasuke, as soon as you're released we have some training to do. He said and disappeared. Kurinai looked back at her students. Make sure you practice hard and good luck. She said before she disappeared. Asuma was the only Jounin left. He took a puff from his cigarette and then disappeared. And there the Jenin sat in silence, no one knowing what to say. Sasuke and Kiba were pissed, Sakura and Ino were sad, Shino was expressionless, Chaoji was eating, Shikamaru was bored, Hinata was embarrassed, and Naruto was relaxing before he had to go do whatever it is that Kaiubi had in store for him. Nobody knew what to say to anyone, so the atmosphere was just too tense to do anything. Ah oh, no, I'm sorry to ask, but who won in their matches? Sakura asked. Sasuke and Kiba became more pissed than what they were. Among us, you lost to Hinata, Shikamaru said. Sakura looked ashamed for being weak. I beat the girl from Sound, Shino beat the girl from the only other Kanoha team besides ours, Ino lost to that weird looking guy from Sand, he said vaguely as he didn't really pay attention to the people's names. Ino looked ashamed as well. Naruto killed his opponent from Sound, the guy with that weapon on his arm, Sakura was confused and perturbed. She had never thought that Naruto could kill anyone. Chaoji lost to the girl from Sand, Sasuke lost to the green spandex guy, and Kiba lost to the high Uga from that spandex guy's team. If Sasuke could move he would have attacked Shikamaru right then and there for mentioning such a thing. Sakura was surprised that not only did Naruto kill his opponent, but Sasuke lost. The room was very tense again until the nurse came back in. I'm sorry but unless the doctor said otherwise you have to go. The nurse said and stepped out of the doorway so the genin could leave. Naruto hopped out of his bed, grabbed his stuff, and left, while the others said goodbye to who they were visiting and left also. Ino and Shikamaru left and went to get something to eat, Hinata went to go talk to her dad, Shino went home also to talk to his father, and Naruto went into the forest. Naruto was spotted going into the forest by Hiashi. Hiashi thought it prudent to follow him there to see what the young fox carrier was doing. The Hokage also saw Naruto go into the forest, and he too followed after to make sure everything was fine. With the ninja abilities that they developed after their many years of practice they went unnoticed by Naruto. Naruto walked far away from the village somewhere where no one would hear nor find him. When he stopped his two pursuers stopped as well. It was then that they realized that they each were there. Hiashi hopped over to the Hokage. Hello, Hokage-sama. Hiashi said in a hushed tone. The Hokage nodded, showing that he acknowledged Hiashi. Do you know why he came out here? The Hokage said in an equally hushed tone. Hiashi shook his head and they looked back down at Naruto. Maybe he just came to train and didn't want anyone to watch. Hiashi agreed, then he saw something in the distance. He was surprised at what he saw. It was a gopher doing pelvic thrusts getting the attention of a female dog. It was probably the most disturbing sight he had ever seen. His gaze was broken however when Naruto fell to the ground yelling in agony. Naruto had just arrived at a good place to start whatever it is he was going to do. He looked around the area to make sure he was alone. When he was sure he was alone he started his communication with Kaiubi. Okay kid this is what's going to happen. And you better listen well. This will be extremely painful and will last around five to six days. Kaiubi said. Naruto nodded, making sure he understood everything that was going to happen. What I'm going to be doing is removing your chakra coils and using my chakra as a temporary replacement coil. Naruto understood very little of what Kaiubi just said, but figured if it helped he wouldn't complain. Kaiubi, knowing Naruto didn't understand, tried to explain it. Since your healing abilities have advanced, your healing abilities will try and heal the missing coil. However healing a missing coil is impossible because you would die even if a small segment of coil was missing. Naruto not liking the idea of dying gulped. Kaiubi continued, you shouldn't be afraid. I'll be using my chakra as a substitute. Your healing abilities then will format my chakra into a new coil, instead of trying to make a new one from scratch. In using my chakra as a replacement your coils will become stronger. They will also become adaptable. Meaning if something like this happens again your body will sustain the damage, but will heal faster and make the coils impervious to the same attack. It will also have more positive effects, but we will talk about those later since you need the time to train after the procedure. Very well. Naruto said. Let's get this over with. 
And with that Kairubi started his reconstruction of Naruto's chakra coils. As soon as he destroyed one of Naruto's chakra coils, Naruto fell to the ground yelling in pain. The Ashi and the Hokage were worried. They glanced around the area for any enemy that could possibly cause Naruto to drop to the ground in pain. When they could not find anyone other than themselves and Naruto they carefully looked at Naruto. Hiashi activated his Byakugan to see if anything was wrong with his insides. What he saw troubled him greatly. He turned to the Hokage to announce his findings. Something's wrong with his inner coils. Hiashi explained. The Hokage urged him to continue. Key spots in his system are damaged beyond repair and a section has been replaced by pure chakra. Hiashi said, his statement confusing even himself. He could not understand how Naruto was still alive after a section of his chakra coils was removed. So he was hiding something from us. The Hokage said. Hiashi looked away from Naruto to give the Hokage a questioning glance. What do you mean? Hiashi asked. The Hokage never took his eyes off the screaming boy. He fraud against Orochimaru during the Chunin exams. The Hokage exclaimed. Hiashi tensed a little. Orochimaru had tried to give Ichiha Sasuke the curse seal. Naruto had stepped in the way so as to protect Sasuke. In doing so he received the seal instead. He said that the fox's seal had cancelled out the curse seal without consequence. The Hokage said. The Ashi hung his head knowing exactly what could happen when one of those seals were forcefully removed. Naruto you are lucky. He Ashi thought. This village has done a terrible thing. The Hokage said out of nowhere. He Ashi gave his questioning glance to the Hokage, urging him to continue. It's a terrible thing when he couldn't trust me enough to tell me about his injury. I think his trust for people is deteriorating because of how the villagers treat him. The Hokage said solemnly. The Ashi hung his head. Feeling very uncomfortable by this conversation. He could do nothing to help Naruto due to his duty to his clan, but he had done the same thing the villagers did to Naruto to his daughter. He was feeling really guilty at that point. Do you think there's any way to save him? He Ashi asked, referring to both Hinata and Naruto. It will be hard for Naruto, he has no one to love. What the Hokage said brought Hiashi's spirits down. However I'm pretty sure that with some love you can save your daughter from Naruto's fate. Hiashi's head was hung. If only it were possible. I'm using all my power as clan head just to stall the council in giving her the Bunky Junjutsu. It's only a matter of time before they overthrow me and force it. Hiashi said somberly. If there is anything that you need from me, I'll help as long as I can. The Hokage said. There is nothing you can do. I've tried to find a way to just stop the Bunky Junjutsu from being placed in the first place, but the council forbids it. They want to keep their superiority and they know no one can stop them. Hiashi said. Then he backtracked in his mind something in the Hokage's last statement that was out of place. What did you mean as long as I can? Hiashi asked. I, along with Naruto, am losing trust in people. There was a sound spy among the leaf genin in the exam. Surely Orochimaru would have died if he wasn't there. The Hokage said. Hiashi understood the meaning in the Hokage's words. I understand. When things get the way they are going it starts to get hard to trust people. Hiashi said calmly. Don't misunderstand Hiashi. You will always be someone I trust. You have always stood by my decisions and I greatly appreciate that. The Hokage said. Hiashi looked grateful. Orochimaru is planning something. He has had spies in Kanoha for an undetermined amount of time. No matter what he plans to do I want to make sure that Kanoha would be safe. If anything happens to me I want you to take up the position of Hokage. The Hokage said in a seriously dire tone. I'm honored that you have chosen myself to succeed you, but with my duty to my clan, I can't take the position. Hiashi said. Well then can I request that you take the position as a temporary successor until the council finds someone else suitable. The Hokage asked. Hiashi looked torn. I will honor your request. But I don't think we will have to worry about you still having at least 10 years in you. Hiashi said. The Hokage tore his eyes from Naruto for the first time and this time to properly thank Hiashi. Thank you. The Hokage said. And then he turned back to the young Uzumaki. Naruto hadn't moved an inch since this started. He was on his hands and knees breathing through clenched teeth. His entire body felt as though it were on fire. What are we going to do about Naruto? Hiashi asked. The Hokage looked at the boy carefully. By the way you explained it even if he did tell us there would be nothing we could do. And as such there is nothing we can do now. This is something that he must endure himself. The Hokage said. I understand, but if what you said is true about him almost killing Orochimaru and Naruto, would probably be determined as a threat to whatever plans he has. As such in a place like this and the condition he is in he is an easy target to be picked off. And we both have our duties to consider so we can't stay ourselves. Hiashi said. The Hokage took this into consideration. I will also ask you trust enough to ensure Naruto's safety. Hiashi added. There are obviously more who hate him than there are who can at least tolerate him. 
Had he given me fair warning before he went out and did this, I would have been able to deal with that question sooner. The Hokage said. I had someone in mind to make sure Naruto was safe, but I couldn't find him. The Hokage said. Just then Naruto stood up and ran at a tree at a tremendous amount of speed. Hiashi and the Hokage were surprised that Naruto had just rushed a tree spontaneously. Naruto punched the tree as hard as he could causing a few pieces of bark to fly off. Naruto continuously punched the tree increasing with power after each hit. Tears were forming at the corner of his eyes and he was gritting his teeth to keep himself from screaming in pain. Hiashi and the Hokage couldn't imagine the pain Naruto must have been in to have him doing what he was doing. Konohamaru Core, Ibisu was helping Konohamaru and his friends along with Hanabi with their chakra control. It was pretty difficult for him because their chakra levels were only high enough to reach the top once. If they could reach the top. Konohamaru had gotten better along with Mogi and Yudin. Hanabi had been learning a different control exercise since she was already proficient with tree climbing. She was also now proficient with water walking. It had taken her two tries to actually get the concept down. Now Ibisu was having her just stand in one place to ensure she would master it. Ibisu was really proud of his four temporary students. He was sure as soon as Konohimaru's group had enough chakra they would be able to join Hanabi on the water. He thought it was weird that the Hokage promoted the teaching of Genin and Chunin level skills to academy students, but he wasn't one to complain about the Hokage's decisions. Hanabi was really bored. She was a patient person by nature and thus she could remain in one place for a long time, but that didn't mean she didn't get bored. She looked over and saw Konohimaru running up a tree again. It had been about 10 days since he started and he had shown great improvement. She really wanted him to be able to do what she was doing so she could at least have someone to talk to while she was just standing on top of the water. Suddenly she felt a presence appear right behind her. She quickly turned around ready to enter combat when she finally saw who it was. Ibisu turned around to see how Hanabi was doing when he saw a man with white hair right in front of Hanabi. He cursed his inability to not notice the man before it was too late. If Hanabi were to be kidnapped he would feel the guilt that came with it. He rushed over to Hanabi hoping that he could get there before anything bad happened. The old man noticed Ibisu and just waved him off as he looked right back at Hanabi. Ibisu was no more than three feet from Hanabi when a tongue came out of nowhere and grabbed his leg. Ibisu was swung head first onto a platform next to where Hanabi was training. He was knocked out leaving Hanabi to fend off against this old man. Hmm. I didn't know Hayuga children trained outside of the Hayuga household unless they were ranked as a ninja. The old man said. Hanabi had been using a vast amount of chakra, so she knew she couldn't fight this guy that just arrived right in front of her. Konohimaru came down from the tree along with Yudin and Mogi. They were very happy because they had just made it to the top of the tree and they were going to go see if Hanabi was doing alright with her training. That's when they saw their sensei knocked out and an old man right in front of Hanabi. Konohimaru was not about to stand by and allow this at all. Hey. What do you think you're doing to Hanabi-chan? Konohimaru yelled. The old man looked over to see who had yelled at him and saw three kids with goggles. Two of which were slightly hiding behind the one that yelled. Hanabi was surprised that Konohimaru had called her Hanabi-chan. The ho ho. So young yet the romance is there. Well then young lad I won't do anything to her, but what would you have done if I had? The old man asked with a small glint of respect in his eyes. I would have defeated you using our leader's ultimate Konohimaru said proudly. The old man was interested in what Kanoha had been doing since he was gone in order for these kids to be good, let alone think they could beat someone that looked like him. You think your leaders could beat me? I am Mount Mayabokugama's holy senin also known as the Toad Senin, Jiraiya. Jiraiya said proudly as he took a ridiculous looking stance. All the children's sweat dropped. Hanabi had spent enough time on the water and she was starting to lose control. She went back over to where Kanohamaru was. Ha! Our leader is super strong. Kanohamaru said all knowingly. Jiraiya just smirked. Show me then. The power of some kid. Jiraiya said in a daring tone. Fine you asked for it. Konohimaru said and looked at his comrades. You guys might want to look away. Konohimaru said only they could hear. They all nodded and turned around. Then Konohimaru looked back at Jiraiya. Here it goes. No yelled Konohimaru as he turned into a very attractive and very naked woman. Jiraiya's eyes opened wide and a small trail of blood came rolling out of his nose. He ran up to Konohimaru and started checking him out at every angle. Wow. This is really good. Your leader is a real genius. This is truly inspirational. Jiraiya said as he pulled out a notebook and started scribbling things in it. Konohimaru sweat dropped and turned into his normal form. Pervert. Konohimaru yelled a little too loudly. The other children turned around just in time to see about 20 women in towels run out of the hot spring, trample Ibisu and beat Jiraiya senseless. Being trampled fully awakened Ibisu right after the women left. He saw Jiraiya laying on the ground right in front of Konohimaru. Konohimaru-sama, did you do that? 
Ibisu asked curiously, pointing to Jiraiya. I helped. Konohamaru said. Jiraiya stood up with a sour face. That was when Ibisu actually noticed who it was. Jiraiya-sama. Ibisu said. Jiraiya looked over at Ibisu. Hokage-sama needs to speak with you at once. Ibisu said in a very serious tone. Jiraiya caught the seriousness in his tone and knew it was massively important. Children I'm sorry, but I have some important business to attend to with Jiraiya-sama. You're free for the rest of the day. Ibisu said, and then he and Jiraiya left to go find the Hokage. The children looked bewildered, but they got the day off, and they had intended to use it. The rest of the genin, everyone else had gone off to where they had intended to in order to train or seek training. Shikamaru was laying on a hill just watching the clouds drift by, Ino was at her family flower shop, Shino was in a clearing doing god knows what, Sasuke, Sakura, Chaoji, and Kiba were laying in their hospital beds, thinking to themselves on a variety of topics, Anada was at the Hyuga estate waiting for her father to return so she could talk to him, Niji was in the forest training in the Hyuga fighting style, Tenten was watching her teammate train and helping whenever she was asked, Lee was also in the forest training using unorthodox ways, the sand siblings were sitting around waiting, and Naruto was in the middle of the forest in some large amounts of pain. He was currently putting as much effort as possible to make a poor defenseless tree feel the same way he was feeling. The tree had by now gotten the makings of a possibly nice crater. After two hours of the pain he was enduring, Naruto idly wondered how long he could last. At one point within the two hours Naruto had switched from tree attacking to ground destruction. There was a fair amount of damage from only two hours of just punching anything around as to relieve any tension and to take his mind off of his body's condition. Hiashi and the Hokage hadn't left, they couldn't. They themselves didn't want some unforeseen event to happen that would put Naruto in danger. At some points they wondered if they were more worried about Naruto or the person that interrupted his destruction. They both felt two presences behind them and they turned swiftly to face the intruders. Jiraiya and Ibisu had searched through the entire village until Jiraiya had found three trails that he could tell at least one was the Hokage's. Jiraiya had followed them until he reached the Hokage and Hiashi in a secluded part of the forest. He looked past them to see a young boy destroying the area. Welcome Jiraiya-sama. Hiashi said calmly. Jiraiya took note that the boy was a Konoha ninja by the insignia on his belt. Jiraiya idly wondered why the two highest figures of Konoha were watching a boy destroy a small area. What's going on? Jiraiya asked not to take his eyes off of the boy. I needed to ask you a favor. The Hokage said. Jiraiya looked at the Hokage incredulously. The Hokage continued, this boy just so happens to be the boy that the Yandame sealed the Kaiubi into. The Hokage said. Jiraiya looked at the Hokage before he looked back at Naruto. What's going on then? Jiraiya asked. The Hokage looked at Hiashi to explain the situation. Well of what we can tell the boy came across Orochimaru during the Chunin exams. Hiashi said, looking at Naruto, not Jiraiya. Jiraiya flinched at the mention of Orochimaru's name. Naruto fraud him but was inflicted with the curse seal in the process. Jiraiya was now concerned at the mention of the curse seal. Of what he told Hokage-sama the seal was removed due to the seal placed by the Yandame. Jiraiya looked slightly relieved but knew that there was more to come. When we followed him here he started to be in some kind of pain. I used my Byakugan to see what was wrong. Of what I could tell when the curse seal was forcefully removed, it caused some damage to his chakra coils. And then a section was removed and was replaced with pure chakra. Hiashi said. Jiraiya was slightly confused. In the time we've been watching him we came to the conclusion that the Kaiubi is fixing his coils. Where did he learn how to do it? We are unsure, but it seems to be working. Hiashi finished off. Okay. I think I get it, but what do you need from me? Jiraiya asked. The Hokage looked at him briefly. I need you to watch over him. He has been in contact with the Kaiubi and has learned abilities from him. Jiraiya looked disturbed by the Hokage's words. And right now he is at a very plausible risk. Myself and Hiashi-sama cannot remain here to watch over the boy. So I wanted to ask if you could watch him. The Hokage ended there. So I'm going to be a security officer just in case the bastard fox tries anything funny. Jiraiya asked. The Hokage nodded at Jiraiya. I guess I can do that. I just hope he doesn't mess up my research. Jiraiya claimed with a glint in his eye. The Takakur Sato, hidden village of sound, Arachimaru had just gotten back to his village with a new prize, and he couldn't wait until he could have his own set of extraordinary throwing knives. He moved quickly to find some people to examine and replicate the throwing knife. After he collected the most prominent weapon crafters in his village, he took them to a place where they could work. Kukikuku. I want you guys to replicate this. He said as he took out Naruto's throwing knife. They all took a look at the throwing knife, but they didn't find anything special about it. What is so important about this particular knife? One had asked. Arachimaru looked at the one who spoke and answered. It causes explosions just by hitting something. Arachimaru said. 
The crafters looked at Arachimaru wide-eyed. But you must know that this is the only one we have. Arachimaru said with an intense look in his eyes. If you screw up I will kill you. Arachimaru said. This worried the crafters a lot. The crafters carefully took the knife and started to carefully examine it. After about three hours one of the crafters made a discovery. Arachimaru-sama. The crafter said. Arachimaru put down the scroll he was reading and came over to see what they found. It's seals. Whoever made this used a power seal. It's remarkable really. The crafter said. What do you mean? Arachimaru said, getting excited. Well usually power seals suppress power so that the person that it is used on weakens. But this is extraordinary. Of what we figured the seal doesn't weaken any power, just contains it. As soon as we remove the seal that is hiding all the seals we will be able to replicate it. The crafter said starting to get giddy. Arachimaru was anxious. One of the crafters stood up abruptly after reading something in an old book. I got it. All we need is some blood from the person who made the seals and wipe it across the seal, and it will remove the concealing seal. So just spread some of the blood of the creator on the blade, and we should be able to replicate it. A crafter said. Arachimaru smiled as he took a small vial out of his pouch and gave it to a crafter. I got this off of my shirt in our fight. I was going to see if he had demonic blood flowing through him, he didn't so we can now use the rest to make some of the most unexpected and powerful weapons ever. Arachimaru said with a smirk. The crafter poured the blood on the blade. There was an eerie red glow, and five seals appeared on the blade. Arachimaru's eyes widened as he recognized one of the seals. It was too late, he jumped away as fast as he could, while the knife started to glow a deep red and then blew up. The room was filled with a bright light and an explosion. All the weapon crafters were unlucky. They were in awe of the seals that they had no chance of and were blown to bits. Arachimaru escaped with mild injuries. He was extremely pissed. It wasn't but 10 seconds when the chamber was filled with ninja who thought that there was an attack. Damn you Uzumaki. Arachimaru yelled. Every ninja knew it was not wise to be around Arachimaru like this. So they left swiftly. The only two that remained were Arachimaru and Kabuto. Kabuto plans have changed. When I go for Sasuke-kun we will also capture Uzumaki Naruto. Arachimaru said as he stomped off to his private chambers to plan. Kabuto only smirked. Back in Konoha five days later, everyone was released from the hospital and they were all training as furiously as possible. Sasuke had left with Kakashi and they were in a concealed clearing in the middle of the forest. Lee was training with Guy having nothing but constant tojutsu matches with only 10 minutes in between each match. They called it youth power, battle and stamina intensity training. Niji was training with his Byakugan and Jaiken with Tenten. Ino had forced Shikamaru into having very intense battle simulations because she was worried about him facing off against Gara and Naruto. The training consisted of Shikamaru going against Asuma, Chaoji and herself. Ino had also forced Asuma not to hold back. Obviously Shikamaru would keep losing, but after each fight he was getting better and better, but it still didn't matter when Asuma or Chaoji got a good hit on him. Shino was training between his father and Kiba. Hinata had looked all over the place for her father on the first day. She eventually found him and told him that she won the preliminary matches and that she wanted more training because she was going to be going against Niji. Hiashi was proud of his daughter. And because of his talk with the Hokage he congratulated her. When he heard that she would fight Niji he was worried so he decided to train her himself. Their training was extremely difficult on Hinata. Hiashi never once looked down upon her even if she messed up. When she did mess up Hiashi gave Hinata advice on how to improve. Niji occasionally walked in on their training and would only smirk at Hinata when she messed up. Hiashi was saddened by that. Naruto was still getting his system fixed. The area that Naruto picked for the spot was now decimated. All the grass was uprooted, three trees were knocked down, and there was a bit of blood scattered about. Naruto had gotten no sleep throughout the whole process because of the pain. He was laying on his back at the moment huffing and puffing because he had just knocked down his third tree. It was pain evident on his face. There was dirt all over his body, and there were tear marks all over his face. Kaiubi was now working on what he said would be the last piece of coil. Jiraiya had been watching Naruto throughout the five days. Hiashi or the Hokage would relieve him so he could get some sleep. He was pretty intrigued with the boy's tolerance to pain and sleep-deprived consciousness. Sakura had been looking for Naruto ever since she got out of the hospital. She had checked his apartment, Ichiraku, and the training ground several times. When she went to the Hokage to ask him, he told her that Naruto was training in private and couldn't be bothered. She was sad that both her teammates were unreachable and she had nothing to do. She wandered the streets and she occasionally went to the training grounds and trained for about an hour before she rested there. The sand siblings were lounging around. They were the best and they knew it. Kankuro and Tamari were pretty confident about their abilities. They were slightly worried about fighting Naruto until they found out Naruto would fight Gara. Gara, on the other hand was interested in Naruto. 
There was something about him that made him unsure of himself, and he didn't like that feeling. And ever since Gara saw Naruto Shukaku had seemed scared. But it was different during the preliminaries, Shukaku had been trying to get Gara to attack quickly. Saying something about while he's wounded, do it now or he will find me. Something about that statement worried Gara. Gara had decided that he needed to kill Yuzumaki Naruto, and he had gone out to search for him at various times, but found no trace of him. Naruto, Naruto felt relief flow over him. The pain was going away quickly, and he started feeling his strength return to him. I finished. It will work perfectly by tomorrow so rest for a while, but since everything has happened as it has you won't be asleep long. So when you wake up I want you to just activate your eye ability and keep it on. That way you can feel the regulation of chakra and get used to it. And it will also improve the eye's ability. Kaiubi said. Naruto comprehended him, but was too tired to respond, and as soon as Kaiubi would stop talking he was going to go straight to sleep. You are going to have problems gathering chakra like you used to. In short you have to learn a completely new way to gather chakra. Naruto's eyes widened. With all the time it took him the first time he did not want to do it again. Do not worry, I'll teach you while you sleep. But before you sleep you must remove any of the leftover chakra in your coils, or it will create a blockage in your coils, and we would have to do this again. Naruto's eyes widened further, and he quickly got to his feet and put his hands in the tiger seal. He quickly gathered chakra and true to Kaiubi's word, it was hard to manipulate and felt really weird. As he gathered the chakra a small amount of red chakra left Naruto's body. Jirei watched on as Naruto stood up and a little bit of chakra came out. The kid looks to be concentrating a lot more than he needs to be for that small amount of chakra to come out. Jiraiya thought. And then Naruto's body shook violently as a large burst of blue chakra blew out of Naruto's body. Jiraiya looked wide-eyed at the amount of chakra. Then Naruto's body shook again and a burst of red chakra twice the amount as the blue burst rushed out of his body. Stop. You're not ready to control your chakra. Kaiubi screamed inside of Naruto. It was too late. The red burst made Jiraiya fall off his perch on the tree. Everyone in Kanoha felt Kaiubi's chakra run throughout the village, most of the adults feared the worst. The Hokage stopped what he was doing immediately and ran toward Naruto. The Ashi was in the middle of training with Hinata when he felt Kaiubi's chakra. Hinata we will have to put this training session on hold while I go check on something. Hinata nodded as Hiashi ran out of the dojo and rushed as fast as he could to go to where Naruto was. Every family head went to where Naruto was as it was their priority as the leaders of their families. They all met up with Hiashi and the Hokage halfway and followed them as they went to the clearing. They arrived at the clearing and looked scared at the predicament. Gureya had stood up from where he landed and looked directly at Naruto. What he saw scared him completely. Naruto could not be seen as the red and blue chakra surrounded him in a spherical prison of pure chakra. The sound that was being made was that of a saw cutting metal, and the sight was, from Jureya's perspective, the two forces were fighting each other for dominance. In the amount of time that the chakra had been released all the family heads, the village council, and the Hokage, arrived to see the spherical prison. They looked to Jureya for information, but when they looked at his face they could tell he was completely baffled. The two forces were not relenting as they fought each other. Naruto was in more pain than when his coils were being repaired. He was screaming, but his voice could not escape the sounds of the chakra fighting it out. Kaiubi couldn't stop it, nor could Naruto. It was like the chakra had a mind of its own. Naruto could feel another wave of chakra coming, and he was holding it in as best as he could. Kaiubi was also trying to control the power. It was strong and he didn't think that they combined had the power to stop it. And the village Gara could feel the massive chakra and Shukaku was going crazy, Gara wondered what it was that made even Shukaku this scared. Everyone who didn't know about the Kaiubi were wondering what it was that was creating so much chakra that was being released. The ones who knew about Kaiubi were apprehensive about it. They were mobilizing secretly. Getting ready just in case Kaiubi would be released, they could get villagers to safety and fight for their village. The spectators were hurriedly trying to figure out what to do. None of them had any to stop it. Sakura's mother had the bright idea to throw a kunai at it. When it came within five feet of the chakra electricity came off of the chakra and melted the kunai. The spectators were getting frantic. It didn't feel like it was even dissipating. Then the ground started to shake. They were getting even more worried. Out of the forest a few foxes came out and sat down at the perimeter of the clearing. Some of them brought gifts which consisted of either food or valuables. Everyone thought that that meant the release of the Kaiubi, since they were obedient towards the spiraling ball of chakra and they were out during the day. The Ashi and the Hokage scolded themselves for being so naive and falling for something so obvious as the greatest demon of all time training a kid. The ground started shaking more violently. Naruto and Kaiubi couldn't hold it any longer. Ever since they started holding it back it was collecting from both Naruto's and Kaiubi's chakra reserves. It was too much, they could feel the amount of power and knew it was going to be huge. The ground was cracking around the prison of chakra. 
It was at this time a family of 21 foxes came into the clearing. Everyone was frightened by this. The male fox had four tails, while the four vixens each had three tails. The 16 kits had only one tail, and they looked to be newborns. The male fox had a large scroll in his mouth, and the four vixens each had a small scroll in theirs. All the other foxes that had been there prior bowed their heads to the new arrivals. They were all normal foxes, while the new foxes didn't only have more tails, but were bigger. The male was the size of a full-grown male while sitting. The vixens were all about half the size of the male, and the kits were the size of the full-grown normal foxes. The vixens showed their respect to the norms, while the male just sat there regally looking at the humans before him. The ninjas of Konoha all tensed at the gaze of the male fox. The power that was flowing off of him was enough to at least be level with Jiraiya and the Hokage, and they were pretty sure that the four vixens could handle the rest of them, while the male fought with Jiraiya and the Hokage. The foxes all put their scrolls on the ground and looked like they were waiting for something. It was too much, they couldn't do it any longer. Five days straight of pain and regulating chakra finally showed as they released the chakra they were holding back. The ball of chakra was being sucked in, and the Konoha ninjas sighed in relief. The male fox narrowed his eyes and put two tails behind his family and two in front of them. The vixens did the same with their kits. The Konoha ninjas looked at the fox family cautiously and knew that something big was going to happen. And it did. The ball of chakra exploded and another wave of chakra escaped, this time it was dark purple. It was more of a wall of force than a wave of chakra as it shot out it moved slowly tearing up the ground as it moved. A wall of wind passed through everything in the clearing before the chakra was 20 feet from them. The normal foxes scurried away while the family of stronger foxes stood there and let the wind pass by them. Fox heads poked out over the tails of the parents to see what it was that happened. The chakra suddenly gained a ton of speed as it shot out. The male fox used chakra just in time to protect his family. The Konoha ninjas didn't have the luxury. The Hokage, Jiraiya and Hiashi all activated something to hold their ground. Hiashi used Katen, Jiraiya used an ultra-powered Rasengan, and the Hokage used a Doton as a shield. They all were pushed back five feet. All the trees around the clearing were pushed away about a foot. And all the other ninjas were thrown back a good 50 feet as the chakra surged past them and died a hundred feet from its starting position. The wind however didn't stop. It flew right through Konoha, surprising all the inhabitants. This made the older ninjas worried and made the younger ones wonder even more. Ara could tell by the way that Shukaku was acting that the wave came from Yuzumaki Naruto. This made Gara want to meet this Yuzumaki Naruto in person. TV shows stall on scenes like this all the time, so I don't feel too bad about this. When everyone recompassed themselves they saw Naruto standing there completely naked. This made all the males jealous and made the females blush. I wonder what for. Naruto was breathing really hard. He was shaking pretty violently. His head was downcast and his hands were clenched into fists. The male fox removed his tails from his family. Ureya, Hiashi, and the Hokage took note that they hadn't moved an inch from the force of chakra, which proved to them that they had no chance if they were to fight the foxes. The rest of the Konoha ninjas stood behind the three strongest ninjas there waiting for instructions. Naruto looked up at the ninjas. When he saw them he gave them a foxy grin before he fell stiffly to the ground. The male fox was fast, faster than any of the ninjas could see as he caught Naruto on his back before he hit the ground. He carefully put Naruto on the ground while all the other foxes gracefully went over to Naruto. The ninjas were hesitant to do anything. If the fox were to move that fast to fight them they wouldn't survive. They only knew one person who could match that speed and he was dead. The vixens prodded Naruto with their noses before cuddling next to him. The younger foxes started playing with each other off to the side. The male fox looked over in the direction of the ninjas. He looked directly into the eyes of the Hokage. The group of ninjas were awestruck when the fox gave a clear signal for the Hokage to go over there. The Hokage was hesitant at first, but decided to go. He took a step forward, and then Jiraiya put a hand on his shoulder. It's not safe. Jiraiya said. The Hokage looked at Jiraiya then back at the fox. I doubt it's safe here either. You saw his speed in chakra. If he wanted to do something I'm sure we would be dead. The Hokage said sternly. Jiraiya took his hand off of his sensei's shoulder and sighed. The Hokage walked over to the foxes. All the other ninjas were prepared to defend their Hokage and their village. Sakura's mom felt it was in the village's best interest to go with the Hokage. When she stepped forward the male fox stood up in battle position and started to growl. The kid stopped playing and got into a battle-ready position, the vixens looked up towards the ninjas. The Hokage stopped the second they went to battle position, and Hiashi immediately put his hand in front of the stupid Hirano. Don't agitate them. There's nothing we can do, let them make the first move. Follow only the Hokage's orders. Hiashi ordered. Jiraiya looked at her to make sure she understood. I'm sorry I read a story that made me hate her. The foxes calmed down. 
the kids started to play again, the vixens put their heads back down, this time resting them on Naruto's unconscious form, and the male sat back down. The Hokage sighed in relief and started walking again. When he reached the fox he looked over at Naruto. He thought that it was the most adorable thing before he remembered the severity of the situation. He looked back to the fox which appeared to have a bored expression which was further proven when the fox yawned. The Hokage sweat dropped and then cleared his throat. It's Unsama, may I ask what you want from me? The Hokage said directly. The fox looked past him towards the rest of the ninjas, then he looked back. You could get rid of them. The fox said silently. The Hokage did not expect that. He had thought the fox was just going to use signals like when he asked the Hokage to come over. The big one and pearl-eyed one can stay. They feel more trustworthy. The fox said as he looked back at the ninjas. The Hokage turned and looked at the ninjas. And true to the fox's word the only two who didn't look ready to attack were Hiashi and Jiraiya. The Hokage sighed. This will be a long day. The Hokage thought. You'll have to leave. The Hokage called out the ninjas. They thought he was talking about the foxes. Jiraiya, Hiashi, you two stay, the rest go back to the village and announce that everything is in control. The Hokage said sternly. He looked back at the fox. Is it okay if they come over? The fox looked at the Hokage and nodded. The ninjas were apprehensive about leaving, but they knew that they couldn't do anything here so they left. Jiraiya and Hiashi were waiting for something. When the Hokage waved them over they started to walk towards them. When Jiraiya and Hiashi arrived the fox started talking again. This boy has drained himself of all his chakra and a massive amount of another source of chakra. Jiraiya and Hiashi were taken back when the fox said that. He'll be fine. But you should take him to a medical center. The fox said. Jiraiya looked over at the prone form of Naruto and saw that the vixens were sleeping. We can do that immediately. The Hokage said as he removed his cloak revealing a simple ninja suit. My only request is that my clan accompany you. We have something to discuss with this boy. The three ninjas were surprised with that request. So many variations went through their heads about what would happen if the foxes came with them into Konoha. Sadly it was probably the only way that they could get Naruto back into the safety of Konoha. The Hokage thought of a solution and remembered a legend here at a while ago. If you promise me that you and your clan will do no harm to anyone or anything in Konoha. The Hokage said. Hiashi and Jiraiya looked at the Hokage incredulously. I promise that we will not start anything. However, I will do anything to keep my family safe. And I mean anything. The fox said in a deadly serious tone. The Hokage knew that there might be problems, but as long as he was with the foxes, nothing would happen. Hopefully. Agreed. The Hokage said and he started walking towards Naruto when the group heard a twig snap and a quiet eat that followed. The male fox stepped in between the sound and the Hokage for protection. Show yourself. The fox demanded. Just then the culprit stepped out. The person that they saw was very surprising. They all looked at me. Earlier, Sakura knew that something was up when that weird wind passed through the entire village. She hated being left out. And since she was with Naruto and Sasuke she was always left out. But not this time she headed towards the epicenter of the wind blast. Due to her overall knowledge she learned how to follow wind currents by the small indentation it left on the ground. She started to follow it. Anada had been worried when she felt the massive chakra and her father running towards it. And then with the even stronger amount of chakra and strong wind coming from the same place. It terrified her. She knew she wasn't strong enough to stop whatever it was, but at least if her father was hurt, she could help him get help. So she ran off to where the massive chakra came from. As both of them traveled they ran into each other. They decided that it would be better to travel together. After a little further travel time they saw all the adults jumping on the trees heading towards Konoha. The two young ninjas heard something about Demon Boy, Group of Foxes, Hayuga, and Naruto. After they overheard those few statements they started to go faster mainly because of Naruto. When they got to the clearing they quickly hid behind a tree and noticed Naruto laying on the ground with a bunch of foxes on top of him. Hinata thought that it was extremely cute. Neither noticed that Naruto was naked because of the vixens. They heard the conversion between the Hokage and the fox male and they watched as the Hokage started walking towards Naruto with his cloak. Sakura wanted a better look but when she leaned over a bit more she stepped on a twig. They saw the fox get into a battle position and order them to show themselves. They stepped out from behind the tree to see looks of shock and confusion. Ah no, we're sorry for intruding, but we thought that there was a problem. The villagers said some things that were confusing. Hinata said. The three ninjas looked concerned. But we couldn't figure out all that they were saying. Only a few things like Hayuga, foxes, and Naruto. Sakura said. She hadn't caught the part about Demon Boy like Hinata had, and that concerned Hinata just as much as Naruto being part of this. Hinata looked over at Naruto and started to notice a few things that she hadn't before. Why are Naruto-kun's ears slightly elongated? Why is Naruto-kun where that massive chakra came from? Why is Naruto-kun in the middle of a big crater? 
Why is Naruto-kun with a family of foxes? Hinata thought then she noticed that the vixens had gotten up. That's when she noticed something big and important. Why is Naruto-kun naked? Hinata screamed in her head as she saw Naruto's full form. The blush that was on her face showed pure embarrassment and awe, her previous thoughts were temporarily gone. She could not tear her gaze away, nor did she want to, a small trickle of blood came from Hinata's nose. The other ninjas were listening to Sakura describe what had happened in Konoha, while the foxes were interested in the expression the wide-eyed child was going through. The male fox yipped which caused the ninjas to look towards him. He then lifted his paw towards Hinata. They all saw Hinata's look and blood escaping her nose. They all looked towards where Hinata was gazing and saw Naruto. Sakura gasped and turned her head away although she kept peeking. Hiashi groaned knowing that there was going to be a very long talk with Hinata in the near future. Gureya whipped out a small notebook from his pouch and started writing things very quickly, giggling with a small blush staining his cheeks. The Hokage hurried and put his robes over Naruto, so he was at least covered. It looked as if the vixens were giggling at Hinata. The Hokage cleared his throat, getting all members of the clearing's attention. We should probably hurry to the hospital. The Hokage said. The male fox walked over to Naruto and scooped him up with his tails and put Naruto on his back. The kids had taken it upon themselves to eat the food that the normal foxes brought and they had just finished. The vixens picked up all the scrolls and the kids grabbed the treasures the normal foxes brought. One of the vixens scooped up the larger scroll with her tails. All the foxes started walking towards the village. The Hokage sighed as all the ninjas started walking also. This probably won't be good. The three older ninjas thought simultaneously. It was mostly a quiet walk. Jiraiya was the only one making any noise and that was with his schoolgirl giggles. They all wondered what it was that made him giggle like that. The Hokage was walking in the front of the group with Hiashi behind him. Jiraiya was walking on one side of the male fox while Hinata was on the other side with Sakura next to her. They were both still blushing because of the sight that they had seen in the clearing. All the other foxes were behind the male fox. Jiraiya looked back at Naruto and then back at his notebook quite frequently. The male fox's curiosity peaked, he needed to know what was in that notebook. He quickly grabbed it in his teeth before Jiraiya could react. Hey. Jiraiya said, but it was too late as the fox handed Hinata the notebook. Hinata looked at it and then back at the fox. I don't have hands. The fox said bluntly. Hinata nodded and opened it up to the page Jiraiya was writing in. Jiraiya went to retrieve his book, but the fox used a tail to hold Jiraiya back. Hinata held on to where the fox could read it, and she started to read it along with the fox. The wide-eyed girl walked into the clearing to see the lying in the middle of a pack of foxes. He looked into her direction and noticed her there. The other foxes also noticed her there and looked towards them to see if she was friend or foe. They dismissed the other foxes so he could be alone with the wide-eyed girl. When the foxes that were surrounding them moved, the wide-eyed girl saw that was completely naked right in front of her. Hinata blushed an even bigger blush than before, remembering seeing Naruto naked. At this point Hinata knew exactly what Jiraiya was writing, but she didn't want to know what happened. The fox was intrigued at where the story was going also. Sakura wanted to know what it was that was so interesting, so she peered over Hinata's shoulder so she could also read. They stood up and started to walk over to the wide-eyed girl. Every step forward made the wide-eyed girl take a step back. After a few steps the wide-eyed girl was backed into a tree. It was only a second that he was right in front of the wide-eyed girl. The wide-eyed girl pinned to the tree and had nowhere to go. He pushed himself into the wide-eyed girl. The wide-eyed girl squeaked when they made contact. He started to smell her neck and she was being tickled by his breath on her neck. She was beginning to get aroused by the proximity of the naked boy. At this point everyone in the back of the group was looking at Jiraiya's story. Hinata and Sakura were blushing and all the foxes were giggling. Jiraiya was trying in vain to get past the tail that was blocking him from his precious notes. The Hokage and Hiashi were oblivious to the events behind them as they were discussing what they would do when they got back to Konoha. He pulled his head away from the wide-eyed girl's neck. The wide-eyed girl started to feel something that she had never felt before. He was confused by this girl, he had only been around foxes, so he was intent on exploring the wide-eyed girl. He started to run his hands along the girl's clothes, trying to figure out what they were. The wide-eyed girl was getting a really intense feeling throughout her body. Then ran his hand down her shirt until he reached skin. He went to run his hand up her shirt again, but as he brought his hand up it went under the girl's shirt. He was confused so he wanted to know more, so he let his hand rise higher. The wide-eyed girl was starting to breathe harder and harder as his hand rose up her shirt. The fox boy's hands reached something that he was unsure of, so he gave it a light squeeze which caused the wide-eyed girl to moan. They didn't know why, but he liked this reaction. It was at this time that they both realized that the fox boy's member had gone stiff. The feeling of the fox boy's stiff member on her abdomen made the girl go crazy. She pushed her head forward and grasped his lips in hers. It was the most enjoyable moment in the young girl's life. 
Her hand started to roam down the boy's body until Hiashi's voice interrupted everyone's reading. We're here. Hiashi said and he looked back. What he saw was the scariest thing he had ever seen. Hinata was holding a small notebook in her hand and was blushing immensely, Sakura too was blushing, Jiraiya had his head hung and was pouting slightly. The foxes were involved in the story, they weren't even paying attention to Hiashi. Oh no. Hiashi did the only sensible thing for his father. He ran as fast as he could and grabbed the notebook from his daughter. Hiashi was upset. He looked directly at Jiraiya who was still being held back by the male fox's tails. He so desperately wanted his notebook back. The Hokage looked at all of them with a look of amusement. He, I'm glad I'm not their parents. The Hokage was thinking as he looked at the blushing girls. Hiashi was practically fuming. He did not want to give the talk to his eldest daughter just yet, but knowing what Jiraiya wrote he knew it was inevitable. The next thing that came out of his daughter's mouth forced Hiashi to the extremes, he attacked Jiraiya. What happens next? Hinata asked naively with a blush. All the foxes nodded in agreement. They too wanted to know what happened with the and the wide-eyed girl. Sakura merely blushed and looked away. Hiashi jumped at Jiraiya, his palm open and ready to give a deadly blow. Everyone heard a groan of annoyance which caused Hiashi to falter momentarily, they all looked towards Naruto. He was still asleep, but it was clear that he had made the noise. Hinata or Sakura could look at Naruto for a long time, each remembering a distinctive event. Hinata couldn't look at Naruto long because she knew that Jiraiya was specifically writing about her and Naruto, she did not, however, know why Jiraiya referred to Naruto as. But right now she was wondering what was the next thing to happen in the story, and she was extremely embarrassed that her thoughts were wandering as they were. Sakura remembered when she saw Naruto laying on the ground naked. I wonder if they are all that big. Sakura thought in her head. I bet Sasuke's is bigger. Sakura thought aloud. She didn't know that of course so when everyone looked right at her she slapped her hands over her mouth as fast as she could. The vixen started giggling knowing that Naruto's special case made it bigger than most people his age. The male fox however was enraged. He could tell by her comment that she was narrow-minded and he did not like people like that. He looked right at the Hokage to make sure that his dislike for the girl was known. The Hokage cleared his throat. Sakura, Hinata I ask that any conversation that we have had not been told to anyone, and I mean anyone. Sakura nodded. What about Naruto-kun? Asked Hinata with a blush staining her cheeks. Hiashi, through wailing on Jiraiya, got a chance to look at the notebook. Unlike Hinata, Sakura and the foxes he didn't have anyone to prevent him from reading, so he was reading as much as he could. And he had an even greater blush than Hinata has ever had. He had gotten a little further than the girls had gotten and was very impressed with as much detail that was being put into it. Hiashi looked over at Jiraiya. Are you going to be distributing this? Hiashi asked. Jiraiya looked at Hiashi and noticed that Hiashi was indeed interested in his story. Only to those who I feel deserve it. Jiraiya said adamantly. Hinata looked distressed. I really want a copy. Hinata thought. I must ask him for a copy. Hinata thought. Hiashi gave Jiraiya back his notebook and walked right behind the Hokage. The vixens thought that it was funny to push Hinata towards Naruto. When she was pushed she gave off a timid squeak which alerted everyone. When they looked towards her they noticed that she was right next to Naruto with her looking the other way. Hokage and Hiashi smirked while Jiraiya smiled widely as he started writing more things into his notebook. Then they realized that with all the excitement they were already in Kanoha looking at a mob of ninja. The tree line was forgotten as they looked at the mob of ninja. The mob was well formulated for battle and everyone went from their carefree selves from the forest to a more serious stance. Even Jiraiya put his notebook away. In the front of the mob where the Anbu the closest to the group was an Anbu member wearing a white cloak instead of either a ninja suit or black cloak. The Hokage moved forward to the white cloaked Anbu and the white cloaked Anbu too moved forward. They converged in the middle of the groups and the white cloaked Anbu knelt down to receive orders. The Hokage gave his orders and returned to his group. The white cloaked Anbu signaled all the other Anbu to move everyone back. The ninja were hesitant but did as they were commanded. The Hokage's group moved through the crowd in a very good formation where no harm could come to Naruto or the foxes and if the foxes remained safe, so did the villagers. Everything was doing good for the most part, there were a lot of whispers that made Hinata and Sakura wonder. Some things like Demon Boy, the foxes are here for revenge. And the one that worried all the elder ninjas are they going to release Kai Ubi that confused Hinata and Sakura the most, and before they could question it, a loud screech came through the crowd. Uruno Sakura. Sakura's mother yelled out through the crowd. Sakura flinched as she knew her mom only sounded like that when she was in trouble. Sakura's mom pushed through the crowd until she was standing right next to Sakura. She pulled Sakura away from the group and started whispering something. The elder ninjas started to have worried looks on their faces, but before they could do anything, Sakura gave a ferocious look at Naruto and ran off through the crowd. No sooner had Sakura's mom turned around with a very pleased look on her face. 
her happy expression soon died and everyone became apprehensive. One of the vixens was right in front of Sakura's mom in no more than a second. She had dropped the scroll she was carrying and was now growling savagely at Sakura's mom. The Hokage was going to intervene had the male fox lammed his tail into the ground which caused a minor earthquake. The vixen looked at the male and back at Sakura's mom, she gave a very nasty snarl before she appeared next to the rest of the foxes. Sakura's mom gave a sigh of relief as she looked back at the group to see the Hokage coming up. He stood right in front of her with a disapproved look on his face. You will be required to attend a meeting in my office later. The Hokage said and turned around and saw Hiashi pointing towards the hospital and saying something. In a second there was a large gust of wind and all the foxes were gone. The escorting ninjas took off after the foxes as the Anbu were left to send everyone home. The ninjas arrived in the hospital lobby to see the foxes waiting and the staff on the other side of the room. The Hokage just walked past and went into a room. The foxes and ninjas followed. Chapter 9. Of Foxes and Tanukas. All around the ninja world was in chaos. All the cages wanted to know what and where that extreme power had come from and how they could get the sheer power that they felt. Arachimaru on the other hand knew what it was and where, he was just trying to come up with the perfect extraction scenario. Right at that moment he was discussing said arrangement with his top ninja, Caputo. That of course isn't the most troubling thing. Elsewhere in a very dark cave hidden beyond any one person's abilities lies the most feared group ninjas in the world. The Yaokai's power is strong. If we do not hurry we will not be able to accomplish our goals. A figure said within the cave. All the other figures silently agreed. We should move in quickly. If he is able to control the yaokai, he will be most difficult to contain. Another figure said. What about the other Jinchuriki? One of the figures said. We have located all but three of the Jinchuriki. A tall figure said. What of the other one? A hunched figure asked. We can't discern fact from rumor, yeah. All we can obtain is that he hasn't appeared for a hundred years, yeah. A female figure said. If anything appears about him, make sure to check up on it immediately. If he interferes I doubt any of us will be able to stop him. One of the figures said. If we can get one of the Yakai on our side we will be able to stand at least half a chance. A figure with a claw-like thing on his head said. They all nodded. Let us go, everyone knows what to do. The final figure said. Elsewhere, that is not good. A grey-haired man said. He was five foot even and he wore baggy pants that cuffed at his ankle. He wore sailor shoes and he had a small pouch on his hip. He wore no shirt which showed off his muscular body. He was on a ship in the ocean and he was looking directly at a massive hurricane. That was Inzin's chakra. Something bad is going to happen. That's when he first saw the hurricane. Oh shit, today just isn't my day. You want me, come and claim me. He yelled and veered the ship right towards the eye of the hurricane. Kanoha, the Hokage was in his office and he was looking directly into Sakura's mom's eyes. She was unwavering and neither was he. He had already dropped Naruto off in the hospital and he was sure no one would attack him because the foxes decided to camp out in the hospital room. After they dropped Naruto off they all went different ways. Hiraya stayed to watch the foxes, Hiashi and Hinata left to have a father-daughter talk, and the Hokage was left with his duty to discuss matters with Mrs. Haruno. What did you say to her? The Hokage asked. Mrs. Haruno looked him square in the eye. That is my business. She said simply. The Hokage had an irritated glint in his eye. When it comes to village security it becomes my business. It is illegal to discuss matters such as Naruto's condition out in the open. The Hokage said obviously stressed. What proof do you have that I discussed any matters of village security? She asked with a glint of happiness and defiance in her eye. The Hokage was beginning to become frustrated. He pulled out a scroll which Sakura's mom recognized as a summoning scroll. The Hokage opened it up and with a poof of smoke, Ibiki was right in front of them. Yes, Hokage-sama. Ibiki asked as he scanned the room only to see the Hokage and Sakura's mom. Take Haruno-san and find out what she told her daughter. It is very important. The Hokage said as he took on the look of being bored. Ibiki made a few hand seals and he and Sakura's mom were gone. The last thing the Hokage saw of Sakura's mom was the look of tremendous regret and dismay. He closed his eyes to think about all the concerns that the village was having within this one week. Naruto, Naruto shot out of bed. He had just had a crazy dream and now he has just woken up into another one. He looked around and saw the foxes all laying about. The vixens were all laying around his bed cuddled up with their kits, there was one kit laying on Naruto's lap twitching every once in a while, most likely because of a dream. He was different from the rest in the fact that he was black instead of reddish orange. Naruto scratched behind its ear, ceasing its twitching. Naruto continued to look around until his eyes met with the male fox's eyes. Out of all the other foxes the male was just sitting there looking at Naruto unwavering, just watching. Naruto was indeed confused, never before has he ever woken up to see foxes strewn about his room. 
And now he has foxes all over his room, and he had just woken up from a very weird dream. He decided to discuss things with Kaiubi to find out what had happened. Naruto appeared in his sower-like brain to find it had changed. The walls had been scorched and the water evaporated. Two more entryways now stood in his subconscious which Naruto was sure he had never seen before. He walked to Kaiubi's chamber and what he saw shocked him. Images of his dreams started to play once again. There before him where the great and powerful Kaiubi had once been now stood a ninja, no older than 15. The presence of Kaiubi was still there residing within the boy, but the fearful aura had seemed to diminish, now all there was, was innocence. The boy looked up at Naruto and gave a quirky smile. Why hello, Naruto-kun. I see you have awoken. Naruto took a step forward towards this unknown ninja. There is no need to worry, I am what you have always known, I am Kaiubi. Naruto stopped. That was just a dream. Are you invading my thoughts? Naruto demanded to know. Kaiubi started to laugh. Why is that a ridiculous statement? It is you who are invading my thoughts. Kaiubi said. Naruto was shocked. It is my memories that you saw. This is my original form, before Akatsu changed me into a demon. Kaiubi then had a very thoughtful expression. Well I suppose it wasn't Akatsu that turned me into a demon, I'd say I was a demon the moment I was born. Naruto was confused by this statement. What do you mean? Naruto said as he stepped closer to the cage. Bloodline limit, I suppose. Everyone in my family had an extraordinary chakra. Whenever we killed someone by using our chakra we absorbed their chakra. All in all it was our greatest ability. However, I was the prodigy of my clan, the moment I was born I had an abnormality. Kaiubi said ashamed. What kind of abnormality? Naruto asked intrigued. I was born with too much chakra. In a way I received all the chakra my mother and father had collected in their lifetimes. My body was fully charged the moment I exited the womb. The perfect weapon in the village's eyes. At the age of four I was already a genin, by five chunin, and by six I was jounin. I was second best in the village, I was doing the third most amount of missions by myself. Eventually I collected far too much chakra for myself, and it mutated creating an alternate personality that called himself the most powerful being in the world. When I was 11 it was strong enough to take control of my body. I found a way to gain better control, so I went to a village far away from mine and found this medic, and she rearranged my coils, just like I did for you. I was able to take full control of the chakra, and I was labeled the most destructive in my village. But by 12 I had collected too much again and regained control. At this time Zendamaman put the power seals on my body, and no longer did I have to fear my own power. Kaiubi said. Naruto was in awe by the sheer emotion in his story. Then Naruto realized something. Wait. That means that the chakra that took control of you is inside me. Naruto panicked. Your Yandame was skilled indeed. The seal that was placed on you is strong enough to protect you from the effects of my evil chakra, in fact it protects me as well. Kaiubi said. Naruto was relieved. Okay how about the foxes, what's their deal? Why are they surrounding my bed? Naruto asked. It's only right that my children come to visit when they feel a spike in my power. Kaiubi said. Naruto's jaw dropped. Your children? Naruto asked incredulously. Well not my direct children. About 900 years ago my yaokai decided to let the fox blood get the better of him and made it with a group of vixens. That was the start of the half-breed fox yaokai. Kaiubi said. Naruto became disgusted big time. Well you should probably get back and find out exactly what they wanted. Afterwards we need to get started on your training. Kaiubi said. Naruto nodded his head and appeared back in the real world to come face to face with the menacing eyes of Gara. Naruto looked around and saw that the foxes were there, but they were just sitting there watching the two boys. Do you want something? Naruto questioned. Gara just stared into Naruto's eyes waiting for Naruto to show some ounce of fear. Stop trying to intimidate me. Naruto said as he stretched his arms and then crossed them in front of his chest. Gara lifted his hand and then sand started to cover Naruto. Naruto's eyes widened and he rolled out of the bed freeing himself from the sand. What the fuck are you doing? Naruto yelled. What is it that makes him afraid? What could he be scared of from you? Gara asked as his sand started heading towards Naruto again. What are you talking about? Naruto said ready to run at any moment. Gara's sand was about to reach Naruto until the male fox disrupted it. This does not concern you. Gara said, and with a wave of his hand, sand knocked the fox across the room. All the other foxes attacked. When they were about to hit Gara, a shield of sand appeared and knocked them back. Sand then covered all the foxes and they were unable to move. Naruto was now very insecure about beating someone who could control sand. Then it hit him. Kanugi? Naruto asked, confused. Gara's eyes widened and he gripped his head in pain. The sand let up and the foxes surrounded Naruto. Why? How is it that you are able to make him so afraid? Gara asked as he collapsed to his knees. Who are you talking about and who are you? Naruto asked. I am Sabaku no Gara. 
Gara said, then Naruto remembered something more. I will be Sabaku no Shukaku. Kanugi said as he looked up. Shukaku? Naruto exclaimed, Gara looked up with wide eyes. The one who controlled sand, so it really did happen. So that means they all really existed. Naruto questioned aloud. Naruto then shot his eyes towards Gara. Where is Shukaku, and how are you able to use his abilities? Naruto asked. Gara cracked a wicked smile. My father wanted the perfect weapon, so he sealed the demon Shukaku into me. I am him and he is me. I have learned all of his skills and I can control the sand flawlessly. Gara said as the sand started to swirl towards Naruto. The foxes were prepared to attack had Naruto not put his hand on the male fox and stepped towards the sand. Prove that you have flawless control. Fight me. Naruto said. Gara had an even wickeder smile. Fine. Gara said. Ready to fight. Not here, in the forest where we will get no interruption. Gara nodded and disappeared in a swirl of sand. Naruto looked around for his gear and found out that it was not there. Damn, looks like I have to make a stop. Naruto looked at the foxes. Want to come. They all nodded and picked up their scrolls. Naruto hopped out of the window and the foxes followed behind. They were heading towards Naruto's apartment via rooftops. Just as Naruto left, the Hokage entered Naruto's hospital room. He immediately noticed Naruto was gone, there was some kind of struggle, and there were some loose grains of sand. Sand? Something bad is going to happen. I can feel it. The Hokage sighed. Now where did he go? The Hokage questioned then he saw the retreating form of Naruto and the foxes outside the window. Hmm. What are you up to? The Hokage questioned. He then left to go take care of the release forms for Naruto. The forest, Ara was standing in the middle of some very large trees with his arms crossed. Naruto jumped down from one of the said trees along with his foxes. He was dressed in some of his new clothes including all the metal pieces. Are you ready? Naruto asked, only getting a nod in reply. Okay one on one, no holds bar. Begin. Naruto said and rushed in while the foxes moved back away from the fight. Naruto punches Gara only to be stopped by sand. Naruto was not deterred and kept punching only hitting sand, but relentless nonetheless. Gara stood their arms crossed judging Naruto. Naruto jumped back and created five cage bunchins. He sent them towards Gara from multiple directions. They all kept punching, hitting only, and the attacks were all useless, yet Naruto kept attacking. Gara smirked, and when all the Naruto's attacked simultaneously Gara's sand shot out at them, making all six of them disappear into puffs of smoke. It's not a mistake, Gara's eyes widened, and he looked around vigorously for the real one. He felt a presence behind him and turned around to see nothing. He then felt it behind him again and when he looked it was not there. Gara actually looked like he was afraid. Naruto was hiding up in a tree with his eyes closed and his hands in the bird seal. This technique is awesome. Naruto said to his trapped comrade. Yes I know, it's called Cage Adamashi. And in combination with your cage bunshin it can be very deadly. Kaiubi said. Naruto nodded in agreement as he kept tricking Gara with his new technique. Gara had long passed being annoyed and now he had become pissed. Show yourself. Gara commanded. Gara's sand flared up behind him, and when he turned around he saw a throwing knife embedded into his sand. It's a new model. It can be really tricky. Naruto said. Gara turned to the voice and shot sand at him. It went right through him, making him turn to smoke. Iju Jijin Bakuden. Suddenly Gara's eyes widened, and the throwing knife exploded disrupting Gara's sand behind him. Gara quickly sent his sand to protect his back because he felt Naruto behind him. He realized his mistake too late. As the presence disappeared, Naruto flew out of the tree with his fist drawn. Because of the explosion Gara's sand slowed down, thus it was too slow when Naruto's fist connected with his jaw, sending him back 20 feet. Naruto instantly felt the weight and hardness of Gara's skin. Armor? Naruto questioned. Gara stood up and revealed that he had in fact covered himself with his sand for an extra layer of protection. I will not lose. I will kill you. Gara exclaimed as he sent his sand at Naruto at twice the speed as last time. Naruto made no move to dodge. Try as you might. I will not die until I am Hokage. Naruto said as for the first time in the fight, Naruto's chakra flared and he burst through hand seals. Shintai Kawasu. Naruto yelled. Gara's eyes widened as he saw his sand heading towards him instead of Naruto, too fast to stop. Gara was even more surprised when his sand didn't protect him. He was hit full force by his sand, sending him into a tree. To think I never thought that I would ever use that technique. I mean come on it serves very few uses, switching positions with your opponent does have its ups, but it drains too much to actually be useful. Naruto then realized something that he hadn't realized. Is it easier to channel my chakra? Naruto questioned. He then activated his kitsune bai. He held it in his hand easily, no problems creating nor keeping it active. That is awesome. Gara, however was not amused. 
he pulled himself out of the tree and found that he was not only bleeding for the first time in his life, he couldn't move his right arm without a sharp pain running through it. Ara was now afraid. Never before has any of this happened to him. I should not be the one in this pain. I have Shukaku, a feared demon imprisoned within me. You should be dead. Why are you not dead? Gara was beginning to get emotional. Naruto looked away from his ball of fire and up to Gara. You may have Shukaku imprisoned within you, but I share my body with Kaiubi, the nine-tailed demon fox. And he has taught me far more than I have used against you, so you never stood much of a chance. Your so-called flawless control is not flawless. You use Shukaku as you please without his permission forcing him to bend to your will, destroying both his and your absolute control of his element. Cooperation is the key to flawless control. Kaiubi and I have an understanding which allows me to use his chakra and his abilities. You are nothing but a thief and an emotionless monster. Naruto said growing angrier and angrier. You and I are one in the same yet different in every way. Your father the cage, me an orphan. You destroy, I protect. You hate, I care. You let your emotions go, I keep them inside using them to make me stronger. We were both given lives of despair, yet you turned into a hateful killer and became a distraught killer. I will not deny my life of being hated has gotten to me, but I will not needlessly let myself become a weapon to just destroy, I will protect my precious people and my nindo. Naruto calmed down. Haven't you wondered why throughout our battle, Shukaku has enforced you into pain? Before just me saying his name made you fall to your knees yet at the moment you stand there bleeding, arm broken, and yet you do not cringe in pain. Naruto said. Gara looked at his arm confused and saw that sand was swirling around it. He was tempted to control the sand to see what was happening, but what Naruto said got to him and just stared at it. After a minute the sand fell to the ground and his arm was completely repaired. You have much to learn just like me, and the only way to get the knowledge is to not force it, just accept it. Now if you wish to continue I will fight, but if you want to learn then let yourself learn. Your choice. Naruto said and turned away already knowing what Gara would choose. Hokage's office. The Hokage leaned back into his chair looking at Gara through his crystal ball. He started to rub his chin deep in thought. He was in very deep thought. With him in the room was Jiraiya standing in the corner with his arms folded across his chest. They had just gotten back from checking Hate's body and they were upset. They had decided to have people go and gather as much information around the village and now it cost them a good ninja. The attack that killed Hate was Kei's no Yeba. Jiraiya said. The Hokage looked at a few pieces of paper scattered on his desk. We know that Sound is planning some sort of offensive plan and now it seems that Sand has sided with them. We are in for some rough times. The Hokage said as he looked up to his former pupil. Saratobi sensei what do you have planned? Jiraiya asked. There is nothing we can do without knowing what is going to happen. The only thing that we can do is make sure that we are ready, make sure that all the Chunin, Jounin, and Anbu know to be ready for anything. The Hokage said concern evident in his voice. Sure. What about Naruto? Jiraiya asked. He should be fine for now. I'll make sure to keep an eye on him. The Hokage said. Jiraiya nodded and left to inform the troops. The Hokage sighed and rubbed his temples. What are you trying to do with Orochimaru? The Hokage said to himself. He got up and left, missing something very important that was happening in his crystal ball. The outskirts of Konoha, Urkiri. Kakashi yelled as he slammed his hand into a sound ninja killing him instantly. He was breathing quite diligently, he had been fending off sound ninjas for 10 minutes, with only help from one genin. Sasuke was in no better condition as he had activated his Sharingan and had been fighting just as tough as Kakashi. Both were getting exhausted by the sheer amount of time using each of their Sharingans. They had only fought the lower level ninjas and they knew it, the only purpose was to wear down the strongest Jounin and the most promising Jenin. They were severely outnumbered and even though Kakashi knew that he could take on all the ones he saw, the stronger level ninjas were there waiting for the right moment to strike. The only chance he saw was for some sort of reinforcement to show up, but since he was supposed to be in a secret location, only the Hokage knew where to go, but the Hokage didn't know of the predicament. Pain. Dikaku no Jutsu. Sasuke yelled and he put his hand in front of his mouth and a huge ball of fire flew at the enemy, burning four of them instantly. Sasuke fell to his knees as he let the die down. He was exhausted. He felt a presence appear behind him and he knew it was the teacher, so he stood up to be back to back with him. And serve as much energy as you have left. This is a losing battle we need to escape. Kakashi said as he was heaving. It was at this point that they heard the arrogant laughter known only from Orochimaru. Well now, you two are putting up a very good fight, but now there is nothing you can do to keep yourself alive for much longer, now that I have shown up with my elites. Orochimaru said as he, Kabuto and the sound force stepped through the crowd. Orochimaru had the most ferocious grin on his face as he looked at the panting Kakashi. What do you want, Orochimaru? Kakashi said it was getting really dreary. 
I want many things, one of which is Sasuke, another is actually almost here, so if you would be patient as soon as the last person for this party arrives we will start. Arachimaru said. Just then a sound nin arrived next to Arachimaru. He took the bait, Arachimaru-sama. He was only a second behind me. The nin said. Just then there was a very big explosion, and five sound nins flew past Arachimaru, burned completely from head to toe. Everyone looked over to where the explosion came from to find Naruto with his hand in a crater, which they could only tell was from some sort of attack that he had used. You bastard Arachimaru, where are you? Naruto yelled and looked to show his red eyes bearing pure rage directed at every sound in there, especially Arachimaru. Well now naruto come, don't be too hasty. You just got here, there is time to talk later. First the festivities must start. Arachimaru said, and all the sound nin attacked Naruto leaving Sasuke and Kakashi. You bastards you will regret forgetting about me. Sasuke said as he flung a fist at one of the sound nins, only to have it countered knocking him to the ground. Kakashi knew there was a problem immediately. Sasuke had fought that particular nin earlier, and he had been easily beaten, but now. You didn't have them fight to their best abilities. Kakashi asked Arachimaru. Arachimaru smirked. I didn't want them to waste their energy as they would need it fighting Naruto-kun. Arachimaru said as he waved a hand at Kakashi. Immediately the sound four surrounded Sasuke and Kakashi and created a purple barrier. Now just sit and watch as your student fights for his life against a stark amount of enemies. Naruto knew he was over his head. He knew that he was outnumbered, he had no strategy, and he had no idea what abilities he would be going against, but he did know that he would fight to the best of his abilities, and he would be using his new abilities to help him. Kano has sent you. Naruto yelled as he kicked four people away and he prepared for another attack. Suuga. Naruto yelled as he spun towards his enemies with extreme speed, cutting them in several places and knocking them back. Thank god I decided to go check out everyone's training before that sound nin came. Naruto thought. You're getting the hang of planning ahead. You knew that you would need the ability sooner or later so you got it out of the way. Naruto looked around and saw his last attack knocked a few more than expected down, so he continued his assault of borrowed attacks. He stepped into a stance that shocked everyone there including Orochimaru, Kabuto, and Kakashi. There is no way he can use that fighting style. All three thought simultaneously. Naruto was in the Jaiken fighting style's basic stance, and no one was willing to get close, as they all knew the consequence of getting close to someone who knows the Jaiken fighting style. Do not fear there is no way that he can see your chakra coils, so the fighting style is useless for him. Orochimaru said seeing through Naruto's ploy. One of the sound nins smiled and went in to attack Naruto. Naruto dodged and sent an open palm strike into the nin's chest. The nin did not move. Naruto removed his hand and stepped aside, and the nin dropped to the ground dead. You were saying? Naruto asked as he slipped back into the Jaiken stance. Everyone was shocked to say the least. Naruto had become more of a monster than they had thought. Never has the Byakugan techniques been taught outside of the Hayuga, and even if they were no one would be able to use them, yet Naruto just proved them all wrong, and there was no explanation to it. That's impossible. You can't see the flow of chakra so you shouldn't even be able to use the Jaiken in the first place. Kabuto said, agitated because he didn't know the answer. My eyes let me see the entire way of Tejutsu. I can create variants of the style as I please with the abilities of these eyes. You are no match for me. I have become a Tejutsu master, and I also have a weapon with me that no matter how many men you have wouldn't be able to help. Naruto said. Impossible, you're just a genin. What could you possibly have in your control that gives you enough power to stop any number of armies? One ninja asked. Naruto smiled and merely whistled and out of the tree came the family of foxes that was with Naruto. I have a bond with foxes. Naruto said and rushed the group. Chapter 10. It's time for war. Well, this is a nice small village. The sailor said as he looked around this peaceful village. There was a small bustling crowd, the stores were supplied with mediocre supplies, but it was a fair amount for the size of the village. He looked all around and then he saw something suspicious. He walked up the cliff to get a closer look. As he reached the top he was sure of what exactly it was. An old man and his family had seen the stranger enter the village from the sea and were suspicious of him since they saw, since he didn't come on a boat, he just walked out of the sea. And now they were heading up the hill that he had walked up, because this hill had a special monument for the village. The sailor was just standing there looking at the monument that looked over the village when the old man and his family arrived. I don't wish to cause any trouble, I'm just here to pay my respects. The sailor said. The old man and his family looked at the man strangely. Did you know them? The old man asked. The sailor looked behind him at the family which consisted of the old man, a young lady, and a child. I met them briefly during my travels. They were very strong, it would have taken some of the best fighters to beat them. The sailor said. At this time the sailor went through a bunch of seals and then touched the hilt of the sword. 
At this time a bunch of images jumped into his head and he played through them within a mere second. When he opened his eyes he kneeled down to the graves. It looks like you two found the piece you were looking for, but you are not where you should be, hell is no place for you. At those words the family was quite intrigued. The sailor again went through a bunch of seals and touched his hands onto the graves of the two ninjas. The graves glowed a bright blue before the light turned into two orbs and flew up into the sky at remarkable speed. Heaven is waiting for you too. He turned around to see the shocked faces of the family, he started walking past them and stopped right next to them. He put his hand on the boy's head. Be good Inari, and Tazuna and Tsunami take good care of him. The sailor said. Who are you? Tazuna was shocked that the sailor knew exactly who they were. My name is Kazoku Uu, and I will be going to Kanoha to meet up with my destiny. Kazoku said as he just walked and practically disappeared with the wind. Of course what had really happened was he fell off the side of the cliff and landed on his head. Damn, I'm not well like this month. Kazoku said before he heard a loud rumble. A very large group of field mice were approaching him with tremendous speed. Run run as fast as you can you can't catch me I'm the gingerbread man. He said as he dashed away from the ever diligent mice, all that could be heard around the village for the next few minutes was maniacal laughter before Kazoku had run across the great Naruto bridge, followed by a massive swarm of mice. Pinoha, Naruto and his foxes weren't doing as well as they had expected to be doing, Orochimaru had summoned a massive number of snakes to try and hold off the foxes, while he and his ninjas went on to fight Naruto, and Naruto was getting his ass kicked. He had killed at least 20 guys, but there were far too many skilled fighters that he was having one hell of a time just staying alive. The foxes were dealing with the snakes as well as taking care of various ninja that got close enough to kill. Sasuke and Kakashi were still locked inside the Sound 4 prison. Kakashi knew that Orochimaru had one more trick up his sleeve, otherwise he would have already finished Naruto off. All at once all the Sound Nins stopped their assault on Naruto. At this point a lone ninja traveled the ranks of sound nins at tremendous speeds and reached Naruto in a matter of seconds and gave a direct and swift punch to Naruto's abdomen. Naruto coughed up a bit of blood before he thoroughly passed out. As the foxes saw this they all went to attack Naruto's assailant, but they too were worn out from their fighting the snakes and ninjas that they no longer had their massive speed and were easily disposed of by Rachimaru, Kabuto and the new ninja that attacked Naruto. They were killed right then and there, when the male saw this he was infuriated and instantly went into a massive fury. He was in a rage and killed a good portion of ninja just by running through them. Eh, looks like he's mad at us. Kabuto said as he got ready to defend himself against this overgrown fox. Orochimaru pulled out a sword from his mouth and the unknown attacker pulled out one of his bones that had a very sharp edge. The three of them surrounded the fox so they could come up with a good strategy against this powerful beast. The fox went straight for the unknown ninja. The ninja stepped aside and slashed the fox's side. As the fox landed he staggered to hold himself up, the attack that hit him had severely damaged him, he knew he could not fight at that moment and he could not possibly run away, he was dead and he knew it. It was at this moment in the bushes he saw his future. One of his children had been knocked into the bushes from a previous assault and now the male fox knew that there would be one of his kind able to finish what was started and he knew that his clan would be avenged, but not now, in the future now he needed to get the kid out of this location so he would live to be able to avenge his clan in the future. So he sent a telepathic message to his child. Run. Now. The kid looked at his father and saw him attack Rachimaru, only to be cut through the mouth all the way to his tail. The kid was in shock and extremely angry, but he abided by his father's wishes and ran at tremendous speed back to the village. It was at this time Rachimaru looked back at Sasuke and Kakashi. Well now what do you plan to do now? With Kamimuro here with me you don't stand a chance. Rachimaru said and signaled for his sound four to drop the barrier. As soon as the barrier dropped Kamimuro and Kabuto went after Kakashi and Orochimaru went after Sasuke. It was all Kakashi could do just to hold them back, he had exhausted all of his chakra using his Sharingan and was starting to feel it big time. Kabuto and Kamimuro each got one good shot and knocked Kakashi out. Orochimaru had no resistance from Sasuke as he too was weak from his previous fights, Orochimaru had Sasuke by his shirt and held him up in the air. Now then no one will interfere this time around. Orochimaru's tongue lashed out and held Sasuke in place as he did for his curse seal. After Sasuke had let out a very loud scream he passed out. Let's go grab Yuzumaki. All of our objectives today have been completed. Orochimaru said as he started heading back to his village before anyone found out what had happened before Kakashi and Sasuke woke up. It was an hour after the tragic event happened that Hiyashi, Jiraiya, the Hokage, the Fox Kit, and some of Konoha's elite got to the battlefield. Before them were the bodies of a good portion of Orochimaru's army, as well as the Fox Clan minus one, and then there were the motionless forms of Kakashi and Sasuke. The Hokage sent his elites to the perimeter to check for anyone that was left alive, while he, Hiyashi, and Jirei attended to Kakashi and Sasuke. After checking their pulses he stood up. 
They're fine, they just depleted all the chakra. The Hokage said. He looked around at the mayhem that was caused. Their objective was not Sasuke. Jiraiya said. He kept looking around for some clue as to what had happened. They got what they came for. Hiashi said, causing the other men to look at him. The foxes are proof enough, they came for Naruto and they got him. The Hokage was alarmed by this, he knew it was true he just didn't want to believe it. We need to get back to the village. The Hokage said. The others there agreed there was nothing that could be done, and the Hokage knew that it was not that good of an idea to send a team to go recover Naruto, because there would be a lot more casualties on his side, and he knew that Naruto would not be killed, because Orochimaru needed him alive. So everyone went back to the village with Sasuke and Kakashi. That had been a very quiet trip back to Konoha, no one dared to say a word, and everyone was apprehensive about saying anything. When they reached the gates they saw someone waiting outside of them just leaning on the wall, it looked as if he was meditating. The group of ninjas surrounded the Hokage and injured Sasuke and Kakashi. The unknown man looked up as the men approached. Yo. Are you Hokage? Kazoku asked. The ninjas were wary of this man. Yes I am. What do you want? The Hokage was ready for an attack, he knew that this man could very well be an enemy. Just to talk about one of your ninja. His name is Naruto. Kazoku said. What do you know of him? Where is he? Hiashi questioned. I don't know, that's one of the things I was here to ask about, I was also going to check to make sure that this was indeed his village, but I guess you already answered that for me. Kazoku said. And who are you? Jiraiya asked, still ready for a fight. Well you see, I'm Naruto's brother. Kazoku said. No, you're not. The Hokage said. Kazoku looked at Turd. Okay, okay I'm his uncle. Kazoku said. Jiraiya sweat dropped. No, you're not. This time it was Hiashi. Kazoku was thinking for a second. Okay, in truth I'm Naruto's mom's sister's son's half-brother's uncle's second cousin's brother's son's stepsister's cousin eight times removed best friend from way back. Kazoku said. So what does that make you? Jiraiya asked. Absolutely nothing. Kazoku said with a smile. If you'll excuse us, we need to get these people to the hospital. We don't have time for games. The Hokage said as he signaled the gate guards to open the gate. If you would like to talk seriously we'll talk after we get them to the hospital. Kazoku nodded and they all went to the hospital. Kazoku was trailing behind taking in the sights. It's changed a little since the last time I was here. Kazoku said. Ouch. Kazoku said as he felt a sharp pain in his heel. He looked down to see a black fox biting his heel. Why hello there, you don't look like a normal fox. He's half demon. Jiraiya said from right beside him. And you said you've been here before, I knew you looked familiar, I just couldn't place where I had seen you. It's been a long time since I have been here, I will tell you later when I talk to the Hokage, I know you'll be there, right? Kazoku said. Of course, just in case. Jiraiya said. They continued on to the hospital, and as every trip that is dealt with either Sasuke or Naruto the trip wasn't without consequence. Sakura had seen them coming, and she wanted to ask again where her teammates were, she hadn't seen Sasuke being carried. Okage-sama, can you please tell me where Sasuke-ku is? Sakura cut herself off when she saw Sasuke and Kakashi being carried by some of the ninjas. What happened? Sakura asked. There was an attack, do not worry, everything will be fine. The Hokage reassured her. That's when she saw the sailor and was surprised, he was more built than anyone she had seen before. He wasn't overly muscular, but very well toned. The group continued on with Sakura trailing them. They reached the hospital without any more conflict, they checked Kakashi and Sasuke in and left for the tower. Sakura stayed with Sasuke. The hospital was not far from the tower so it did not take long, once they got there the other ninja were dismissed, while the Hokage, Jiraiya, Hiashi, Kazoku, and the fox went to the Hokage's office. As they entered, the Hokage went to his seat, while Jiraiya and Hiashi each stood on either side of the Hokage. So let us begin, first your real name. The Hokage said. My real name is Kazoku no Dakuro no Kazoku. Kazoku said. That is impossible. I have met the real Kazoku no Dakuro no Kazoku, and that was nearly 40 years ago. You couldn't be older than 20. The Hokage said. Believe me or don't I am truly who I say I am. Kazoku said. The Hokage was contemplating it and decided that this man could not possibly be who he says he is. Fine, what proof do you have that you are who you say you are? The Hokage asked. None. Kazoku said. Fine, we'll just get to the next issue. What are you here for? We have been having many problems, we do not need any more. The Hokage said. I am here to see Yuzumaki Naruto, I have many questions for him, and I must get the answer, otherwise something bad may happen. Kazoku said. The Hokage was unwavering. What do you mean? The Hokage asked. Akatsuki is on the move, they have tagged all the Jinchuriki, and they are going to start making their move soon. Kazoku said. This shocked the men in the room. How do you know all this? 
Jiraiya asked. I have made sure to keep a close eye on their organization for a long time. I had figured they were going to be no trouble, but ever since Itachi joined it made it quite difficult for any ninja to oppose them. Kazoku said. The Hokage looked to his desk, escaping the eyes of Kazoku. Naruto is not in this village, he was captured by an enemy of ours. The Hokage said. Kazoku looked at the roof contemplating on that information. Well then I have no business in this village at this time, I will go to the village that he is at. Kazoku said and turned to leave. The Hokage looked up quickly. Wait. The Hokage exclaimed, Kazoku stalled, his hand already on the doorknob. He is very important to the enemy, the entire village will stop you before you will ever have a chance to get to Naruto. The Hokage said. They won't stop me. I will be in and out before they know what has happened. Kazoku said. The Hokage looked torn. This is Kanoha's business so at least take some of our people to assist you. The Hokage said. Kazoku looked at the Hokage and saw the fox sitting down with his head down towards the ground. I will take him. Kazoku said and pointed towards the fox. The Hokage was confused. He is the only one that will accompany me. He said as he patted his leg, the fox looked up and walked over to Kazoku who started to go out the door. As he left Yureya and Hiashi looked at the Hokage. Do you think he will succeed? Hiashi said. The Hokage was thinking about it. He's the only chance we have, there is no one else we can send without getting killed. The Hokage said. As he said the Kazoku fell out of a window that was directly in front of the Hokage's office. Now that's just poor building planning. Kazoku said as he was falling out of the Hokage's building. Then he saw something coming towards him. Oh look, it's a little birdie. Kazoku said with a smile until it got closer when he saw that it was an oversized eagle. Oh my god. I see it's a game of chicken you want, well just ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well do ya. Kazoku said as he stared the oversized bird down until the eagle swooped in and grabbed him within its talons and flew off. The fox took it upon himself to jump on the bird's back and go with a somewhat crazy man. The next couple of days were very tense for the ninja, Sasuke and Kakashi were up and about, Sasuke had already received the counter seal. Now all the genins were not allowed to leave the village for any reason. Every high level ninja was preparing for an assault from sound and probably sand. The Hokage no longer knew who to trust. Everyone was still training for the final exam and they all knew it was not going to be a lot harder than the first two. Naruto, Naruto would not bend to Orochimaru, he declined every offer Orochimaru had made for him to make the weapon, he also did not bend to any torture that Orochimaru used to get him to do it. Orochimaru kept Naruto locked up so that Naruto couldn't try any sort of escape attempt, but Naruto knew there was no escaping Orochimaru's village because if he tried there would be thousands of ninja after him immediately. The only chance he would have would be a rescue, but he knew that Kanoha was being stressed by an imminent attack by Orochimaru and couldn't spare any ninja. Of course Naruto just heard a very loud yell increasing in volume as if someone was coming closer. That's when it happened something fell through the roof at tremendous speed and hit the ground making a crater. Naruto was stunned. Damn bird. Kazoku as he jumped and started shaking his fist in the air. Just wait, I'll be having chicken for dinner tonight. He said and then looked around to see Naruto. He appeared right in front of him. Where am I? He said. Naruto had a big sweat drop on his head. We are in a sound village. Naruto said and couldn't help but feel this guy was familiar somehow. Oh that's good, I'm looking for someone here, do you know where a ninja named Naruto is being held? Kazoku said as he looked around. I'm Naruto you idiot. Naruto yelled. Kazoku looked at him and then stood up and brushed off the dirt on his pants. Oh that's good step 1 is complete, now for step 2 through 44. Kazoku said. Steps for what? Naruto asked. A rescue of course. He said as he looked around the room. How the hell are going to get me out of here? You're an idiot and why the fuck do you have so many damn steps in a fucking rescue? You didn't even know where the fuck you were, I'm better off with Orochimaru. Naruto roared, Kazoku just scratched his head. Well if you don't want my help then I will go by myself. Kazoku said and started leaving until he tripped over some of the rubble on the ground and slammed into the ground. You have no manner of luck do you? Naruto said Kazoku merely dropped his head in defeat. Alright let's get out of here, what's the plan? Naruto asked. Well we just walk out the front. Kazoku said. What kind of plan is that? I would have done that if there weren't thousands of ninjas in this village. Naruto yelled. Yeah you could have, all you need is the knowledge to do it, your guard should be here in 30 seconds, that's when step 2 happens. Kazoku said as stood in front of the door waiting. They heard a paper tear and the door unlocked. The door opened and Kazoku took his dagger and slit the guard's throat. Come on we have to remain on schedule, otherwise we'll have to go to plan B. Kazoku said as he ran out the door followed by Naruto. What's plan B? Naruto asked as they ran through the corridor. Fill every sound ninja in the village when they catch us. Kazoku said as he threw his dagger at the wall as it ricocheted and went around the corner. Step 3 done. 
he said and as they went around the corner, Kazoku grabbed his dagger out of the ninja's head. Naruto was getting impressed. Kazoku pulled out four more daggers. They were just running through the endless corridors. Suddenly Kazoku threw all five of his daggers ricocheting off the walls, and three bounced around the right corner, while two bounced into the left hallway. That would be four through eight done. Naruto was starting to wonder what the hell was going on, he didn't miss a single target, and he somehow knew where these guards were, and exactly how many there were at which position. Steps 9 through 36 are coming up so just stay behind me. Naruto saw the exit and as they went through it, they saw 28 ninja right in front of them just training. Naruto knew that it would not be good to interfere with this ninja air sailor, Naruto had no idea what the hell this guy was, but he still knew that it would be a good idea to stand back. Izoku jumped into the middle of all 28 men. They became alert immediately and all started attacking him. Two daggers just materialized in Kazoku's hands and he started attacking, the ninja couldn't get a single hit in as Kazoku slashed them. Three ninja jumped away from Kazoku and appeared to be the only ones alive. They all started doing hand seals. Amoi Anpa and Metsu no Jutsu. All three yelled and a massive sound wave came out of their mouths attacking Kazoku from all sides. Kazoku finished his seal. Akuriwu Hano Kazoku yelled as he spun around and hit all three attacks, as they were hit they were sent right back at the attackers with more force than when they were started. All that was left of the three sound ninjas were their bones. Blood was dripping from Kazoku's hands. Let's go. Eight more steps. Kazoku said and he started running again, Naruto followed. Kazoku was getting tired. Damn, I'm almost done, but I could release the seal if it doesn't go right, even though I swore never to do it. Kazoku said in his head. Naruto saw that Kazoku was getting sluggish. How much energy does that attack use? Naruto asked as they ran through the nearly empty village. I have to use twice the amount of chakra the opponent uses, otherwise it fails. Kazoku said. Naruto saw that the three ninjas were tired after they did the attack, so that would mean that Kazoku used six times as much chakra as any one of those three. Wow, he's really good. Naruto thought. Suddenly Kazoku started doing hand seals and when he finished he called out. Page Mahatsukai no Jutsu. After he said it a shadow of himself came rushing out of his body and turned the corner. As Naruto and Kazoku ran past Naruto saw seven bodies laying on the ground mutilated. Last step is the easy one, just travel back to Konoha. Kazoku said as they hit the forest and started heading towards Konoha. As they were running through the forest Naruto started to wonder about his unknown rescuer. Who are you? Naruto asked. Kazoku was tired but looked at Naruto to answer his question. I am Kazoku no Dakuro no Kazoku, I come from a village outside of the elemental countries. Kazoku said. Why have you helped me? Naruto asked. Because of who you are, we have much to talk about, but that will be later. Kazoku said. How do you learn those jutsus? They're extremely strong. Naruto asked. Years of practice, I know thousands of jutsus and I have created just as many as I have learned. Kazoku said. We're close to our checkpoint, we'll rest there and then tomorrow head out to Konoha. Kazoku said and he stopped in front of a cave. Are we far enough from sound? Won't they be able to track us? Naruto asked as they stepped into the cave. Not if everything's gone according to plan. Kazoku said, and as they got further into the cave there was a light. Good everything set, we'll be good. As they got the light Naruto saw the black fox that was with him. I see, the foxes helped with my rescue, where's the rest of them? Naruto asked. Ed, Orochimaru and his men killed them. Kazoku said. Naruto was saddened and sat against a wall next to the fox. I need to rest, I've exhausted the majority of my chakra, you should rest also, tomorrow we go to Konoha at full speed, the village was empty for a reason. Kazoku said. An attack, they're attacking Konoha tomorrow, during the exam finals. Naruto said. All three of them fell asleep for the run tomorrow. As the sun was rising, the three sound escapees were preparing for a normally two and a half day run, and Kazoku wanted to do it within four hours. You guys have enough stamina to reach Konoha in a four hour run, but do you have the speed? Just try to keep up with me, don't try to exceed my speed, as it will exhaust your stamina a lot faster, and you might not make it. Kazoku said. Naruto and the fox agreed, Naruto removed the seals on all the metal plates to make it, so he doesn't exhaust his stamina. Let's go, we'll meet my comrades on the way. But comrades? Naruto asked as he stretched. There are some strong ninjas that accompany me. Kazoku said. Naruto didn't like the vague explanation, but withheld from asking more as they needed to get moving more than getting information. Let's go. Kazoku said as he quickly took off. Naruto followed as well as the fox. It took them three hours before they saw Kanoha's glory. Naruto was extremely tired, but with Kaiubi directing chakra into him he kept up his stamina. Damn, no normal human can make this run. How the hell is he able to do it? Naruto thought as he looked at Kazoku who didn't even look tired. They all abruptly stopped when a group of 20 sound nins jumped in front of them. It's Orochimaru's prisoner. 
how the hell did he get out? One of the nins said. It doesn't matter, it's just the two of them and one of those damn foxes, we can handle them. Another nin said. Before any of the sound nins could do anything a black blur shot through ten of them and stopped a few feet in front of Kazoku and Naruto. The new ninja, vaguely familiar to Naruto, just glared at the ninja. The ten that he had gone through fell to millions of pieces as their blood and guts were now everywhere in the area. The rest of the nins couldn't believe their eyes, they were terrified of the newcomer to the battle. He looked terrifying just by the look of him, he was wearing all black, his pants were baggy, and he wore full boots instead of ninja boots, his shirt was long-sleeved, and he had on black fingerless gloves, he had on a belt with a buckle having very weird seal on it, it was three horns interlocking with each. His hair was pure white, very contradictory to his outfit, but his eyes were as blue as the ocean. You'll have to go through us before we let you get near Kazoku-sama. A female ninja said she was clad in a traditional black ninja outfit, without a mask. Now Naruto knew he knew them. It's the weirdos from before the exam. Naruto thought. Don't underestimate them. They seem extremely powerful. Kaiubi mentioned. The third one came into view. Yo. Said the last member. He was wearing all green, he was wearing green bandages covering his entire body, he was wearing green shorts and a green shirt, he also had on brown ninja boots and brown gloves, the bandages covered his face, and he had wild orange hair. We will defeat you for the sake of Kai-kun. He said and unceremoniously fell from the tree for no reason at all, in mid-air he started doing flips and landed on the ground as gracefully as a cat, as he took a step forward he tripped over a pebble on the ground. The sound nins could care less of the female and goof they were worried about the ninja in front of them, that took out ten ninjas in less than a second. Naruto stays back, they will handle this. You must conserve the rest of your energy for the fight in Konoha. Kizoku said. Naruto understood thoroughly, he doubted the green-clad ninja would be helpful, but the one in front of him was more than capable. Okay that does it. The green-clad ninja yelled as he pointed accusingly at the sound ninjas. Just then there was an earthquake that came out of nowhere, and the tree he was standing on uprooted and fell on two of the ninjas killing them immediately. The ninjas were stunned, the goof didn't even do any hand seals, and he had killed two of their fighters. That's impossible. One of the sound nin said. Just then the female jumped onto another tree and whistled. It's time for you to die. She said cutesy. As she said it a very large panther jumped towards the ninjas out of nowhere and mauled one of the ninja before it jumped out of view disappearing. What the hell is going on? One the ninja said scared shitless, their ranks were falling so easily to ninjas that couldn't be older than 15 and they hadn't even got an attack off. The very intimidating ninja stepped forward while the sound ninja stepped back. Then he vanished and appeared behind them killing six of them the same way the first ten died. The last of the ninjas looked around him to see that all his comrades were dead, he looked around to see the female, she smiled at him all cutesy before she raised her hand. A very large hawk came swooping down, and the last thoughts in the ninja's head were, who are these people? Before he abruptly died in the mighty bird's beak, the three ninja jumped up onto the branch in front of the three-man party heading to Konoha. The Zoku-sama, their forces have already surrounded Konoha, and the finals have already started. The female said. Very well, we must hurry. Katsu, you head to the arena for the finals with Naruto. Kizoku said, Naruto looked to see which one would be accompanying him, hoping beyond hope that it was the girl, since he didn't want the clumsy oaf, and the darker one really scared him. When the one wearing all black nodded in affirmation he was distraught. Holy fuck, I don't want to go anywhere with him he scares me. Naruto thought. He's probably the strongest out of all of them, maybe even stronger than the one that freed you. Kaiubi said. Doesn't change the fact that he scares me. Naruto thought back. Kairi, you and the fox head to the least protected area of Konoha, engage any enemy that breaks in, don't make a move until the opponent goes first. Kizoku said. The female ninja gave her confirmation along with the fox. Ishi san you're with me, we'll take the area with the most concentration of enemy ninja. The oaf gave a thumbs up as his confirmation. Konoha does not know we are allied with them, so do not fight them back if they attack you, this goes double for you Katsu. Katsu begrudgingly agreed with a nod. You all know your tasks, we must stop the enemy. Conserve your energy only using what is needed, this could be a quick fight or a long one, it's hard to say how far our enemy is willing to take it. Be prepared if it will last a long time, Naruto and I are already at a lower than normal amount of energy, you three are nearly good, but don't overdo it, I will not lose any of you. Do you understand? Ishii and Kairi gave a loud yes. Well Katsu said nothing. Naruto had no idea what connection any of them had together, nor did he know how they were connected to Konoha, but welcomed the help that was being given to him. Alright let's go. Kizoku said, and the three groups split up to their destinations ready for a really big fight. The finals, everyone had already gathered in the arena waiting the finals. Everyone had taken notice that Naruto had not yet arrived, and they were already announcing the rules, Sakura and Ino were up in the stands watching and wondering, where's your good teammate? Ino asked. 
Sakura looked on the field wondering what had happened to him. I don't know, I haven't seen him in a while. Sakura said. Sasuke was also looking at the field from his spot next to Kakashi. Kakashi had been briefed on what had happened to Naruto, no one else was privileged with that information. The first match was about to begin, Kankuro and Shino stood facing each other. Each in a very passive battle position. Shino had spent his time training on all the aspects that each person in the tournament would use. He had spent an extraordinary time looking through the ways of a puppeteer because he would have better knowledge after seeing the others fight while he had to go against Kankuro with limited knowledge. Kankuro knew a good little amount about Shino, the only thing he knew was that he used bugs to secure his first victory. For Kankuro he assumed that Shino knew less about him since he hadn't disclosed the fact that he used a puppet at all in his match, however Shino had learned a lot about each opponent by using his bugs as spies. Alright you may begin. Gemma said. Neither opponent made a move it seemed, however both of them were preparing. Kankuro had already attached his chakra strings and Shino had already given his orders to his bugs. To the spectators it was already a boring fight, yet to the two combatants it was a very strenuous fight and it had yet to begin. Neither wanted to give his strategy away too early, they were both preparing to end the fight in one move, yet they made no move to finish it. Kankuro was the first to grow impatient and he would be the only to grow impatient as Shino never got impatient. Kankuro lunged forward not knowing he had fallen into Shino's trap. As Kankuro got closer hundreds of bugs flew out of the ground covering Kankuro. Kankuro immediately threw the wrapped item on his back away for it to not get covered in bugs. Kankuro just stopped moving, the bugs seemingly disappeared. My bugs devour chakra, they have eaten all of your chakra you will not be able to move. Shino said. All that was left of proof that there were indeed bugs there was the hole in the ground where the bugs shot out of. The crowd was ecstatic, there were cheers from all around. There of course was a small amount of laughter coming from the item that Kankuro had thrown. You are all idiots, like I could be beaten by a few bugs. Kankuro said as he threw off the bandages around him coming off as if nothing had happened. The Kankuro that had been covered in bugs started to crumble into pieces revealing a puppet instead of Kankuro. This is my work of art, Karasu. Kankuro said with a very big smile. It doesn't matter, this battle is over. Shino said. Not moving from his original position. Kankuro only grinned as he wrapped Karasu around with chakra strings, only to find that as he attached the strings they disintegrated. What have you done? Kankuro yelled at Shino. Unlike everyone else, I spent my month gathering information on all but two of the contestants in the finals. Shino said. Kankuro was getting annoyed. He pulled out a kunai and was about to throw it until he felt a low rumble below his feet, but before he could do anything, bugs flew out of the ground again covering the real Kankuro from head to toe. The bugs scattered off of Kankuro as he fell to the ground. They all returned back to Shino as Hayate moved over to check Kankuro. Winner. Aburam Shino. Hayate announced. The crowd was in an uproar, there were cheers everywhere except the contestant box. What the hell Kankuro? Tamari yelled, obviously mad at her brother. Gara looked indifferent, still affected by Naruto's words. Hinata was very proud of her teammate, but didn't have the courage to say it out loud. Shino moved quietly back to the contestant box, while medics came and gathered Kankuro and his puppet. This isn't good, our plans won't work with Kankuro out, and Gara has been acting funny. Tamari thought as she looked at her younger brother. We won't fight. Gara said softly so only Tamari could hear. Tamari was shocked at Gara's simple statement. Fight your battle to your fullest, but we will not participate in the attack. Gara said. But our orders. Tamari said equally quietly. Gara shot his head towards Tamari and gave her the deadliest glare ever. His features softened at the scared face of Tamari. The attack will be futile, there is someone in this village that I cannot beat, and if you were to oppose him, you could very well be badly injured. It's a lost cause, what is the point of following orders when there is something else we can do about it? Gara said as he looked towards the field. Tamari was touched, her younger and scariest brother seemed human at that point, the first time she had ever seen it. Hey, it announced the next fight. It's your turn, show them the true power of sand. Gara said. Tamari nearly nodded before she jumped to the field, Gara's words echoing in her head. Kyrie and Fox, well aren't you cute? Kyrie said to the fox. They had already reached their position and were just waiting for the opposition to make their move. The fox looked at Kyrie's sweet face and turned away quickly, for if foxes could blush he would be redder than fire. They were just waiting. Kyrie was making designs on the ground while the fox was doing anything but looking at Kyrie. Izoku and Ishii-san, Ikun what are we doing? Ishii-san asked. They too had reached their target and the enemy was well concentrated near a portion of the wall that was lightly guarded. They were just waiting, they had no idea when the fights would start. Waiting. Kazoku said. Why? Ishi-sent said. It's our objective. Kazoku said. Why? Ishi-sent said. Kazoku was already getting annoyed. Why did I have you come with me? Kazoku asked. 
Ishii-san looked at Kazoku. Kazoku then saw a little rabbit hopping around. Silly rabbit tricks are for kids. Why? Ishii-san asked. I hate you. Kazoku said. Why? Ishii-san asked. At this point Kazoku started to pull out his hair a constant wise. Naruto and Katsu Satsu, so how do you know the Kazoku guy? Naruto asked, trying to get some conversation to relieve the tension he had. Katsu did not respond however, as he kept moving towards the arena. Are you going to say anything? Naruto asked, Katsu turned slightly to Naruto. It was the first time Naruto had seen his eyes and Naruto was shocked, they were the most extravagant blue he had ever seen, yet they seemed so lifeless. This guy is freaky. Naruto thought. He takes silent as a grave to a whole new level. He has no life force and no chakra output, it's like he doesn't even exist. There is no ability to do that, yet he moves. It's impossible. Kaiubi said. Naruto was confused, but let it pass as there was nothing he could do about it. They were no more than 10 minutes from their destination at their current speed. Finals, I give up. Shikamaru said his and Tamari's arms in the air. Everyone was shocked at this outcome. Throughout the fight Shikamaru had the upper hand, yet he was giving up so easily, and when he had his enemy in his cage main. Very well Tamari wins by submission. Hayate announced and Shikamaru released his jutsu. The two competitors left for the combatant box. Would you give up? Tamari asked. It would have been pointless to continue, I was almost out of chakra, and there wasn't anything else I could have done, as soon as my jutsu gave up, you would have been able to beat me to a bloody pulp, this made it easier. Shikamaru said as they reached their spots in the combatant box. The next match will be between Hayuga Hinata and Hayuga Niji. Gemma said for everyone to hear. The crowd erupted into cheers for the next fight would be very extravagant, not many have been privileged to see a fight between two Hayuga. Hiyashi and Hanabi looked on with curiosity and fear. The competitors moved into the field Hinata a little slower than Niji. They found their respective places on the field. Give up Hinata-sama. You have no chance in this battle. Had it not been for your teammates and your luck at getting a weak opponent in this exam, you would not be here. Your fate is to lose to me in this fight, so just forfeit. Niji said. Hinata looked down and remembered back to the exam, she had been lucky that Naruto had given her his answers, if it hadn't been for her two teammates, then she wouldn't have gotten the scroll, and if it was anyone else she had fought beside Sakura, she probably would not have won. However she knew that Naruto's and Shikamaru's team had only one person past the prelims, and she knew that those two were not thought to win their fights, but they had, and if they could do it, so could she. I will not forfeit. Hinata claimed shyly. Niji was not all too surprised, but that didn't mean he wasn't going to fight and win. It is your choice, but know this I will not stop until I see you defeated, if I even see one trace of defiance left in you afterwards I will still continue to fight. Niji claimed as he got in his fighting position. Hinata reluctantly nodded and got in her fighting position. Genma looked at the two competitors. PCH, fine begin. Genma stated, neither took any time to waste, they both activated their bloodline limit immediately, Niji was a little shocked that Hinata had gotten faster at activating it. She's better, but still not enough. Niji thought as he rushed forward to claim a quick victory. To his surprise Hinata rushed forward as well, going to engage in close quarters combat. They reached each other palms forward, Hinata repositioned her arm so instead of aiming at a critical spot on Niji, she would hit his palm. Niji noticed just a bit too late. Their palms connected, filled with chakra, they both were thrown back with chakra burns on their hands. That was too good for her. Niji thought. He looked down at his hand to see that Hinata had put just as much chakra in her attack as her. I will not fail, Naruto. Hinata thought as she prepared for another attack. She pulled out five shuriken and five kunai. She threw them at Niji and ran after them at the same speed. Niji narrowed his eyes at such a naive tactic. He positioned himself as the weapons got closer. Hayton. Niji said as he whirled around blocking all the weapons and forcing Hinata to change tactics. Up in the stands Hiyashi and Hanabi were surprised to see Hiyashi's greatest move. Niji after his whirl was done rushed Hinata, she put up a defensive position as he attacked. He thrust his hand, Hinata blocked it and pushed it aside, went for a strike as well, and Niji did the same as Hinata. They both jumped back for some thinking time. This is how it is supposed to be done in Hinata-sama. Niji said as he pulled out his weapons through them at Hinata and ran after him. Hinata, too familiar with the tactic, kept her spot and didn't move. Niji and everyone else in the stands went into a battle position that they had just seen moments before. Hayton. Hinata said as she started the whirl, knocking back the weapons and surprising Niji. When she stopped she was overwhelmed with dizziness. I need to practice that. Hinata thought as she was trying very hard to suppress her lunch from coming up. Niji recovered from his shock and got into a battle position as did Hinata. Niji grinned and went into an unrecognizable battle position. It's over Hinata-sama, you are in range of my divination. Hakushu. Rakuju Yanshu. Niji called and rushed Hinata. He hit Hinata twice. 
Two hands. He hit her again, this time more. Four hands. And again. Eight hands. Once more. Sixteen hands. He felt something was off but couldn't tell what it was. Thirty-two. The feeling was strong, but he couldn't grasp it. Sixty-four. He started and Hinata flew back twenty feet easily. Niji still couldn't tell what that feeling was. Referee, I hit all of her, she won't be able to move, this is over. Just then Hinata started to get up, when she was fully standing she looked up, Niji saw blood coming from her mouth, but he was shocked that she was able to stand, then he realized what the feeling was. You protected some of yours with your chakra. Hinata nodded weakly. Niji was enraged. It's over now. Niji said as he rushed Hinata for the final time, his hand surging with far too much chakra. Genma cursed and ran at the genin, but it would be too late. Just then if the crowd were to look up they would see two people falling from the sky at tremendous speeds. One of the figures grabbed the other and threw him down. The one being thrown was shocked, but could care less, he landed creating a crater in the ground in front of Hinata and Niji. Niji was already going too fast and could not stop, so he hit the figure full force. As the chakra released Hinata started to fall only to be caught as the second figure landed gracefully catching her. Niji looked at the figure in front of him, surprised he didn't fly back at the force of chakra, when he realized the figure had glued himself to the ground with a massive amount of chakra. The crowd were all shocked at who it was that had landed and received the mighty blow. Ouch you cold ass bastard. That fucking hurt. Naruto said blood was dripping from the curves of his mouth. Katsu laid Hinata down softly as he peered over at Naruto and the shocked leaf genin. Niji took a step back as more blood started pouring out of Naruto's mouth. He felt so much pain when he realized. This would have killed Hinata-chan, you bastard. He was going to punch Niji if it didn't hurt so damn much to lift his arm. Damn this fucking hurts. Naruto thought. It will take a little while to heal completely, maybe a day. Kaiubi said. Naruto's eyes widened. But the assault. Naruto thought. Kaiubi had no answer. Katsu moved forward, he stuck his hand into the back of Naruto. Naruto was shocked to feel a hand in his body, but after a second the pain ceased and the hand was gone. That guy stopped any more damage and numbed the coil. But don't think you are cured, you're still pretty much useless. Naruto was saddened, but he had a mission. Sound is attacking. Naruto yelled, and the sound of multiple explosions filled everyone's ears from the gates of Konoha. Chapter 11. Konoha's destruction. The attack was unsuspected thus they were unprepared. Eight more daggers flew through the air striking their targets, killing them instantly. They couldn't figure it out, but here they were dying in this assault. Two more daggers flew through the air, and two more sound nins fell to their death. There's only two of them. A sand nin said before vines engulfed him and dragged him into the ground. Ishi sand pointed at the top of the destroyed wall, and a piece of it fell off and landed on three more enemies. We're being overwhelmed, pull back. Kazoku said. He made a few hand seals. Tabi no. And he put his hand up and a spark flew up into the air. He did a few more hand seals. Kaitsuchi Osu no and a wall of earth pushed the ranks of ninja back and gave Ishi san and Kazoku time to retreat to the center of the village. Kairi and Fox. A pack of wolves were mauling a group of ninja as was the fox attacking and moving to a new enemy. Kairi had distinguished the attack as the hit and run tactic, and it was working a little, the enemy was in too great of a number. She then noticed a spark and whistled to her furry comrades. Time to move. She said and ran off with the creatures and ninja on her heels. The arena. The arena was in shambles. The Kanohan ninja were holding back the sound and sand ninja, but the most concentration of ninja was on the field. Lee, Shikamaru, Shino, Guy, Sasuke and Kakashi had moved into the center for strategic advantage and were fighting desperately alongside Naruto, Niji, and Katsu. The Hokage and Rachimaru had already entered the prison and were fighting there. Damn. This sucks. Naruto said as he threw another ninja off of him. Kaiubi had taken away his ability to mold chakra so he could heal, and he was now only able to use Tajutsu. I am getting really sick of not being able to use chakra. Naruto said as he glared at Niji. Niji slightly flinched at Naruto's accusing glare, it passed as he struck a sand nin in the chest. Hatsu was standing over Hinata so she wouldn't be trampled, and he knocked back any ninja that got close. He grabbed a rock and threw it lightly at Naruto. Naruto turned and glared at the person to throw the rock back after he knocked another guy back. He saw Katsu motion to Hinata and then run towards a group of well-organized ninja. Naruto caught the subtle hint and grabbed Hinata and ran for somewhere where he could control a fight. 44. Guy said as he knocked three guys back severely damaging them and taking them out of the fight. 32. Lee said as he kicked a ninja in the head. Guy smiled at his student before glancing at his rival, who had a nice size pile of ninja near him. Um, 58. Kakashi said sheepishly as he went to attack more ninjas. Guy's jaw dropped and started attacking with more force. Shikamaru had found that he and Niji made a good team, as he would use his shadow bind, and Niji would attack the defenseless ninja. 
Shino had been using his bugs increasingly, but he could tell that out of all of them there he was the most useless since Naruto left. He wasn't doing as much damage as the rest, and his body count was only at 6, a fifth of even Shikamaru's. Hatsu of course was just attacking swiftly and relentlessly, as the enemy ninja found it increasingly hard to land a punch. The enemy ninja in the arena were fading extremely fast, and they made a retreat. Gara and Tamari stood up in their original positions, and neither had moved. Are you sure this is right? Tamari asked apprehensively. Gara only nodded as he looked at the retreating ninja. And then up to the sky where he just saw a spark. Katsu also noticed it, and where he was standing before, there was nothing at all, not a single trace that he had been there moments before. Everyone was astonished, but they too left to go and protect their village. Center of the village. The village center was riddled with blood and bodies, Kanoha's concentration of ninja was set there, along with four unknown allies. They were all fighting extremely hard, and were surprised their unknown allies were doing as good as they were doing for how young they all were. The Kuriuha. Kazoku said as multiple attacks came at him from all sides. He knocked them all back with tremendously more force than when they started. Damn, that's it. I'm out of chakra. Kazoku thought. Katsu moved in front of Kazoku and stuck his hand into a ninja who went to attack Kazoku, when he retracted his hand the ninja fell dead in front of them. Katsu was tired and Kazoku saw it. Ishisan ran in between the two of them, and an earthquake ripped through the ground, missing the three of them just barely. Kairi jumped into the air and threw feathers all around her, as the feathers left her hands they shot at unexpected ninja. She landed next to her group exhausted. We have all been using massive amounts of chakra and all our best techniques. We're done, just stand your ground and hope for survival. Kazoku said low enough so only his team could hear. The enemy looked around at their numbers, as well as the numbers of leaves that were left. Retreat. A sand shinobi yelled and the enemy withdrew. Everyone was surprised. Well that was lucky. Kazoku said as he passed out, as well as Ishi-san and Kairi. They all landed right on Katsu. He held them all up as the leaf shinobi surrounded them. He blinked and then he sighed, holding his three teammates up while he was so tired. Naruto. Naruto had secured a location inside the arena. He had put Hinata down and got into a defensive position to protect either of them if there was any kind of attack on them. Three sound ninja came running through the halls ready for an attack. Naruto groaned and reached down for his weapons when he realized he didn't have any. Damn it. Naruto thought. The girl might have some. Ayubi said all knowledgeable. Naruto agreed and grabbed two kunai from Hinata's pouch. Sorry, I'll replace them. Naruto said softly to her and got up as the ninja got close. There he is. I do wonder how he got out, but it won't matter when we take him back with the added bonus of a Hayuga. One of them said and got ready to attack. Naruto stood in between them and Hinata. The only way you'll get me or Hinata-chan is over my dead body. Naruto said. One of them attacked, Naruto went to defend, but the ninja was more skilled and slipped through Naruto's defenses and got a clean punch right in his stomach. Naruto reeled back a little and glared at the ninja. We are Jounin, you have no chance against us. The ninja said. That's gotta hurt Kaiubi secretly. Naruto was barely holding himself up at this point. That single punch isn't all that has worked on him, he had fraught a good amount of ninja before Katsu had given Naruto the duty of protecting Hinata, and without the help of Chakra, it had worn him out. Hind you want to fight, I'll fight you. Naruto said as he forced Kaiubi's hold on his Chakra and molded just enough. I'll show you something I have been practicing. Kaiubi's eyes widened. Kitsu Ninjin Bakiyaku Kaiu. Naruto yelled and in his hand blue and red chakra formed fighting for dominance on his hand. The sound of a buzzsaw cutting through metal reached the ears of the enemy. The chakra grew more wild, suddenly a purple sphere surrounded the two opposing forces. Naruto was gritting his teeth at the pain of using chakra and the pain of his hand due to his attack. Naruto smiled when the attack was ready. He thrust his hand towards the enemy. The attack flew from his hand and hit the closest ninja, as it connected the attack exploded. The three enemies were knocked back, one dead and two unconscious, Naruto was also thrown back, he landed unconscious right on top of Hinata. Hinata felt something warm and heavy on top of her. She opened her eyes very slowly and saw hair. She was surprised, and then she moved her head to see who the hair belonged to. When she saw Naruto's face a mere few inches away from hers she promptly passed out again. Battle end. The Hokage laid on the roof in a pool of his own blood, a good portion of Leaf Ninja were there, including Katsu and Jiraiya. They all looked on at the dead body of their beloved Hokage. They could not figure out what the hell had happened in the fight, but they knew that Orochimaru had won, one way or another. Ireya and Hiashi noticed the same seal on the Hokage was the same as the one Yandane used. The ninja were in great despair for the loss of their leader and a great many of their ninja. They moved out as there was nothing left for them to do now. Naruto. Naruto's eyes were moist, Naruto reached up and touched his cheek to find that it was wet from tears. 
He looked all around him only to see Kanoha, but it wasn't the same Kanoha he knew most of the buildings were destroyed and the majority of the village was on fire. He couldn't believe it, he knew it was impossible. He stood up and felt different. He took a look at himself. He was taller, but that wasn't the part that caught his interest. His clothes were shredded. He saw remnants of a jounin jacket that he was wearing. He looked at his hands and saw blood and he started to get worried. He tried to get a better look around him, but there was too much smoke he took a step forward and his foot bumped into something, he looked down and saw a body. He kneeled down to see who it was and was shocked at what he saw. Hanada laid there on the ground, blood all around her, Naruto's face cringed, she looked much older and more beautiful, he reached down and as soon as he touched her he knew she was dead, a small gust of wind blew past him and he saw the most terrifying sight that he had ever seen. Almost all of his friends were laying there with blood scattered everywhere. It was a very brutal sight. All the teams seemed to be near each other. Ino was in Shikamaru's arms a large gash on both their bodies, as if a sword went right through Shikamaru's back into Ino's chest. Taoji was a few feet away from them he was cut in half right above his waist, at this point tears were freely falling from Naruto's, Naruto noticed that the same type of weapon that killed Ino and Shikamaru also killed Chaoji. Naruto looked to his right to see Asuma and Kurenai were lying on the ground badly burnt, but it seemed by their expressions that they were in a lot more anguish than the flames could have caused. Naruto saw blood dripping down from the building next to the two Jounins, when he looked up he saw an oversized Akamaru and Kiba pinned to the wall by what seemed like razor-sharp boomerangs. Lee's entire team was laying right around each other, but they didn't have any wounds, so Naruto figured they had died by a massive amount of trauma. Looked around again and he was hopeful when he didn't see any member of his team. A large explosion erupted little ways in front of him atop one of the buildings that were still somewhat intact. Naruto started running towards it. As he got to the building he saw Shino's and Kakashi's bodies laying on the ground filled with massive wounds on both of them. Naruto started to climb up the building. He wanted answers as to why the people he knew were dead. As he reached the top he saw Jureya's and a well-endowed lady's body lying on the ground beaten, battered, scorched, and blood-stained. Close to them lay Sakura, she was in just worse condition as Jureya and the lady. What the fuck is happening? Naruto screamed. Another explosion hit a few buildings away, and Naruto moved as fast as he could to get to where he thought the answers were. As he jumped onto the building a body was flung at him which he abruptly caught, as Naruto caught the body he knew it was Sasuke. They are too strong. Sasuke coughed up some blood as he said it. They took everything from us just so our lives were back on track. Sasuke gave a short smile. Naruto, it's over even with all your power you can't beat them. Just run. Sasuke said right before he gave his final breath. Naruto's tears just fell from his friend's face. Just when four people dropped from the sky surrounding Naruto. At this point Naruto was ready to die so he didn't even look up at his executioner. It's not over. Get up and fight, don't let their deaths be meaningless. A familiar voice said to Naruto. Naruto looked up to see the backs of Kizoku and his group. Naruto put Sasuke's body down gently and stood. What the fuck is going on, is the sound really this strong? Naruto cried out. Sound. Ishii said. Sound's been destroyed for a year remember, right after you killed Orochimaru. Naruto was shocked. He didn't know how to respond to that. Naruto, please, I know the shock is great, but you can't have amnesia right now, we need to fight. Kairi said. Naruto looked around and he couldn't understand any of this, did he truly have amnesia? It's not amnesia. Kizoku said. Kizoku looked right at Naruto and he saw it wasn't amnesia it was. Nine people dropped onto the building a little ways away from the group of five. All nine of them were wearing cloaks with red clouds on them. You two are the last keys left by our predecessors, it would have been so much easier had you two done exactly as Lardakatsu had wanted done. What looked like the leader of the group said to them. Anima would have just taken your souls and we would be unstoppable, but no you Kizoku, or should I say Zendai Maiman, you decided to not get captured and roam the earth without being put into some ninja. And you Naruto, you had to go and fuse with the Kaiubi, so we could no longer gain his power, how pitiful. But look at what it has caused, I had to kill your one and only love right in front of your eyes as well as all your friends. Oh the look on her face as we killed her was priceless, how her wide eyes faded was glorious. Naruto was shocked by Hinata, his one and only love. Patsu, Ishii, and Kairi stalled them as long as possible. I found a way to beat them. Kizoku ordered, they gave a nod and engaged the enemy. Naruto what's the last thing you remember? Naruto thought hard, but it was hard with all the things swimming in his head at that moment. It was a sound attack on Konoha. I was protecting Hinata when three sound ninjas came, I tried fighting them off, but I wasn't strong enough so I did a new attack I came up with, but the attack went wrong and I screwed up. Naruto said. I need you to do it again, I need you to go back to your time. Kizoku said. Naruto reeled back. For you this is four and a half years into the future, the jutsu you used must have flung your consciousness into the future. 
if you do this again it should have the same effect. But what's to cause me from going further into the future and not the past? Naruto asked. I created an imperfect time traveling jutsu, I started creating it just as the Akatsuki gained all their power, but I could never cause the effect I needed to travel in time. But if you have the ability to create a vortex that allows you to travel I can control whether it goes forward or backwards. Kazoku said. Naruto looked confused, but as he looked around he knew this is not something he wanted. He needed to do it. When you go back I need you to tell me everything you have seen and let me know that the day after the ceremony of the Hokage, I need to be at the stream by the bridge at about noon, that was the start of everything I just know. Since it is me we are talking about I won't believe you, so I just need you to tell me that the promise I made to Leviathan is the only thing keeping me human. Okay. Naruto nodded. Then go. Naruto looked at his hand and started gathering his chakra, but something was wrong. I can't do it. Naruto said. Why not? Kazoku said. My chakra, I can't differentiate my chakra from the Kaiubis. Naruto said. You wouldn't be able to since you fused with the Kaiubi entirely. Shit, there has to be something. Kazoku was thinking frantically. What if it wasn't Kaiubi's chakra, but another demon's chakra that you use? Kazoku wondered. I think it might work, I mean when I thought about the technique I never thought about how it worked, just how I would do it. Naruto said. Kazoku looked around. Hatsu I need you over here now. Kazoku said. Katsu knocked Kisum back and disappeared and reappeared right next to Kazoku and Naruto. Katsu, you're the only one who has enough power in the world to create a link between two people to transfer chakra back and forth. I need you to do it now. Katsu nodded. Katsu shot what seemed like an endless amount of seals in a span of 10 seconds and thrust his hands right into Kazoku and Naruto's chests. All right Naruto, are you ready? Kazoku asked and Naruto nodded immediately. Here you go then, save this world. Kazoku channeled his chakra and sent it right through Katsu and into Naruto. Naruto quickly started to do this, and just as it had done in the past, it reacted just as it should have. It's working, start your to ensure I get to the past. Naruto said and Kazoku complied. Naruto was just staring at the ball forming in his hand. This is a lot stronger than the one I created with Kaiubis in my chakra. Naruto, it's ready, go. Kazoku yelled as he finished the last seal, and Naruto closed his fist to contact fully activating the jutsu. Everyone still fighting stopped to look at what was going on, only to get a sight they were never expecting. The ball that once barely made a crack in the walls of the small corridor Naruto was in, now just destroyed everything, all plant life, all the buildings, all the dead bodies, and all the living people. Everything was obliterated within a three-mile radius, the entire earth shook and caused massive tremors everywhere within at least a 20-mile radius. No one could have ever expected one single attack could have caused such a dire effect, it started out so small and left a mark in time, but did it serve its purpose? Chapter 12. A change in time. Naruto was flowing through a stream of pure energy, his body was weightless, and his mind was reeling. He looked around this new space and saw many images that he did not understand. It seemed as if he was in a black spherical room with what seemed like scenes from a movie. Where am I? Naruto asked weakly. In the most perfect I have ever seen. Kaiubi said, which caused Naruto to look around to see Kaiubi in the room with him. This is perfection. It's in Daimaman's ultimate time traveling jutsu he kept talking to us about so long ago. Instead of what had happened to you before you actually got to choose when and where you want to go. Kaiubi said as he looked around. And it is not limited to the past, but the future as well. Kaiubi said as he went to one of the scenes playing in the room, Naruto floating behind him. This is the future of Konoha. Kaiubi said and as Naruto looked he was terrified at what he saw. A decayed black castle was on the side of Konoha. There was a man at the top of the tower wearing a black cloak with red clouds giving orders to others wearing the same. There had to have been thousands of them. How is this possible? Naruto asked. Kaiubi looked around and headed for another scene. This is why. Kaiubi said as he and Naruto watched the scene play out. They watched as Katsu, Kazoku, and Naruto finished seeing everything being destroyed. This caused the end of the world. Naruto was in shock. He watched the death that caused it. It showed the civilians of Konoha who got away were obliterated women and children crying as their bones and bodies turned to ash. Naruto started to cry. This is not how it has to be. You will go into the past and in doing so you will change this fate. Kaiubi said in a caring tone. But how? Naruto asked. By not needing to do this. By going back in time and changing the event that caused the Akatsuki to start their plans earlier. Kaiubi said. I will change it. I will kill every last member of that group with my bare hands. Naruto said. He looked around and saw the event and floated towards it. This is what I have to prevent. The scene Naruto got to showed Naruto's future, but the fate of Konoha. Naruto watched a horror of it. Three Akatsuki members were there. 
he recognized the Sharingan immediately, the one to his left had a huge sword which Naruto figured was the one that killed Ino, Shikamaru, and Choji. And the one in the middle he recognized as the leader, the one who said that he killed Hinata. Kakashi, Asuma, and Kurenai were facing off against them. The fight went by fast with the Akatsuki as the winners, Itachi had ripped out Kakashi's Sharingan. When Guy got there it was too late. The leader of the group had immediately broken his leg badly as soon as he got there. So that is what needs to be changed. Naruto looked around and saw another scene he wanted to see. He was standing in the rain in the middle of his training ground. He was about three years older. He was taller and more mature looking. He was bleeding from his mouth and had many cuts amongst his body. His clothes were in pretty bad shape also. Just then Niji and Hiashi dropped down beside him. There was no sound, but Naruto could tell that he said he will protect her no matter what. Do you know what you're going to do? Kaiubi asked. Yes, I will protect everyone from them. I need something from you though. I need you to teach me your most powerful jutsu before we go back to the real world. I will end this as quickly as possible. Naruto said. The bridge at noon, the three Kanoha Jounin faced off against the three Akatsuki members. As they all dropped to their fighting positions, Naruto fell from the sky with an impassive look on his face. Asuma, Kurenai, Kakashi, don't get involved. Naruto said, and then Kazoku's group dropped behind the Jounin. I'll take care of this. Ah, Naruto-kun, you came to us. This makes it easier than looking for you. The leader said with a smirk on his face. This will be over quickly I guarantee it, I will not give you the satisfaction of killing the people I love. Naruto said as fisted his hand with his arms at his side. 8 Celestial Gate Release. First. Initial gate. Open. Naruto yelled as chakra flew out of his body rapidly. Everyone's eyes widened. Second. Heal gate. Open. More and more chakra leaked out. Third. Life gate. Open. The wave of chakra shot out blowing up dirt and sand. Everyone looked on in shock and awe. Fourth. Harm gate. Open. Everyone was awestruck. Naruto crossed his fists in front of his face. Fifth. Forest gate. Open. Kakashi and Itachi revealed their Sharingan to gauge Naruto's power and were shocked to see he was not done. Sixth. Limit gate. Open. Naruto's arms bulged out a little. Seventh. View gate. Open. Naruto coughed up blood and then regained his composure. And finally, eight celestial gate release. Final gate. Death gate. Open. Naruto yelled and a massive chakra flew out of his body, pushing everyone back a little. Good kid now eight celestial gate release. Complete release. Open. An even greater force shot out of Naruto pushing everyone back further. This is going to hurt. Kaiubi said as his chakra flew out of Naruto encompassing his body with nine glowing tails swishing behind him. Naruto fisted his hand once and a tree to his left blew up completely. This made the Akatsuki members step back. Shit, Kisum uses your sword. Itachi said quickly. Kisum unsheathed his sword quickly and swung at Naruto. Once the sword reached Naruto's chakra form it exploded. Kisum drew back. Naruto lifted his arm and squeezed his fist. The Akatsuki leader and Itachi jumped to the side in opposite directions. Kisum smirked as his body started bleeding. His body separated in all sorts of directions. Itachi and the leader looked down to see that Itachi's arm was gone and the leader's leg was as well. Everyone was shocked at that moment. Naruto obliterated one of the Akatsuki members so easily and wounded the other two. Shit, I can't hold my control. Kaiubi yelled out in Naruto's head. Naruto's chakra started to increase and started to grow. Katsu? Kazoku yelled and Katsu jumped in front of Naruto and quickly went through many hand seals in rapid succession before pounding his hand into the chakra. He then lifted his other hand into the air. A bright light shot out of his hand and headed straight into the sky. Naruto's chakra died down and he collapsed as well as Katsu. The Kanoha ninja took up a fighting position to find that the two remaining Akatsuki had disappeared. They circled around Naruto and Katsu. Elsewhere in Kanoha prior to noon, Inada, Ino, and Sakura were sitting at a table in front of Ino's family's flower shop. They were sitting there drinking tea talking about various topics about what the village will do. Ino and Sakura were discussing how awesome and cool Sasuke looked while fighting the sound off. And did you see the fireball he created? It was awesome. Ino said. But not as cool as his shishi Renden. Sakura replied. Hey Hinata what exactly happened with you anyway? They say they found you in a passageway in the building. Ino asked. Yeah, I only saw Naruto grab you and run, but he wasn't there when they found you. Sakura asked. Yeah, that's weird. Have you two heard anything about Naruto yet? Ino asked. No. And it's weird he was missing before the attack, and then during the attack he went missing again. And every time I ask about it, no one will answer me. Sakura said. Just then Sasuke and Kakashi came up to them. Yo. Kakashi said while Sasuke gave a simple humph. Hey Kakashi-sensei, what's up with Naruto? Ino asked. 
Kakashi's eyes went gloomy for a second, then went back to normal. We're still looking into it. As far as we know he's just running around doing whatever it is Naruto does. Kakashi said even though the likely answer was that sound had recaptured him. Just then a man was running around frantically looking for someone when he spotted the group. Are you Hayuga Hinata? The man asked Hinata. Why yes. Hinata replied. Oh, thank god, just in time too. Can you channel your chakra into this for me? The man asked as he took out a box. Hinata reluctantly agreed. The others there were intrigued at this. As soon as Hinata channeled her chakra into the box it transformed into flowers, two kunai, a letter, and an envelope. Yes. These are yours. The man said as he handed Hinata everything but the envelope. The man opened the envelope which had 2000 Ryu in it and he prominently jumped for joy and ran off. That was suspicious. Sasuke said, but no one paid attention to the flowers that Hinata was given. Who's it from Hinata? Sakura asked all giddy. Usually when someone sends kunai as a gift they intend to kill you. Kakashi said. Hinata looked at the note cautiously. Hello Hinata-chan, I'm sorry I borrowed your kunai without returning them, so these are to replace them. They are my special new and improved kunai, so be careful they will blow up when you put your specific chakra signature into them and they collide with any object. Hinata read aloud, they were all intrigued. As for the flowers, they are an invitation to a date with me. If you are willing, I will most likely be at the hospital in a little while if you would like to respond, sincerely Naruto. Hinata finished reading the letter and ended up having a shocked expression on her face. Of course they all were shocked at Naruto's letter. Wow Hinata. Was all Ino could say. Kakashi of course was the only one who considered what Naruto had said about the hospital. Just then Kairi jumped right behind Kakashi. Kakashi-san, we have a problem. Kairi said. I already sent Asuma and Kurinai, but we need you also. Kairi finished and both her and Kakashi were gone. Which only Sasuke noticed as Sakura and Ino were talking about how they would take over Hinata. Sakura and Ino grabbed Sasuke and Hinata and ran towards a clothing store, Sasuke trying hard to get away. Hinoha Hospital, Naruto and Katsu were both lying in bed. Naruto was covered in bandages all over while Katsu was just lying there with no bandages or anything. All the Asuma, Kurinai, Hiashi, Kakashi, Ishisan, Kairi, Kazoku, and Jiraiya all entered the room that was Naruto and Katsu's home away from home. Naruto briefly looked at them before looking back up to the ceiling. You guys might want to know that Kaiubi is gone. Naruto said plainly, however this did not shock them in the least. We already know, the seal that housed the Kaiubi is gone, and based on what Kizoku said, you two are completely fused together. Hiashi said. What we figured happened is because you opened the 8th celestial gate you fused together to save both your lives, is this accurate? Hiashi asked, which Naruto nodded instantly. We decided for you to leave the village. Kizoku said. I know. And I request that it be tonight. Naruto said. It'll be best if nobody knows of you leaving. So it'll be in the middle of the night that you and Kizoku's group will go to wherever Kizoku chooses, and none of us will know where that is, to make sure that you are well hidden. Jiraiya said. And this is not up for debate. He added. I am aware, I already made plans for my last day here if you don't mind. Naruto said and Kizoku gave his affirmative. Katsu got up and they all left Naruto. Naruto got up and went to the bathroom to take a shower after he removed the bandages and got in the shower and thought of his future now. Inada, Sakura, Ino, and Sasuke entered the hospital, and Sakura quickly went to the desk to find Naruto's room. After she received the room number they all started heading there. As soon as they reached the room Hinata started having second thoughts. Oh no you don't. Ino said as Sakura opened the door and Ino pushed Hinata in and Sakura immediately closed the door. Hinata looked around the room and Naruto was standing next to the chair in his room drying off his hair, but more importantly was that Naruto was naked. Naruto turned his head to see Hinata with her hands over her mouth, and she was clearly blushing. He looked at her closely, she was wearing a blue shirt with the tops of her shoulders showing, and a black miniskirt that was tied on her body. She also had her hair pulled back and she was wearing makeup, but not an excessive amount, just enough to show off her beauty. You're earlier than I thought. Naruto said as he wrapped the towel around his torso. I'm so sorry. Hinata said as Naruto turned towards her. It was wrong of me to come in without knocking. Hinata said shyly, looking towards the ground. Naruto walked towards her and lifted her head up to look at him. You don't have to apologize for someone else's actions. I understand, if you give me a moment I'll be ready in a sec. Naruto said as he grabbed his clothes and went into the bathroom. Hinata was almost in tears, she was so embarrassed. She decided to sit down on one of the beds. Naruto came out shortly dressed in the same type of outfit he has been accustomed to. I don't suggest we leave out the door unless you want them to follow us through the night. Naruto said while Hinata quickly shook her head and Naruto opened the window to his room. I'm sorry this is the only other way out. I'll carry it if you'd like, so you don't ruin your new outfit. Naruto said. 
Inada reluctantly agreed knowing she wouldn't be able to jump out the window in what she was wearing. Naruto swooped her up and jumped out the window landing on the ground outside the hospital and gently put her down. Where do you plan on going? Hinata asked shyly. Naruto smiled wryly at Hinata and looked at the sky to see that it was already dark out. He only had a few hours before he would have to leave the village for an undetermined amount of time. I want to show you a secret of mine. Naruto said as he started walking with Hinata right behind him. As they were walking through town everyone glanced at them, most eyes were on Hinata though. Naruto slowed down so he was walking right beside her and he reached out his hand to hold hers. This shocked Hinata but took his hand without any problem. As they were walking Naruto could hear a low grumble from Hinata's stomach that she herself did not hear or feel. Let's eat first. Do you have any particular favorite? Naruto asked. Um, my dad used to take me to nice restaurants when I was younger. It was my favorite, but um. Hinata veered off the subject because the restaurant was very expensive and she didn't want to put Naruto out. Anywhere you want to go is fine. Where is the restaurant? Naruto asked. No Naruto, anywhere you want to go is fine. Hinata countered. I wish to go to this restaurant you are talking about. Naruto said. Hinata felt defeated and led Naruto to the restaurant. One look at Hinata and they were ushered into the VIP section. When they were given the menu Hinata looked distraught. It's more expensive than I remember. Naruto was looking around at the place, it was very tasteful and he felt out of place. Naruto looked at Hinata and saw that she was worried. What's wrong with Hinata-chan? Naruto asked. Hinata felt so bad. I'm sorry Naruto, I shouldn't have had you bring me here. Hinata said. Why not? This place is nice and you have good memories here, this place is perfect. Naruto said he had not looked at the menu yet. As he looked at Hinata he saw that she was troubled by the menu, so he picked up his and immediately saw why Hinata was worried. Don't worry Hinata. I have enough money. I've been saving money since before I became a genin. I was always given an allowance from the Hokage to use every week, but I only use partial amounts of it. And since I became a genin I have only used a quarter of each payment. So you can order whatever you want. It is fine. Hinata still felt guilty, but now it wasn't because of the restaurant it was because she had so many more privileges than Naruto has ever had. They ate there in silence because neither of them knew exactly what to talk about. Hinata saw that Naruto was sad, but did not know how to confront it. After they finished, Naruto paid the full bill and they left. Naruto then continued to tell his secret. Neither of them noticed, but Naruto instinctively held Hinata's hand as they walked. They finally reached their destination. Hinata looked on in amazement. Naruto had led her to the top of the Hokage Monument. The view was the greatest she had ever seen, the moonlight shining throughout all of Konoha. Hinata couldn't help but smile in amazement at the beauty of it. She looked over to Naruto who was leaning on the rail with a sad look on his face. What's wrong with Naruto-kun? Hinata asked. This is the last time I'll be able to come up here. Naruto said sadly, Hinata was confused. Naruto could see the confusion on her face, he turned around and looked straight at the moon. I have to leave the village tonight. Naruto said solemnly which caught Hinata off guard. Hinata wanted to say something but couldn't. It's already been decided, I will leave tonight, in fact I'm scheduled to leave in a few minutes. I didn't want this to happen, but I changed many things which have caused this event to happen. Naruto said as he looked into Hinata's eyes, she was crying. She tilted her head to the ground. Naruto walked up to her and tilted her head up and passionately kissed her. From the trees Kazoku's group was watching silently. Oh my that was so romantic, I wish I had someone like Naruto. Kairi said with tears in her eyes. Her group just looked at her dumbfounded for a moment before they turned back towards Hinata and Naruto. Naruto finished kissing Hinata and took a step back. Naruto, I Hinata said but stopped, she couldn't find the right words to say. Naruto looked away from her. I don't know when I'll come back, if I ever do. I won't be able to be there for you when you're going to need me to be. Naruto said with tears in his eyes. It might end up being best if you forget about me, I'm sorry. He said and disappeared into the wind. Hinata fell to the ground and burst into tears. At the gates of Konoha, Naruto was walking out the gates when he got hit from behind by a large frying pan. When he turned around he saw Kazoku's group with Kairi holding an oversized frying pan. You're a bastard. Kairi said as she walked through the gates with her hands on her hips. Naruto and Kazoku walked through the gate solemnly. Konoha. I miss you. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.